But the lunchroom, we still have several options. It's also going to depend on how many children pick the online option. I know the number from the survey. We have a pretty good number in our head right now of how many children are going to opt out to go online, but it will depend where they call. So we're going to find that out tomorrow. Yeah, I think that we can be in very vague, very long Yes, yes. 
I, I, you know, and we're, we're going to have to retrain the way they think. I know this is hard on all of us, and there's no doubt in my mind that everyone's going to try to do the best that they can. But as a mom, I have so many questions and so many things going through my head. Um, one of my biggest, another one of my biggest concerns with my daughter is, especially with the younger kids, the social-emotional needs of all these students. I mean, I'm going to probably repeat myself, but are we going to keep these kids apart during recess and lunch and gym if there is any i mean how is that all going to work how are we going to address those needs um it's it's been interesting to watch and i can use my neighborhood i can also use mm -hmm. the we have a, a a camp down at timber point and we have a an extended school program for some of our special needs kids a small it's 25 kids um they'll learn how to work together i can't stress that enough we have to teach them how to work together um one of the custodians and I were, were fooling around the other day and we had a broomstick and we stuck it in our belly buttons and we pretended like we were dancing. And I said, that's what the prom's gonna look like next year. But, yeah. you know, we don't wanna make light of it. But, you know, we can't say, oh, go out and recess and get next to each other and then go back inside um, and, and not be next to each other. And again, you know, I'm dealing with everything from, I've had people call me up and say, we can go back, no masks and everybody's going. So I, I, I keep saying this, patience, and we're gonna to have to trust each other, you know, uh, to address what the previous lady said about temperatures. If, if we have to take 3,700 temperatures a day, that's gonna be harder on the social, emotional, anything else. Families are gonna to have to take the temperature at seven, six o'clock in the morning, and if, if you can't put them on the bus if they have a temperature. Um, and I'm gonna to have to trust you. Because if you think we can take 37, we're gonna take a temperature before they get on the bus and then take it again, you know, 
the buses won't get here. Or if we take it at the front door, the kids won't get in the building. So quite frankly, we're going to have to trust each other. I get my temperature taken every day now. Right. I mean, everywhere we go, we yeah. pretty much get it taken. Um, no ratchet back there. <laughs> this will be my last question. Okay. Um, I don't even know if there's an answer for this, but is there some sort of plan if a teacher or student has been exposed to the virus? Will the entire class be asked to quarantine, um, as well as the other teachers who have been in contact with that person? Is there something put in place? Well, I mean, the governor did throw us a curveball. Now all of a sudden we're going to be doctors and nurses too. But what we're, what we're planning on is linking up with a local health care provider. Okay, I don't want to say any names yet because we're finalizing. And um, it was just like at the beginning of the pandemic. What do you do? And I will tell you, it changed. It changed from minute to minute uh, almost or day to day. But we will link up with a health care provider and the health care provider will tell us what we have to do. Okay. You know, who do we tell? How do we, how do we kind of, you know, it, it becomes an arduous thing. But as, as part of the governor's statement, we were going to do testing. I'm not quite sure what that means. So, uh, oh, yeah, he said testing and tracing. I'm sorry, on the children? Uh, uh, we're not sure. He, he made a comment the other day. So we need more clarification on that one. We will follow whatever the, whatever the guidelines come. Because remember, he said, spend the next, he said spend the next 10 days listening to you folks as if we haven't been listening before. You know, okay, okay. We sent out two surveys, and we kept saying we're going to send out another one as soon as he makes a decision. His decision was go talk to everybody. So here we are today. So. Um, actually, I do have one more if that's okay. And I do want to thank you. I know this is difficult. Um, what about outdoor instruction? Is that even a possibility oh, at all? Me? Outdoor instruction in like the nicer months? Would um, that even be we, we're going to be as creative as we can be. Okay. Teachers will be able to go outside if we can, okay. you know, if they can do it. And, um, yeah, we certainly, that hasn't changed. I mean, classes can go outside when they want. You do worry in the fall and the spring, allergies and bees come around, but, you know. I think that's the least of our worries right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you very much. If you have much. a bee allergy, it's kind of it. But, well, yes, that's right. true, too. You're right. Thank you very much. You're, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks. Number five. Hello, thank you for giving us this opportunity. I'm Christine Lemaire. We spoke on the phone last week. I have a um, fourth grader in RCK and a sixth grader entering middle school. Um, so some of these things you and I had discussed, um, as much as opinions, they're also comments to take into consideration. Um, first off, I think that the school should be open and the children should go as much as possible. I was wondering if sixth grade could be part of the elementary K-5 they are still developmentally appropriate. The teacher certifications are K-6 or 3-6. Um, if sixth grade, if they go hybrid in the middle school, um, if sixth grade could be a consideration for el falling under the elementary umbrella. Um, as far as the masks, nobody wants to wear masks. We don't want to wear them here. But nobody wants to be doing active shooter drills and lockdown drills. And we do them to keep our kids safe. So I want my children to wear masks to protect you, to protect the teacher and their classmates. It's going to be hot and uncomfortable in the beginning, but we'll all get through it. We know children don't walk in straight lines. They're constantly getting up to go to the bathroom, get drinks. Um, my fourth grader is like a ping pong ball um, all over the place. Um, as far as the one-to-one -one devices, Will they go home and come back to school every day? Something to think about if you don't have an answer. Oh, no, oh, no, because I worry about the one-to-one -one devices because they were ordered everything. I mean, I think it's, I give the board and the administrative team a lot of credit. You know, I say this all the time. We were writing on blackboards a few years ago, and now, no, each child's going to get one. It's going to go home with them, going to go back and forth with them, and, you know, uh, they, no they, it'll be theirs to take care of and learn with. So. Okay. Um, and then as far as the hand sanitizers, where will they be placed? I know it said upon entering the building, um, if they leave the classroom to use the bathroom, will they be at the entrance door to the classroom as kids change classes? Will they be in hallways and classrooms, even if they have sinks? Because we know that 20-something children using a sink upon entry into a classroom before snack after snack, before lunch after lunch, is going to be pretty much all day. 
Um, are there additional social distancing requirements being looked at for music, music with movement, band and chorus, and phys ed? I know other districts outlined 12 feet. Another question for social emotional learning. Um, what specifically is being implemented to transition the children back? They've been home for six months and beyond once they're back. I know my own children are having nightmares almost daily just getting their temperatures taken going to ice skating. Um, you mentioned the video, so I was going to mention the video and the orientation. But will the schools be open prior to first day for them to look around, um, especially my sixth grader going into middle school? And I was thinking the ninth graders, too, and even the third graders. Um, if there is the hybrid model or we do need that, um, consecutive days are needed, as it was outlined in the plan. Um, it is imperative that we have some kind of live instruction. That is imperative. That needs to be non-negotiable. It may not be need to be following a daily schedule live all day, but they do need to see and hear their teacher at least daily or a few times a week. Um, office hours are needed for the teacher where the parent or the child can contact the teacher. If I know the office hours are at 1130, I know that I'm going to get a response from the email and not the next day because I happen to miss her being on the computer. Um, you and I spoke about this. IXL is not a program of instruction. IXL is drill and kill. IXL is practice until you have it perfect. And if you don't have the skill, you keep going forever. And even when the teacher says only put it on for 10 minutes, you have those competitive children who just don't. Um, if we do go remote or hybrid, pass-fail needs to be eliminated and we do need grades. At least, you know, the 4321 or some, something rubric based like that. Um, you mentioned the survey. And once again, I wanted to thank you for your updates. Nobody envies your job right now. Thank you for being a strong leader for East Islip. <laughs> well, we'll see how strong I am. Boy, just a real quick, just to recap, everything you just said, and we, we have talked previously, um, is being looked at. And we, things like the curriculum, look, if, if I have my way, we're, we're going to have normal school. We're just going to have a normal school. Um, and by that, I mean we're going to have everything, which means that uh, we're going to have to change some of the things we do. I don't want to mention subjects specifically, but there are some people that have told me, well, you can't do this and you can't do that. And yes, some of these special areas that the kids love so much, You'd be imagine, you'd be surprised at how creative people get when, let's be honest, their livelihood is on the line. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm confident of that. The, the live instruction, what we, we, what we did in the spring, we can do a lot better. We survived through the spring, but I'm confident that we're working on that. Um, so I think everything on this list is, uh, you're going to have an answer within about eight days. Thank you. Hopefully sooner. Thank you. You're welcome. Number six. Look at that man, she jumped up. <laughs> it's hot under here. Hi, my name is Kristen Mink. Wait, guys, I gotta ask you a favor. If you, you, you probably should take your mask down when you talk, I guess. That's why we don't have the handheld mic. Um, my name is Kristen Mancuso. I have um, four boys in the district, second, fourth, sixth, eighth. Um, first off, with the hybrid model that you have um, planned out, I just don't see that effective in regards to some of the kids will come in for two days and not come back for five, Monday, Tuesday. Um, and coming back, they need the structure, they need the consistency, they need the routine, they need, their, like she said, the teacher every day. Um, so is there other models that could be looked at that might work out better for our kids, such as like an AM, PM schedule for the kids if we cannot go back full time, or like she said, the every other day. So it's just more consistency for them especially coming back. We're gonna to have to go back to March with all the um, curriculums and revisit it. How are they gonna you know, the, get that and then not see them for five days? There is some, look, we, you know, if you go online and look at other schools, which I 
put in my letter today is like comparing apples and oranges because other districts just, and like I said, Garden City, I heard, did a U-turn today because they finally measured their classrooms. Um, we went with that two days, two days um, for some really valid reasons, but we're also trying to build some things in there to ensure if we have to do that, that the kids will actually get you know, personal time or you know, some face-to-face -face time with the teacher. You know, I think the last lady was talking about that. Um, I, I'm uncomfortable calling it office hours only because um, that, that places a limitation on it. You know, that, that, that fifth day um, has a tremendous amount of opportunity for teachers to see the whole group together virtually, but also see individual kids. And look, I taught for 15 years. Most of my students didn't want to talk to me after class. They want to go see their friends. But you'll, I, can, I can see a clear path to actually helping those that need the help the most. So I would just ask that to you know, be a little bit patient. And, and as far as routine, they'll fall into a routine, whether it's every other day or every two days. Okay. And then also, I have a son who's actually in the summer program right now, so I thank you for that. Um, in regards to like kids like him with IEPs who have group speech, OT, PT, all that, and sometimes they're held in smaller classrooms or smaller rooms. Um, are they gonna adjust that so that they can still have their groups but still be socially distant? Um, there's a couple different ways that can be handled, but one of the things we talked about was getting those groups out of what used to be closets and we made them into right. classrooms. Okay. So, uh, you know, and you can get very creative. That's, those small groups are the ones that can go outside yeah. very easily because you only have, you know, you have three, four, five kids. Um, we can use areas in the gym, the cafeteria, the common rooms, depending on the building that you're in, even the libraries, because we, we think we're going to see less traffic in the libraries. Um, so, you know, as far as those things, um, we're going to be very creative with space. And that's one of the things we're going to encourage. One more question. Okay. If a child does come and you detect a fever and they have to go home, what's the protocol for them to come back? Do they have to have the COVID test? How does that work? Uh, again, we would, you know, we our our doctor can work with their doctor. Um, you know, if 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 he comes back in with a doctor's note that says he had bronchitis, it's it, it's, you know, it's very hard because we don't want to. And we saw this this spring. Uh, actually, it was in February when we had the first maybe case. Um, everybody just it set us all off. Um, what we're going to have to do is just work with the family find out what's really going on, and make sure that the biggest thing is if your child is sick, don't send them to school. If they get sick at school, we're looking to make accommodations to have a room where they can go, an isolation room, um, but also helping parents if we need to get them home. We're trying to come up with some sort of idea how to do that. Uh, if a parent is in you know, New York City and can't get back here and we can get it to a relative, um, but we let the doctors talk to the doctors and you're going to, I hate, unfortunately, you're going to have to prove to us you don't have COVID. Okay. Right. We're not just going to take your word for it uh, as much as we want to, but we won't be. A, and we expect, we expect some guidelines from Department of Health or ed, State Education Department on that. Because okay. right. the governor, the governor put us in a tough spot. I don't know how we're going to do what the governor said. So we're hoping to change that. So. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Lucky number seven. Guys, I am going to listen, but you can appreciate this. My son just called me three times in a row because their mother went away, and they're looking for the credit card to get dinner. Oh, yeah. My mother was right. She said she went into labor 60 years ago, and the pain hasn't stopped. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what... Uh, Kevin... Now, the irony is the two of them are working making good money. I'm proud of them. You know, some of the jobs, they're going to school, but they seem to feel that I should be buying them pizza tonight for dinner. Well, at least I'll get a little bit of it. Maybe. <laughs> Hi, uh, O'Neill Fenley. I have a sixth grade um, boy and an eighth grade boy. So I'm primarily concerned with secondary education, but pretty much all my questions were answered. Um, if you, you're writing down, I prefer full time if we can do it. And my question was, you said the tablets. Now, are they, are the teachers going to be giving the work primarily through a tablet and on what platform do you know yet? 
Uh, we did, we picked the Google platform, okay. caused a little bit of consternation with some of the folks who want to go the other way with uh, Microsoft. Um, I'll say it publicly and get myself in trouble. Hopefully, when the pandemic calms down, we would love our kids to get different experiences. Uh, we just felt that the feedback we got from the parents last year was, it was a big adjustment for the parents, for the parents to move from platform to platform. And I'll say this carefully, because some people, the techies, especially the younger parents, they see it comes very easily to them. To folks like myself, we don't need the parents frustrated about this. So we did pick the one platform. We're going to go with Google. And um, you know, we, we are encouraging the teachers to go as paperless as possible. Okay, it, It's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, that's why we have moved the school year back. The, we're going to start September 8th. Okay. The kids come September 8th, and we're going to do extensive training with the teachers the week before school. The teachers are taking classes over the summer. Taking There are a lot of workshops now, as you can imagine. Uh, a lot of free things, you know, the Google people, the Microsoft people, they smell, they smell textbook money and they're coming for it. So uh, um, it will be Google. We also have um, Parent Square. You know, we had teachers that were using different ways to communicate. And, the te and I felt badly because I do love choice. I think that's part of public education. Kids should experience different things. Um, but if you're going from, you know, dojo to this to that, and you're a parent who's trying to coordinate two, three, or four kids, um, we didn't think that was good. So we're going to have the one parent square, we're going to work Google, and then I would love to see as time goes on, go back to the days where we can try a couple of different things when parents aren't as stressed. And, you know. Um, also, you mentioned, I'm sure you mentioned, I probably didn't hear it, but cleaning between the periods and the secondary level? Yeah, that this is happen. a tough one. We're going to do the best we can. And we really are looking to front load our custodians. Um, and I, I know I get teased sometimes because I go to ball games, but I also go to the plays and I go to the concerts. And I'm actually jealous of the musicians and the, the um, actors and actresses because I have terrible stage fright and I have no musical talent. You know, um, I say this a lot. You know, there's 16, there are 2,000 kids that are 2,000 people at a football game, and you see me there and you think that's the only thing I go to. Um, I actually enjoy some of the other things, but physically, it's going to be very hard for us to run a school all day long like we have. Now, the hope is we get healthy or there's a vaccine or the world kind of returns to normal. Section 11 has put out a schedule um, for the second half of the year. One of the things we haven't talked about yet with the team, but we will look to do small, normal, or whatever kinds of celebrations we can with our kids, whether it's artistic or athletic, but first things first, it's got to be the academics. And so as far as cleaning goes, um, you know, we're going to do the best we can. But I've also had a large number of parents say to me, is my child allowed to bring their own wipes? That was my next question. Yeah. Sure. Thank okay. you very much. Yes, okay. please. We'll have some, but if they bring them, because um, let's just do the math for a minute. If you're at the high school, you've got a five-minute passing time, and um, the custodian can clean one desk every 10 seconds. Um, they clean 14 desks. If we're in a hybrid, if, if we're in full blown, they got to clean, you know, 20, 28 desks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say they are in a hybrid 14, that's 140 seconds. That's two minutes and 20 seconds. So mm -hmm. you have a five minute passing time. So that custodian can do two and a third classes between each passing time. And oh yeah, by the way, where do the kids go while they're cleaning the desks? You keep them out in the hall where they're on top of each other and, and it's not, it's not conducive, but we do believe that, you know, kids are going to take control of their own personal hygiene, hopefully. Right. And like I said, we saw that with the locker clean out. The kids were excellent, right. excellent. So hopefully we can foster that. So I just want to say again that I do think that the grades are important. I love the way you did it in the spring. My, I work at a school and they didn't do it that way. It was horrendous. Nobody did their work. So it really, I think, it motivates the kids. And um, thank you. And I don't like the hybrid. I would rather go back full time or do remote. I think hybrid's a waste of time. But that's you know, I, I think that's an old. I'm, I'm watching. I'm keeping track of how people are going, and I'm kind of you know. And if, if you don't say hybrid, remote, or or you know, online, I'm just kind of kind of guessing at it. But yeah, I think we all feel the same way. Okay. You know. Thanks again. Uh, thanks. It's good seeing you. You too. All right, number eight.
I'm Mr. Dolan, Laura Michaels. I have an upcoming senior in high school. Wait, okay, take your mask, okay. Okay, sure. I have an upcoming senior in high school, and I uh, support full in-person return uh, to school, although I do appreciate and wanted um, what you mentioned before about two pools, right? People that want to come back full-time and people that either, if they have sick children or are anxious and don't want to come back, then they should be given the option of remote you know. Well, yeah, let me say that again for those who just came in. The governor made that very clear. He didn't tell us how we were going to match up the teachers with the remote. So we'll figure that out. I know, but we there's have been, two full weeks I mean, in that, social media comments yeah. that, you know, remote is only for sick children. And, you know, uh, there's a district that's fighting that it only can be for sick children. It should be for everyone that wants it. It's, you know, in this situation, because of the web, it's the... I'm going to say this, I'll, keep, I'll say this a thousand times. If you want remote, you're going to have to let us know. I think it's August 24th. It could be the 26th. I forget. But we need to know. And this is why we're going to need a little patience in September because we're going to, we're backloading an awful lot of, I mean, we could be rescheduling buildings a week before they open. But if that's what it takes, that's what we're going to do. But if, if you or one of your friends is nervous because grandma lives in the house or I've had some terrible stories, not terrible, but I've had some stories where one child has a condition and the other child doesn't. And in one case, the child with the condition wanted to go to school and the other, the sibling was like, no, nah, this is great. I don't have to go to school. Thanks, you know. And, uh, you know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If, if you tell us you don't want to come, we'll work with you. Right. Okay. No, no penalty. So when we talk about remote learning versus in person, it has to be learning, right? So what I learned in the spring I don't is mean that, to be rude, but nope. where, you know what they're at now? Uh, we're going to Mama's. What do you want? <laughs> I'll take a meatball here. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Keep going. I learned that we didn't learn anything in the spring, but we learned that we didn't learn anything. Um, the Passing out the dittos, it just doesn't work. I mean, my daughter basically had homework times 50 which was great, it kept her busy, I appreciated that. I had patience, we're all in a new world, but now we're not. It's, we've been here for five, almost six months, right? So if we're going to remote, it has to be virtual, live instruction. I don't understand why it wouldn't be. Um, I also wondered if we investigated the people that want to come back in full full time, right? So is that full time or is that just two days? Oh no, hybrid is the or you know the, the part you know hybrid is part in part out. Full time is just five days a week. Everybody. So do we think we're going to have full time five days a week? Everybody. Do I think? Okay. Um, I'd like that, but I knew I knew the world. I, look, it, how about it, block scheduling? I mean, is that something that the district has looked at, especially for the high school? And I mean, obviously. Well, one of the things that's interesting. It's interesting you bring that up because I've always been a big fan of block scheduling. But in the middle of you know, in the middle of crazy crisis, and you know, it is funny. And, and I'm looking in the back of the room because Mr. Harrison's back there, and and Dr. Bell's, and you know, the people that work with me every day. You know, Tamara and Mrs. Norton, Donna's back there, Cal's back there. They know that I love being outside the box. But we're going to try, I, I think we're going to advocate to be as simple as possible, not right, to but, try so to, you know, not to try to shake things up, like try to change the schedules. Because let's say we go for a couple, you know, let's say we go six months and this, things get better and we're told everything's all right and we can come back full time. If you've changed the schedule, now you have to redo everything, and the kids have to come back well, in and they can't get... can't you do a block schedule for per semester? So, um, you know, we do English, social studies, and language, semester one, two hours, two-hour blocks, right? Now you have less kids passing in the hall, right? You don't have that issue every 40, 45 minutes or whatever it is that kids are in the hall for five minutes. You got them in there three times a day passing. So maybe you make a one way this way, one way that way. I, listen, I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to I, I be realistic. You need contract tracing. If they're in a class for two hours altogether, you're cutting down on, okay, they went to eight classes 
on Monday versus they only went to three. So now you want to block schedule, but everybody back. Yeah. Essentially, you're going to have the same. You'll have more contact, but it'll be just a little more contact than if you do a hybrid. And look, the minute you put kids in the building, you, you, that all, all that all that social distancing goes out the window. So. Okay, but they're social. Dis they're not social distancing right now. Just so you know. I was in 7-Eleven this morning. They weren't social distancing. But, uh, you know, but the, look, I, 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 I apologize. I love the block scheduling. Right. It just would not fit at this time. Okay. Because you, you, it takes a tremendous amount of reworking of the schedule and what we, and the course offerings and things like that. Right. Um, it'll, it'll be a semi, it'll be a block mentality, hopefully the new, the new teaching, if the virtual rolls in the way we hope it does. You're going to take a block concept, only you'll be in a smaller idea, and maybe the block will grow from there after the pandemic. But to try to put a block in so during you pandemic. Do virtually, goes, are you saying, okay, yeah, the school day is going to start at 7:20, you know, be on with the, you know, uh, Mr. Dolan from. We need a couple more days, seven. but you'll be hearing that. That that I keep saying, keep it as nor keep the routine as normal as possible. Keep right. the routine as normal they need as possible. Structure. Yep. Especially. Uh, I mean, elementary, yes. High school, middle school, definitely. No, they all need structure, and we don't need the high school kids playing video games till 4 in the morning, telling their parents right. they're doing homework, and then, you know, waking up at 1 in the afternoon. We don't need that. Okay. So. Um, and then in regard to the extracurricular activities, I know you said before that you can't run the school being open all day, whatever, and the reopening plan also mentioned um, no extracurricular activities. But, you know, clearly that's something that could be done remotely, Virtually, you know, honor society clubs, art club. I mean, they could, you know, run a food drive where they just drop off the food and they're not together. You know, especially for my daughter's age, you know, they've missed the SATs. They're going to fill out college applications. Now they're not going to have any community service to put on there. They need something. So at least if they can run activities virtually and feel like they're, they're having some community input with their friends and yeah the wording on that could have been better definitely uh but it also sparked and we saw it mm -hmm. we saw clubs and things i mean with, even concerts i mean my nephew is a music teacher in well somewhere upstate but he did his concerts virtually with another district they joined together it was amazing so you know like with a little creativity and flexibility that kind of competition I love. I'd like to say, I think we did some things that, you know, we did graduation and we had our celebrations and we managed to be pretty socially distant. And, um, you know, we were one of only a couple of schools that actually did their graduation on, uh, when they were supposed, we did, right. we, we did the rain date because we didn't want to break his rule, but, um, and we did it live. And we said in March we were going to do it live. So we were very proud of that. There were some other areas where we can work on. So. You know, the extracurricular area, I think, is going to grow because of what you just said. Right. Teachers are, you know, we're learning as we go. So the schools that did their concerts, their graduations weren't as nice as ours. Right. And, or they did them in the middle of July instead of in June. And they got rained on and the heat was really bad. So, Okay. Just virtually by real live people. <laughs> All right. Number nine. Hi, uh, Stephanie Rosado. Um, I have four children in the district. Um, so my biggest concern is um, just understanding if there is going to be full time. Obviously, my husband and myself are essential workers. Um, right now, our children are in summer camp. We were lucky enough to find 30 minutes away, unfortunately, um, somebody who would take our children um, for the summer for a few hours a day. Um, so that's our biggest concern right now is, you know, what we're going to do for our sixth grader, our fifth grader, and our kindergarten and second grader um, for full time. You mean in terms of if it's full time school or full time virtual? A full time school. Oh, if it's, if if we have full time school, you'll bring them to school and they'll go to school and have a normal school day. I think there was just a little misunderstanding with like the younger kids because I keep hearing some people like online say like K through I don't know K through third or something like that was. 100% full time, but then the older kids, they were like hybrid or they were online. Well, I cleared that up today in the letter because we said we physically do not have the space to do that right. unless we get permission. 
And one of the driving forces is for us to do it this way is we're asking for permission to do this. Um, our class sizes at the elementary are not huge, right. but you know when you take a room and you measure it, and we you know we did it again today. Um, I had done it back in April, um, and I've done it several times, and I, I'm not quite sure why. I just keep thinking maybe it'll change. Um, but the fact of the matter is, for East Islip to open full time, we're going to need permission. It's go it's going to have to say you don't have to have them six feet apart in the classroom. Right. Because cool. it's a stretch to actually to get, like I said this earlier, it's a stretch to get to even 16 because you have kids that can't see the smart board. So. Would they potentially offer something where, you know, children are allowed to go full time and then maybe organize like, hey, these are the kids that are in this class and then the students who would opt to stay remotely, would they be able to attend like an online like Zoom type of setting for the school? I know well, other states have done that. That's there is going to be, there is a full online option. Um, one of the, the reason we're having this meeting is to listen to exactly what you're saying and we're kind of checking off who wants what. Um, and then we're going to have to reconcile it with whatever the, with whatever the state tells us to do. Um, but it, it does say, um, you know, today's letter I think answers a couple of your questions. Okay. And then like I said, as soon as we hear from the state, if the state tells us we can't physically do, like put everybody in there, we have to tell you right away because then you need as much time as possible to make adjustments or decisions. You know, for some parents it's easier, um, full time is their first choice, mm -hmm. but, if, but they can't do the hybrid because it's just such a mishmash. And we are gonna keep families together. That's a commitment we've made. Um, but some people are gonna go right from full time to full time virtual because they can essentially you know, park the kid at grandma's or park them somewhere else. And, um, you know, the hybrid is just too, too convoluted. You know, and we talked about, we started to talk about the buses before. Uh, a lot of people aren't comfortable with the buses. So, and we still haven't gotten a final number on how many kids we can put on a bus. So. Okay, thank you. I you're appreciate welcome. your feedback. Number 10. Hi. Uh, Rose Cavera. Um, I have a son going into seventh grade. And my question is, in the online plan, you said something to the effect of seventh and eighth graders were going to alternate. Excuse me? That they were going to alternate. Seventh and eighth grade, what does that mean? No, no, I, 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 must, I might have misspoke. No, they, or, the, the hybrid is they're going to alternate days. It'll be two on, two off. Um, uh, but the se seventh and eighth graders would, would follow their schedule, regardless of whether they're, if it's full day hybrid or virtual, we're looking to have a consistent schedule for them. Okay. And my other question was, um, you said something you're going to eliminate lockers. So what does that mean? Like during the winter months, they have to lug everything with them? Um, that's, that's a really tough one, especially for the middle school kids. Because number one, they love the lockers. But I'm always fascinated. They put all their books in the, you know, when I worked in the middle school, they had all their books in their backpack. They walked around with their books all day long, but they continued to go to their locker, and I wasn't quite sure why. Um, but, yeah, we would look to eliminate the lockers. We're hoping that by having the computer, um, it's going to cut down on the te textbooks. You know, it, 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 this, this, this is a, a no-win situation because you really can't leave a set of textbooks in the classroom. We're having trouble with libraries in the elementary classrooms. Um, but we are looking to eliminate or seal, severely limit, because there is one big thing that nobody's really talked about, um, and that is you know, when they wear a coat in the wintertime. So to, to completely eliminate lockers is going to be very difficult. Um, but there's a certain amount that we can put into, con you know, there's a certain amount, of, there are certain parameters and certain guidelines we're gonna lay out, and then there are gonna be several things we're gonna learn as we go in September. And so the lockers, you know, it's best if they don't go, but we may have to schedule them going opposite times. You know, this grade goes, you know, uh, again, alpha. You go to your locker every other period or every third period or every, you know, we don't want everybody going at once. So if you went every third period, essentially a child with a, um, you know, a winter coat, would probably, some would put their, their coat away third period, so. 
Okay, and then if you could clarify, you said you had staggered dismiss, uh, dismissal times. Excuse me? You said you had like staggered dimis, uh, dismissal times. Like, what does that mean? Like, if somebody. No, uh, this is what you hear from other districts. Um, somebody came at me the other day with a neighboring district, and I listened very carefully to the person who works in the district, and I finally said, that school owns their school buses. I said, you own your school buses. The district owns them and run your own school buses. He said, uh, yeah, it's Kinequa where I live. I said, so please, next time do your homework because we, we, we don't own our school buses. We work with Suffolk Transportation. They're marvelous. Staggering times is not, it sounds really good to the politicians when they're sitting up in Albany, but you know, 17 years as a high school principal, staggering the bells is not is going to create more agita and angst because it doesn't make sense because kids don't all follow the same schedule. So you'll have kids wandering into classes at different times. It'll be disruptive. I mean, if we're going back to school, the kid, what we will do is put arrows on the floor and tell kids one way, and we'll probably have one-way stairwells, okay? But staggering the bell schedule, yeah, that's a politician who's never worked in a school. Unfortunately, and they say it on TV, and then people believe them. So, so and for the record, I am for full day school. All right. Okay. <laughs> Number eleven. You. <laughs> Number Number twelve. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Hello. It's, I apologize again. Now my son needs to know where I am. I thought he had like homing device. He doesn't get your emails. Excuse me. I said he doesn't get your emails. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, so my name is John Fox. I live in Great River. I have a second grader at a Timber Point. Uh, soon to be fourth grader at JFK. Uh, my daughter actually. Is, oh, you can put me down. I'm a full timer. Um, my daughter attends the uh, extra help you're running in the summer, which is phenomenal over at the middle school. Um, so only thing I was going to add was uh, full time. If you have to go to the hybrid, um, you did say you're going to a single platform, right, Google? Yes. The Google worked very well. Okay. I was very happy with that. <laughs> the Dojo, those others were kind of buggy, but the, the Google was very good. Um, the IXL stuff was torture. Yeah. It's just... Look, if I can make an admission right now, I made the mistake. The I know you were in survival mode. I get, you know, but, we, we understand that. No, 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 but I'm laughing because I said it was the Saturday of February break. My son comes in, my younger son comes in and goes, hey, Dad, if, if he said his friend was in Italy, and he said, you know, would you let him into school if you were the principal? Saturday night. I'm trying to watch TV. Leave me alone. Yeah, whatever, Matt. And he walks out of the room, but he goes, oh, but daddy's in Milan. I go, yeah, who cares? It's okay. He leaves the room, and I look at my wife, and I go, oh, my God, this could be a problem. Because they got, they got one of the last planes, his school trip, got one of the last planes out. And we knew. And what I said to the team was, eh, this is only going to be a couple of weeks. Let's get, like, 20 or 25 days of planned and canned lessons. And it really killed the creativity. If we had said to the teachers, jump off the bridge and just jump into the water and but I thought, eh, so I'm not in the business of predicting anything The teachers anymore. did a good job. At least I can speak for my kids' teachers yeah. through Google. They not only did class meetups, but individually, if, if there was an issue, they definitely would FaceTime or whatever you call it. So that, that was good. Um, okay. It's just that my wife and I are both essential workers. We, we've been working through this whole thing. We work shift work. So in that situation, it is tough virtual learning. Um, you said the, all the kids are getting devices, though, right? Yes. All right. That's that's and every and that's every kid, not one for family. It's going to be every okay. kid. Okay. And that's again, that's important. But that's all I wanted to say was I really hope you can work out the full time. It, it is it is important. I think for the younger kids, you know, even the stuff we tried to reinforce, you know, I can teach Common Core fractions. I had to teach them the way I learned them 35 years ago. <laughs> you know, it was the common denominator. So. That is tough. That, that, that does pose a tough situation, too, with, with some of the new curriculum. I'm just not capable. My wife and I are not capable of doing it. I could not pass second grade last year. <laughs> so, um, but thank you. And again, let's push for full time. All right, thanks. Thank you. 
All right, number, lucky number 13. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Nicole Ula. I have two children, one going into second, one going into sixth. Um, I, a lot of my questions were, and concerns were addressed already, um, but I just wanted to state that I'm for full-time learning. Um, both of my children had a very terrible experience with the remote education March through June. Um, Academic-wise and not being able to see their teacher and friends. Um, but my biggest concern is I have two children that have medical needs. So they, at times, require nebulizer treatments and medication administered at school, all of which we have notes and scripts and everything from the pediatrician. However, is, will there be um, some type of protocol where the nursing staff who maybe don't know my children because my fifth grader is leaving to go to the middle school, um, that they won't confuse their asthmatic needs as respiratory distress related to COVID? Because my husband and I are both essential workers, and um, they've been in the district for a few years now, so they do have long-standing history of requiring those treatments and medication at times. And um, I'm definitely not going to be able to have several phone calls at work every day um, that nurses may be just very overly cautious or paranoid that it's one or the other. So will there be some type of protocol in place for situations such as that? Uh, I'm, I'm not just going to say this because we have two of, two of our best in the back, but um, one of the things that, no, one of the things that our nurses work very hard at, um, and I used to marvel, you know, a, a long-time principal nurse's office in a, you know, a school, you have kids that are sick, you have kids that don't want to take a test, and you have kids that just want a friend and the nurse takes care of them. So, um, but I think they do an excellent job year to year handing off to the next building, um, learning who, you know, your frequent flyers are, who, who, and, and this is going to be one of the things we talk to the staff about in general. Just because someone sneezes doesn't mean they have COVID. Just because they have a temperature doesn't mean they have COVID. Um, and I have to admit, did she leave? Okay, I'm gonna kill her with this one. Dr. Bells, who I love, we have a thing, we have a, a, a testament that you have to fill out every day before you come to work. And one of our teachers across the street checked, it says, I, do you feel, you know, are you feeling symptoms, yes or no? Oh yeah, they checked the yes one, they just simply meant to check no. Simple mistake, right? Easy, you make mistakes. Dr. Bells went flying across the street. Now I'm scratching my head, I said, I love your enthusiasm, but if that lady had COVID, you'd be home for 14 days too. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a whole new world, um, and, and uh, just because a child sneezes doesn't mean they have COVID. But I, I have 100% confidence in the nurses, and they, will get, they, they do a great job of getting to know the families, getting to know the children. And um, once they establish that rapport, um, I think that things will be okay. The scary part is you, you've had a nurse you've dealt with and now you gotta go to a new one, but they're all friends. I know, I know they have meetings after school sometimes and they don't invite me because you know, <laughs> I won't tell you where they go. Um, my last question is that you know, there's a lot of policies in place for excessive lateness or absenteeism and truancy. We all know that there are set many parents who send their kids to school sick will there be some type of policy in place for students that have an excessive amount of time that they're being picked up from school because they're sick um, to be placed on some type of like warning plan just like a truancy officer would so cps and other agencies aside will the district be closely examining those families that maybe are just being neglectful and are being picked up early and sent home and this is um, especially you know, now more so because of COVID. That, listen, we've, that's we've really done right. it. We've always done it, and it's a frustrating cycle. But you know that what is it? Channel Five. 
It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? You know, I can still remember my grandmother. My mother would be out, and my grandmother would say, no, I don't know where my child is. And we'd be like, well, mom's 45 years old. She's supposed to be having some fun at least, you know, raising three kids by herself. But, um, no, we're going to have to put as much uh, pressure and we, or get the word out. It's a double-edged sword. We're not going to penalize you for excessive absences. Make up the work, but don't come to school if you're sick. Now, will people take advantage of that? I'm sure some kids will. Um, but the bottom line is, um, you know, we, we're, we're sensitive to the fact that we're going to have to monitor people's attendance differently. And like I said, if we think you're sick, we have to get you out. And, and uh, I didn't mention it before, but that we're, we're exploring the possibility of what we're going to call a, a sick bus. If we try to reach a parent and they, you know, are not reachable, we'll go to the emergency contact card. And now that gets tricky with a kid. It's different for a kindergartner, but a high school kid, we can take them straight home. But we all, you know, we have there are liability issues. But um, you know, we're we're looking at because I've had parents tell me I can't get there. Do I have your permission to take them home? You know, I I used to drive kids home when I was principal. So. Not necessarily sure I want to drive a sick kid home. We'll get a big bus and put them in the back and send them, you know, so. Thank you for your time. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, number 14. Uh oh, I think they're one of the people that left. Number 15. How are you doing, Mr. Dillon? My name is uh, Joe Basolka. I spoke with you uh, last Friday, so I want to thank you for your time then, and uh, thank you again for uh, being on the firing line for all of us parents. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I'm a little torn whether I want the full or the hybrid, uh, but uh, as an academic, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm thinking the class may look like and just ask some questions related to that. Uh, my first question, I guess, would be, is there a pre-K, and this might have been in your latest letter, which I didn't get to read until... Well, I, list, I leave here anyway. Uh, is there a pre-K, and is it full-time or part-time for the uh, for the district starting in September? Oh, they have uh, Anne, Anne, Anne Marie LaRosa, uh, South Shore. Yeah. South Shore Child Care is going to be in operation. Okay. So they have the pre-K, and then she's got the child care. Okay. Okay. Um, so in an elementary classroom, I guess, if we are with a full-time or part-time, uh, the kids are in the room. Uh, my questions are related to what that may look like on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. So uh, will the classes be smaller? I know you mentioned something about measuring, and it's understandable. Uh, will there be shields? Uh, will there be disinfectant protocols for students when they take their masks off? Let's say uh, if they're eating lunch at their desk or they're having snack time and they're at their desk. Um, in a lot of these classrooms, uh, as a teacher, again, like my classroom, the air doesn't always move, just like it is here, uh, then that infection just becomes something that's in the air and like are there protocols for when a kid gets up from the classroom whether or they have a mask on or off uh, and like what would those be I guess all right well, I think inherently if we're full in classes will be the same size okay we, we don't uh, you know we, w we wouldn't be able, we, there aren't I don't even know if we could find enough teachers to, to you know really make the classes smaller um, the disinfectant piece is one of the things we're working on with hand sanitizers, wipes, and we also believe that kids are going and parents are going to provide um, like their own personal stuff, telling their kids to wipe their hands, wipe their hands, wipe their hands. Um, the shields, we have not ordered the shields. There's, there's mixed shields and air conditioners, the jury is out. Right. You know, we're getting very mixed messages on air conditioners and shields. We're being told the ventilation systems need the, um, I can't think of the, the, the certain filters. HEPA, HEPA filter, HEPA filters. correct. Anthony, um, our facilities guy, is in the process of ordering that. He's also meeting with a guy who has the foggers uh, because we are ordering some of those. Um, you know, but the sh shields and air conditioners, uh, right now we're not ordering them. That may change. Um, the, my last meeting with the ISLIP superintendents um, I, I really thought West Islip was ordering them. I asked the superintendent, she said they were talking about it, but they hadn't ordered them. Um, we don't see districts, we don't see a lot of districts doing it. 
So we're, we're, we're holding off on that right now. You know, and I think when I, seeing the classrooms as they're being set up now, uh, like again, since you're predominantly elementary, um, think about what's gonna happen. You're going to have the same number of desks, but on any given day, depending if it's, if, I'm talking about the hybrid now, if we wind up in the hybrid, you'll, you'll have kids sitting every other day, not even every other. We're gonna, we're gonna put desks so that, and, and you won't sit at somebody else's desk. The right. elementary kids will have their own personal desk. Where it gets tricky is the high school and the middle school. Right. You know, the best idea I've heard, and I don't think we can physically do it, but there's a college that is giving kids fold-out chairs that have the, the uh, if you've seen them, you can, you can buy a folding chair that has a tray on it and they're gonna carry the chairs from class to class, and that's what they're gonna do. Ultimately, you know, um, it would be very hard to do that in our hallways, but that is not something that, if this goes on for a long time, um, I wouldn't rule that out. You know, we're all keeping the mindset, and I know I'm the guy that said this will only be a couple of weeks. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Um, but we're hoping that sometime midwinter, that we get good news and we're in a good place, or we're gonna be out completely waiting for the good news to come. So that's why we, it's important to get everybody a computer in case we have to all go out again. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, devices, I know we said we were going for a Google platform. Um, turnaround time for getting these devices to the building. I'm just wondering, has, have they been ordered? Uh, What's the, I guess, the lead time on that? When should we expect delivery? Well, we expect delivery the last week in August. Yeah. But. I'm hearing I mean, this world world, worldwide we, delays, that's why. I mean, we I, all know the supply chain and look, we have a reputable vendor. The guys upstairs did a great job. The board, um, it was an emergency movement of money. Um, I give the board a lot of credit. Um, but like I said, if we don't have the devices, it's not the end of the world, because really the first month we have to focus on how to live in the world, how to live in a COVID world, how to, you know, and we're gonna be breaking a lot of old habits, you know, the high fives and, the, you know, um, just, just kids are gonna have to act differently in school and they're gonna have to do a better job than they're doing when, you know, we're not watching, okay? So, um, oh, he's gonna die when I do this. But, um, you know, the most important thing is that they're on the way um, one of the reasons we moved school back was two reasons, uh, to the eighth. Um, one was we wanted, um, uh, we wanted to give the teachers more time for training. And number two, we wanted to give the computer company an extra week just in case, but. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I just want to go back to the disinfection part. That, okay. My last question. So. If I'm understanding you in terms of like protocols to disinfecting the classrooms, the students, areas, uh, if we're in a hybrid model, it'll be half the population of the class. I get that. But you're basically expecting the kids to kind of like police themselves or disinfect themselves or like hoping parents would bring something in? No, no. We, well, we're hoping, I mean, we think we're going to get some support in that area. Um, but I mean, do the math. We, you know, even if we bring our night custodians in. Right. Um, that's why I said we're, we're looking at fogging machines, but we also worry, you, you, there also has to be a little time if you use, if you do certain things, even though we're going green Drying and time. save chemicals, um, it's going to be a challenge just, just because of the sheer number of kids we have, whether it's full or hybrid. Um, but we, like I said, we want the custodians to really hit the doorknobs, the door handles, the bathroom areas. Um, we'll do the best we can in the classrooms. But, you know, we, there may, it may be a situation where, like, you, you have the, um, the wipes and they're available and you sit down. Mr. Bernard was a great example at graduation this year. He must have wiped that podium down a hundred times. We did five graduations. Mr. Bernard was wiping it down. We're not going to, and, and again, we have to be careful. We're not asking kids to do it, but we know some are going to help us, and then the custodians are going to fill in. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a daunting task. I and I, 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 I shudder, because I'm trying to be honest, I, I listen to some of my colleagues say, we're going to be able to get into every crack in every corner. 
I mean, my son just walked out of the room. We have three boys. I'm not a big, my wife really does all the work at home. Um, it's very hard to keep up with it, you know. So we, we are buying products that will allow us to deep clean. We are the foggers. It's just that day-to-day -day when you have kids moving around, they touch things. We can't follow them around and, and, and clean everything right after. But, we're, you know, like I said, once we, once we find out if we're full of hybrid, once we find out where we're at, then we're going to be able to see just how much our custodians can clean. Now, in an elementary classroom, if you only have 14 kids and they go to gym, boom, sure, you can there fog you go, the room. Boom. So, yeah, boom, I get that. We're going to do everything we can to get it done. Right. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Hey, guys, that was my son that you just took his temperature. He's looking for this. So you can tell him, to, oh, there he is. Come on, Matty. I just want you to know his older brother wouldn't come. He made the, he made the younger one come. Slices. Yeah, two slices. Yeah, yeah. Because mom's not gonna be home, so I gotta have something for lunch tomorrow. I know that. <laughs> All right, I love you too. My wife went away for one day, so we're pretty much falling apart. Um, uh, all right, number sixteen. <laughs> Uh oh, number seventeen. Number eighteen. Hello, Mr. Hey stranger, how are you? How are you doing? I'm all right. All right. So um I might have missed this at the beginning, but one of my big things is if there's an exposure in the kids' classroom, if we keep them in their cohorts. Are parents going to be notified? Because I know there's a lot of HIPAA laws and stuff. Like if there's head lice, we can't let parents in classes know and stuff. Is it going to be a little different with if a child has come to school in our kids' classroom? With we believe so. Okay. We no no. We're getting you know, you're getting these mixed messages, but I mean in good conscience, right. this is um, you know people are going to have to know. So we believe that's going to be the case because we have to. We're going to have to call up and do contact tracing. So that's going to alert you to the, okay. to the problem. So I can email you in a couple weeks and you'll answer me? Yeah. Okay. No, no. The, the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> I just not, we, I haven't gotten my instructions from the attorneys on how to say yes. Right. Okay. I mean, but, but common sense will dictate here. He said that we have to do um, contract. We have to, we, we have to make sure we link to a health care agency. And there's, there is one really big one and another fairly big one in the neighborhood. So we're pretty sure we're going to link up with one of them. And as far as contact tracing if we call you up and say oh by the way it's it's a it's an implied that there was somebody in the classroom. in the classroom or in proximity okay. could have been an office it could have been something else so okay. All right. so the answer is yes i just don't know how to say it legally yet right. okay gotcha so um okay classrooms again you know i'm in a building myself i've been in school districts for 18 years um some buildings some classrooms have windows that open this much they maybe have one window so in situations like that have people been going into the rooms to see how much airflow we can get can we is there any talk about purchasing portable HEPA filters because a lot of the dance studios like other places where kids are in small confined spaces are being told to use the portable HEPA filters not just in the in the air, air filtration system have we looked into that for those classrooms that really have no flow? One of the things that we're looking, because we are right with windows, which is a little tricky, we got to get screens, but you know, we've been, we've been dealing with that for years. Um, the, we, see, we, our, our, our enrollment is lower, but we went to this crazy Princeton sort of plan and our buildings are just not that empty. Build the elementaries. The high school and the middle school, we have room. But I, I alluded to it before. Um, most of those uh, small rooms are used for small group instruction for whatever, PT, speech, things like that, OT. And we're looking to get them out into open space. Okay. 
Um, but you know, it's, it's classrooms too, because I've had my personal, my own kids in classrooms yeah. where there's it's 110 degrees in there in September and the window opens this much. It's amazing at JFK upstairs if you're on one side of the building or the other how much cooler it is, and it you know depending on the airflow. Yeah, yeah RCK but too. Yeah, that's absolutely. one of the things. Um, that's one of the things we're going to be we're looking at very hard right now. Um, Especially if they have to be masked for six hours. That's my biggest issue: is masked and no airflow and no AC. And we're talking about disaster. Well, let me ask right? you this: Are you full virtual or hybrid? I am. Send them back to school, but safely as possible. And I don't know that masks for that long in a 110 degree classroom is uh, is. I think it's a safety issue for health. Because th this this is the conundrum I have. But you guys are telling me what I saw in a survey. Overwhelmingly, people have been saying full. But they need their teachers. We, they want full. But, you know, if we have fewer kids in classes or if we, have, if we go hybrid, we can use spaces differently and we don't have as many um, bottlenecks. I mean, I'm even okay with hybrid, but. I don't know. You got to pick one or the other. I'm a, all right. Then send them back. Um, okay. Uh, I've got four pages. Sorry. I'm going to go quick. <laughs> Movement. You did it. Okay, cleaning and sanitizing, I know we've talked about it. Again, because I've been in a building and I've seen it firsthand, the mops that are being used on the floors and then they're doing the cafeteria tables with the same mops and the, and the rags that look like they've been used since 1985. Is there gonna be a little bit of an upgrade on these cleaning products and protocols because? Well, we've been ordering a lot of cleaning stuff. Yeah, this it's... is, okay. And you know, it's interesting because I had an aunt, Josephite Nunn, God bless her, she knew more about raising kids than, than I ever did. And, and um, she used to say to me all the time, you guys are killing your kids because you're sanitizing everything. They don't build up any immunities. Right. Yes, um, but now's not the time to play games with right. trying and to build up immunities. Yeah. Even hand sanitizer, I don't, my kids don't typically use hand sanitizer, whatever, but the mops on the floors and then on the tables and... I don't know. I just we the board just passed. I forget how much it was, but it was it was fairly significant. It was either three quarters, maybe a million dollars at the last meeting, just to work on cleaning supplies and stuff. So okay. we're we're looking. You know, like I said, some of these other schools have re, are reopening buildings and spending millions of dollars on buildings that they're going to close again as soon as this is over. We're trying to reposition to, you know, cleaning supplies and and. We're looking at hiring more custodial aides because they would do they do the um, the front line kind of front line cleaning. So that's something that's all that's also in the works. And I know you said bathrooms and stuff will be sanitized and cleaned more often throughout the day. But what about when there's bathrooms in the so more so the elementary the bathrooms in the classrooms are those going to be hit during the day as well? We're, again, we're going they're going to do everything they can. They're going to have a rotation. Um, it's very difficult. Those bathrooms, by the way, are all supposed to be replaced. I um, you know, and it is, it, it, it's not a great setup. Right. It is not a great setup, but, um, you know, we, we had this conversation and that's why we're looking for, we're going to be looking to get some custodial aid help. Okay. That was a bad situation before COVID. I, I, I couldn't, but when I first oh, I saw that. it, I know. you know, that was the whole bond. And when I first, I first saw it, I went, holy cow. Yeah, you get it. disgusting yeah. at, at it's not the a good very setup. best. In this situation, it's definitely going to need yeah, some yeah. attention. Help is on the way. I it's scheduled to start, you know, in a couple, well, the bathrooms are going to start in a few weeks. But that I have, my last one is coming up, and she's supposed to go to kindergarten if I send her. But, so my concern is I've seen, not East Islet, but I've seen other districts' pictures of what kindergarten rooms look like right now for the setup process, and they are worse than a hospital room, and I'm concerned that, it, like our center is still going to be used in some sort of sanitary way. Like maybe every kid gets their own. I just there's so much of the kindergarten first grade learning that is socialized and is working in centers. And if they're in a desk all day every day being told not to, you know, don't talk to this one, don't touch this, don't. That's my big concern about kindergarten first grade that that age group. You know, this is a tough one because just this morning, you know, we've been meeting with the unit heads. Um, and the, the, the unions here have been very cooperative in trying to find solutions. And to be, I was with two women who are, are tr tried and true. They really, um, one, one is an administrator, one's a teacher. And we were, we were hammering out 
because I've known this now since really for the last several months. And some school districts are, and I know this, going in and ripping, like you said, I've everything seen, out. I've seen a couple of districts. And I'm struggling with that. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like a classroom. And, it's, and the health and safety has to trump even the look of the classroom. But I'm fairly confident um, because now that we, you know, we're, we're going to have, we're, we're, we're hammering things out. We've got an 8 o'clock meeting tomorrow. I'll be here till 9 o'clock tonight. Then 8 o'clock, I'm going to go in with this information. And then we've got three virtual meetings planned. I'm hoping the last virtual meeting won't even be necessary because we will have rolled out the plan by then. But um, that was a major concern is the, and this goes to social emotional. What is the classroom going to look like? So I am willing to um, take a deep breath. Because I did, I, 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 you know, I have to say things to force people to move. We're going back full time. We applied to the state. We'll see if it happens. Um, I said everything out of the classrooms to two people I knew were going to have a fit. They came up with some very creative ways so that the kids, you know, sharing of books. It breaks my heart. You have these great libraries in the elementary classrooms, and you really can't share books. So. Part, part of what I think trust is a big thing because honestly if if you keep sick kids home then nobody else is going to get sick so I trust that the teachers and the administrators and the parents if they do the right things because if they don't do the right things we'll be back out by Halloween we'll be right back where we were in March if, if we don't do the right thing so you know I don't like the sterile look I was going to, you know, kind of decree it. We are going to order pods because we said, I don't want to tell the teachers to come in and take everything out of the classroom. And that, that's sort of cold. Like, come get your stuff, put it in your garage. Right. We're going to offer them, look, pare down what you have. We, need, we, we only have limited space. Right. But if you have that favorite bookcase, maybe you can put the books in the closet over here and we'll put the bookcase in a pod just psychologically, that it's, it's easier to get it back into the building from the pod than it is from the teacher's garage. So we're, we're even, gonna- Even beyond decorations though, is just like the manipulative. manipulative oh, the listen. That the kids, I, there has to be some sort of creative like balance that we can find. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean like when you walk into the extended school program and you see the kid with his hand in the going through stuff well, and he, you're looking around going, uh, well, right, you're not gonna share that with anybody, are you? And yeah, no, we-, we some sort of has to be middle ground. Balance, or, yeah. balance. I think patience and balance are going to be a big, a big, you know, they're going to be big buzzwords. Um, and food allergies. You know, my middle one is my yep. food allergy, and I'm a big proponent for that. But I know that we're looking, if we do hybrid or whatever, the kids are going to eat in their classrooms. Was the suggested, right, thing that we're going with? Well, one of the things we're finding out is, we got new, I think I said this earlier, we got new furniture at the high school, middle school. We have a whole lot of desks that we were going to auction off or donate because nobody wants those old desks except for schools that can't afford to buy desks. So um, we're holding off on giving them away okay. because depending on how many people opt out, depending on how many students actually show up, we may be able to set the cafeterias up. Okay. And, um, you know, at the high school, we have a we're going to have a beautiful new music suite. Now, the music teachers almost had a stroke because I said, you know, you got a lot of room in there. We might be able to feed the kids in the music suite and have the music players, you know, have the groups practice in the cafeteria where there's even more room. And the one teacher was like, I waited 25 years for that. I said, well, you might have to wait 26. And he laughed. He understood what I meant. So we're going to be, look, flexible, creative. We're going to be all those things. I just want to go on record saying that if the kids are eating in the classrooms, and the idea is to send these kids that are already socially isolated. Now my al now the allergy kids get sent to a room by themselves. To, that's a that's a not a good idea when we're already having issues with kids emotionally. Well, it, the, the one that just walked out of here, he's he's our allergy one, and um, I know exactly what you what you mean. And one of the things we've talked about is the sense of community. We might be able to work individually, especially at the elementary level, class by class, or even at the high school. Kids are amazing. Kids really are. If, if Kids will rise up. And 
you know what? If you have to say to a class, hey guys, could you not have peanut butter and jelly in here? I think it's a small sacrifice to make for the greater good. Yeah, and will people that. yell at me? Yeah, probably. But we'll calm them down and, you know, right. we'll, we'll find something to make them happy. But the allergy thing has been tossed around, and I keep saying, you know, we're going to, the rule is we're going to protect the, the children who have allergies. But let's give the kids and the teachers and the parents a chance to make, you know, I, it may be, you know, it may, we may be able to figure that one out because okay. we don't want anybody isolated. We don't want them, except, and he's not here, he would laugh. When he was little, he, he was the one we thought was the most, he was antisocial, he didn't talk. Now, we can't stop him. But, you know, so he's, he's outgrown it. Um, have you considered phased opening at all? Like, even if, we, even if we're going to go gung-ho, full back, like, have, have you guys thought maybe about doing it in a phased way? Like, maybe try one thing for three weeks, see where we're at with numbers, and then is that a possibility, or? Um, honestly, we did talk about it, and there was a lot of talk amongst the superintendents, and what we started to see is it would just be really disruptive to families. Like, if we start phasing it in, people would get, so look, you can see it now, the overwhelming majority want full. If I have to, if I have to call up in a, you know, the end of the week and say, oh, by the way, the governor said we can't open, people are gonna be real mad, okay? But they'll be able to adjust. Uh, a phased opening is, you know, again, it sounds good, it's got, it, it does have its merits, but in the end, it's just more disruption for the families. And we're, we're trying, I keep saying, keep it simple, keep it simple, let's run, hopefully we can just run instruction right from the classroom, or have some sort of live feed so the kids that are home are watching it, on, you know, basically watching it. That's what we're, you know, right, now two. you're getting little hints from me. Two more, I, prom two more, I promise. Number right. one, have you considered doing, um, having some committees with parents and teachers together to help with all of this going back? Um, you know, it, it's interesting. We, we've had input. We've the uh, yeah, we started to do committee stuff, and unfortunately, and I'll tell the story, I've told this a million times, some people have a tendency to dominate a room. Now, I met, there are two women who I see all the time, they're walking, they love the new track. I was out there a couple weeks ago, woman wagging her finger, we gotta go back, we gotta go full time, no masks. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then we kind of laughed because she realized that she was like within six feet of me and she was just wah, wah, wah. And her girlfriend was kind of nodding her head. And I'm like, okay. And I came back in and I told, I was telling my you know, secretary the story. I said, hey, those are two ladies that want a full opening. Well, a little while later, I get a phone call. Oh, Mr. Dolan, I just want to tell you, she's my best friend and I love her, but I can't fight with her anymore. But I'm really scared and I don't know if I want, I want my kids to even go back to school. And the surveys have been very eye-opening and sitting here listening to this small group so far, you know, we've gone through 20 people and you're matching what the surveys told us. And we're, we're more than willing, like I said, we're gonna have the virtual meetings, trying to figure out a way to do it in an orderly fashion. And in the letter today it says, I, I, don't quote me because get, I'm getting forgetful, but <laughs> getting old, but uh, I think elementary is Thursday and secondary is gonna be on Monday so that we can kind of focus on those things. Um, uh, but look, I made a decision. I had to make a decision. Um, the, the, the places that have been having meeting after meeting after meeting, people are ready to kill each other. Okay. Here, huh, you want to be mad, people are going to kill me. So you have something in common and we'll get, you know, it'll pull us all together. And I, I mean that with all, in all sincerity. Um, those meetings became spin your wheels, spin your wheels, spin your wheels. And oh, by the way, the guy up in Albany threw us a curveball that none of us, so none of us predicted that he would say that. Not one, it, not one superintendent in my group um, predicted that he would say that. So we're scrambling a little bit now, but I, again, like I said, we wrote a letter on July 28th that said we'll let you know on August 20th, and he's, tell, he's giving us to August 22nd, so he's tie slipping. My book is ahead of the game. Oh, you're welcome. I just have to remind you again, you know, I'm a social worker. I know. You're going to have a lot of social, <laughs> emotional needs, especially if we go back full time. So, I, you know, if you, the best you can prepare your teachers for the anxiety of these kids and stuff that are coming back is 
So that's the two, the major focus of the of before school is the social, emotional, and the technical. And, they, and a lot of teachers are getting technical over the summer. We're seeing it. They're signing up for courses. They're preparing themselves. They're fulfilling that professional obligation. So now we're, we're leaning more social, emotional. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. All right. Number 19. Mr. Kaufluck, you can sit up here with me if you want. Did you make it home already yesterday? The boat was going. Hi. So I have two kids in the district. I have a 10th and 11th grader. Um, my name is Kim Benor. Um, I do not want to go back full time. You want um, hybrid or virtual? Virtual. Okay. I'm high risk. I'm diabetic for 40 years, juvenile. Um, I also have really bad asthma and high blood pressure. I know I'm a mess. But um, if my children got sick, God forbid, um, and brought it home to me, it would probably kill me. So um, I would like Zoom so my kids can learn. Um, my son's in 11th grade, so 11th grade, I'm assuming a lot of classes are going to be for credits for college. Very, very important, he is going to college. And uh, my other son uh, needs more of the social. <sighs> the other one doesn't. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not really worried about the 10th grader as much as the 11th grader. But I would like Zoom at home. Um, and I was hoping that would be an option. So if the kids don't go to school, at least we'd be able to see it from the classroom, the teaching from home. Well, we, like I said before, we pick Google as our platform. Yeah. We're not... Well, well we, now the thing we have to ascertain, because uh, the governor did throw us a bit of a curveball, which I think is actually a good one. This one I give him credit for. He's saying we have to figure out a way to teach people who are, and again, I can't stress this enough. You folks need to talk to your doctors. You folks need to talk to your families. You know what's going on behind closed doors. And don't be shy. If, if you can't come, we'll figure it out, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so once you make that decision and you tell us, um, we're hey, look we're gonna we have we have staff that are compromised, mm -hmm. so we're gonna try to match the staff that's compromised with the families that are compromised, and it's not gonna fit perfectly. But unfortunately, nothing's promised. Well, nothing's promised. Unfortunately. Well, like no, that. but no, no, but that's why Mr. Kopluck now he's on the board of education. He's gonna figure out how to pay for it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> uh, so you, you see, put your mind at ease. I can't promise you Zoom only because I am not, it, you know, Mr. Kopluck likes to tease me, you know. He says that I'm the guy that brought computers here and smart boards and I can't even turn the computer on. But, um, but I'm smart because I have, I go into the high school or the middle school or the elementary school and the kids do everything for me. So um, we are going to have some sort of platform. There has to be more interaction. What we did in the spring was survive. Now we have to get back to My teaching. My kids learn nothing. We've got, well, we have to get back to, <laughs> oh, no, they learned a lot of things. It's not necessarily what we wanted them to learn. Um, but no, we have to get back to teaching. So there has to be, this is, this, was always, this is what I've been saying. You know, people are running around telling me about this plan, that plan, Colmac, Garden City, what, you know, everywhere. Oh, I know, yeah. And my, my only question to those people is, oh, do you know what they're doing on the first day of school? And everybody says, no. And I say, oh then you don't have a plan. But here in East Islip, the first day of school, teachers and children, teachers and students need to be meeting each other and getting to know each other. It may be on an electronic device. It may be face to face. But if teachers and students are meeting each other, there's hope that we're going to move forward. And quite frankly, if teachers and students aren't meeting each other, then shut the place down. Go to I, Khan Academy. <laughs> so I, I got to tell you, I mean, I. I Unfortunately, and I'm not trying to put like negativity, but I feel like we're going to get shut down. Um, I, 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 only because of the other districts and like other towns and states, and it's. it's well, listen, no, no, we may they may close us, but the, the the and I give Bill and the rest and the other four board members a lot of credit. How are we going to stop it from coming back? That's it. No, 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 but but now you're going. Every kid's going to have a device. So, and they're going to be glitches and they're going to be bumps in the road, but we're going to get through them together. The fact that this district, you know, when Bill started on the Board of Education, I mean, again, we were still ordering chalk. Chalk. Okay? 
I wish a half a million people didn't have to die to get to where we are, but we have gone from the back of the technological curve to the front of the technological curve. Now, we've gone so fast that our people are going to need a little bit of time to change their, but that's quite, you know, I listen to other districts tell me they can't do it. Yeah, just go online, check out what they have in reserves, and I'm going to tell you right now, you know, Financially, we're, we're putting ourselves not in a bad place because we were, you know, if this had happened five years ago, we'd have no computers and we were broke. But we, you know, Bill and the board put their money where their mouth is and they, they, they made an investment in the future. It's going to take a little time. It's going to take a little patience. And I keep saying, you know, we'll be like the pilgrims. By November, we are a lot that we're going to have some things to be thankful for. So. Um, yeah, it's question. good. I like that, if, the pilgrims. If I don't want my kids to go back and I keep them home, or that I decide to send them and at some point, I'm like, oh, it looks good. Is that a possibility? Well, that's a great question. We are saying that, you know, and I was going to be the mean superintendent and say sign up for a year. But, no, we're going to tell everybody do a half. It's going to be a half year. It's going to be January. And for the following reason, they're worried about a spike. The colleges are sending everybody home at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You've got Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas. You've got all the holidays. We're saying if you want out, you stay out till January 31st. And then the first week of January, we may be good to go, golden clean, and everybody's coming back, or we could be in, in a tough spot. So, um, like I said, the buses we're asking for a year commitment because we need, because that's, that's a, you know, and we're going to say to you, you know, if you're riding a bus, if a parent is going to drive a kid two days a week, and they're gonna take the bus three days a week, check yes, please, because you're riding a bus. But if you're gonna drive your kid every day, it's gonna help us. So just let us know. That's in the survey for tomorrow. But as far as the uh, virtual learning, we're asking for a commitment for the, at the high school, the first two semesters. At the elementary, it's gonna be, it, 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 it falls right around, Jan I think it's January 31st, right around there. Half year, for half year. Half year, For the high school students. Yep, yep. So I can tell them no in January. Right. Oh, yeah, you, okay. well, well, you'll have a, a re, uh, there'll be a re-up period because, like I said, let's see where the world's at. Let's see with, you know, the holidays and, you know, if, if hey, look, we all might be out or we all might be in, so. Mm -hmm. right. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate your time. You want to say something? Yeah, because it turned off, right? How come it didn't get going? No, 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 no. Hey, guys, number 20. No, no, we're fine. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Hi, I'm Emily Rockham. I'm going to be a senior this year. I know. Can you take the, just please take the mask off. I don't feel comfortable taking my mask off. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. Um, I do not feel safe coming back to school this year. Um, I would prefer a hybrid, but I know that this spring I learned nothing. I, my teachers, some of them tried extremely hard to help us, and others did not. And I really didn't learn anything. And I know that next year when I'm going into Calc AB, AP Calc AB, I'm not prepared. So I have a couple questions. Um, if a hybrid system is used, how will the students be separated? Like what's deciding the groups? It'll be an alpha separation and we'll keep the families together. Okay. And then are the, is the school going to be like fully cleaned in between each group or is it one group is getting the quote unquote dirty school that the other group is? Well, no, I, I just want to be clear. The virtual is where you stay home. Mm -hmm. The hybrid is essentially in a hybrid, instead of having 1,200 kids in a building or 1,250, you'd have 625. So you'd have half the number of kids in school following their regular schedules. Mm -hmm. I think we cannot go back full time, but I think we need at least some in-person learning. So hybrid, I feel like, would be the only option to actually learn. Okay. Um, 
In the reopening plan, it states that there would be no lockers. I personally, I need my locker. I don't want to be walking around in 30 degree weather without a coat. I don't want to have my coat with me all day. I don't know where I'd put my lunch. I don't want to have to carry around all my binders. So I feel a locker is necessary. And in my experience with having a locker, I, I'm never going to my locker the same time as the person right next to me. I've, the only time I've been next to the person is in the morning. Um, and then for the one-to-one -one device, how is it going to be distributed? Because in the plan it said some people will be getting new ones and some will be getting the old ones that the school already has. Uh, that's going to be a grade level thing because um, I know they're doing laptops, Chromebooks, and they're repurposing certain ones. Mm -hmm. So it didn't sound great in the, uh, in the plan. But we, we do have a number that we have that are being repurposed because um, the, the younger kids don't need, the, the younger kids is a little simpler to use. Mm -hmm. So the tech department is working, you know, going to work out the logistics of all of that, get them handed out. So are the high schoolers getting the newer ones, or we get, like, since I'm going to be a senior? How many high school parents we got in here? No, <laughs> I'm only kidding. Um, the, uh, it, suffice it to say, the, the high school kids are going to get the newer, the laptop version, a little more sophisticated. Okay, because when I was doing remote learning, I was on my laptop all day. I was, from 3 p.m. to midnight, I was working. And then in the reopening plan, it also stated that the number of toilets are going to be reduced. And right now, how the school was, there was not a lot of bathrooms to begin with, and there would be lines to use the bathroom between passing and a, lot, a couple of the toilets wouldn't work, even though the bathroom would be open, and the soap dispensers weren't full, so there wouldn't be soap in the bathroom. So I don't know how we can reduce toilets. It's just going to cause more lines and people aren't going to social distance. You know, that one I do know kind of intimately because we've been monitoring the bathrooms because we are replacing them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the part, of the, part of the log jam over there was kids wanted to go to certain ones at certain times in certain places, and it needs to be a little, there's going to have to be a little bit more flexibility. Um, you know, I said this at a board meeting. I worked in two buildings that were twice the size of this one, mm -hmm. and we had less bathrooms open. And, and But also part of the problem is the bathrooms are original to the building, and, and they're all being replaced. And we're starting at the high school replacing them, actually. So um, we'll have a plan to get in and out of the bathroom. You know, there'll be a and, – and, again, if we're in there full time, mm -hmm. we're going to need more flexibility than if it's hybrid. If it's a hybrid, you're going to have 600 kids in a building that was built for 18, 1900. So you, there will be flexibility there. As, I just want to circle back to the lockers because we spoke about that earlier. I don't think you were here. I did hear it, yeah. You know, we, we, we have to say that there aren't going to be lockers mm -hmm. because it's not going to be lockers as usual. And, in, and, and again, having laptops should limit the amount of textbooks and binders that you're going to need. But we also know that once we see actually how many kids are in the building, um, and we mentioned it, what you said about the first one that I said was your, the coat. Mm -hmm. um, we know for the first couple of weeks we're going to get a little bit of a break. Once we see the traffic flow, once we know what's going on, um, we, will, we, we will probably be, you can cut it down very, very easily, and the APs will have the, the APs have the, the lockers and the names and everything. Um, we may go to something where, like, every third period you can go to your locker. Um, which would, you know, again, if, if we're in a full-time situation, um, you're going to have 400 kids going to their locker instead of 1,200 or a little, little more. Um, in a hybrid situation, you'll have 200 kids going to, you'll have 200 kids going to 1,800 lockers. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we've thought this through, but we wanted to get everybody's attention, and we said no lockers because lockers are going to be much different. Because as you said, um, I would go to my locker and nobody would be next to me. Yeah. But there were parts of the building where they were shoulder to shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, and I've seen that walking through. So we, um, we need to see who's in the building, when and where. We need to watch, and then we'll, 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 we'll slowly reopen the lockers. 
The only problem that I would have with going like every third period is a lot of times my, my classes were not near my locker. I would have one class by my locker and I would go to my locker before and after that class and that was it for the whole day. All right, I'm gonna ask you something now. Who's your AP? Um, I don't know. <laughs> All right, it's either Mr. Seifert or Mr. Versa? I think it's Mr. Seifert. Okay, like I always tell kids, when there's an issue like that, when, you know, we, we'll make a rule and when you have trouble with that rule, you go see the AP, and I've yet to see a situation we couldn't work out. Okay. Um, I just want to say again, I don't feel safe going full-time. Even in this room, there are people taking off their masks, and I know students will take off their masks. You're, you can't ask someone to wear a mask for eight hours all day in a hot building, and I just won't feel safe, especially coming home to my family or like going to see my grandma. I, that's, I'm not going to feel safe. Okay. Thank you. Thank Have you. All right, number 21. Hi, Mr. Dolan. My name is Kimberly Tartell. I'm a rising senior. So previously mentioned one-way stairwells. If those are enacted, I would recommend that there be leniency on the uh, passing times and bell periods because it's already hard to get from one end of the school to the other. So having to go out of your way to get, another, to get to a different stairwell would be just more time. So you also previously mentioned uh, air conditioning. And if air conditioning is not in the school for CDC, in regards to CDC, CDC guidelines, I would recommend dress codes be slightly uh, with, um, excuse me, lightly um, passed on restrictions because you shouldn't expect people to have to wear um, entirely, not entirely covered up, but tank tops should be allowed. <laughs> and um, if it's online completely, for whatever reason, I would recommend having a whole week's plan uh, administrated in the first, in the beginning of the week because when that was the case in the spring, it helped me and my peers tremendously. So I just want to ask about the large classes, such as gym and music. How are you expected to um, separate those or handle those? Well, I, I did start to mention before, um, and again, none of this is final, but one of the options we may have, especially at the high school, and it's tough because you're a senior, we, you know, we're building a brand new music suite, but there's a scenario where the music suite could become the lunchroom and the lunchroom could be where you practice. Um, in the gym, actually, because of the construction, we're removing the bleachers, which gives us more space. Um, gym, is going to, gym is going to be difficult because, you know, we, we look to, uh, we were looking at things like um, can jam and games like that for, for you guys to play because, you know, when we talked to the students, they said those are the things they wanted. Um, you know, and we're getting a mixed message from the government. Youth sports can play, but the school sports can't play. But the, the gym alternative is we, we do have the nice new fields, and we're going to get you outside as much as possible, um, even to the point where we're going to push it into the winter. It'll be a little colder. We'll say dress warmer just to get you outside into the, free, in, into the fresh air. But, uh, you know, the gym is a pretty big space, and we, uh, we're not looking to use the gym for clay. It's kind of weird. At the high school and the middle school, we're really not looking at the gyms for classroom space because we really don't have to. The elementary schools, we might need them for some of the areas. So, um, you know, our plan is to get you into music and gym safely and get you into the bigger, you know, get you into bigger areas. There are some schools that are looking to cut back on those things, and we think that those are two things kids really love. So, um, you know, just stay tuned. We're not, we, it, it's really nice to see students here and to hear your perspective because, you know, I mean, as much as I love and appreciate your parents' support, you know, we're here for you. This is, you know, your parents, myself, we got our education, so. I just want to emphasize how difficult a full online learning was in the spring. So I recommend either a hybrid or full uh, in-school learning. But if it is full in school learning, masks need to be required, of course, 
as required by yeah, the governor. Yeah, there's no I mean, I'm, I'm not going to waver on that. When I wrote to the governor, I said, we're going to wear masks. But I'll make you this promise. If it's hybrid or virtual, it has to be a, a better delivery of instruction. It really does. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Kim. Thanks. All right, number 22. I was pretty good in the deli. Much better in the deli than I was as superintendent. Uh, 23. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. I got three kids, two, going to, two in middle school, one going to high school. And uh, I'm looking to go full time all day, please. <laughs> and... Um, my two daughters did great with the virtual in the spring, past spring, but my son did horrible. Every other day I get phone calls from teachers for my son. He's missing, missing this, missing that, and I'm out, and I got to come home. I'm yelling at him. He doesn't know what he's doing. So he didn't do too good, but my girls did great. Now, uh, when they get back, if we get back to school, are they going to be just masked? There's no gloves or nothing, right? Just masks all day? Yeah, the latest, I mean... I mean, nobody's nobody's talked about gloves okay. in in eons because I, I think what they it. found out is it stays on the glove. Yeah, yeah, that's a little too much. Yeah. But and also with the um, school buses, will they be getting buses, or will I find out about that ahead of time? Or well, the plan is um, to have buses. Okay. But the last survey we got, a, a large a large percentage of people said they would not put their child on the bus that they would send them, you know, they would bring them themselves. And, you know, we do have, it's interesting, you do have, the buses going home are much more crowded than the buses coming because the, the kids, I know what they do to you. They, they hijack you, put the pressure on you. They want to stay in bed 10 more minutes. So um, we are going to ask tomorrow, yes or no, are you going to be on the bus? And we really need to know um, because the buses, Steve Harrison, our business official, who's been great through all of this, has been asking me since March, how do you social distance on a bus? And I keep saying, Steve, I'm glad you have confidence in me and you think I'm getting smarter because I've had the same answer. You don't. You can't. What we will do on the buses, since it's starting to come up, um, the, the kids will get on the bus. First on, I'll go to the back of the bus. Um, and then we'll load forward. The other row? Um, yeah. They talked about putting partitions on the bus. Then they got a, a report that, that holds the germs back, and the National Transportation Association said if, the bus, if there's a bus accident, bus overturns, it impedes egress to try to get people out. So the bus is, the bus is a challenge because of the way it's set up. But we are going to offer buses. Okay. And we, I said this earlier, I've heard everything from 11 to 44 kids being allowed on a bus. We do not have a hard number yet. So we will know by the end of this week how many of our parents are going to send people. Um, I would like to tell you that we could order more buses, but they're just not out there to be had. Yeah. And I always tell the story, Brentwood High School has 125 buses pull up every morning. So if they had to buy three times the number of buses so that they could have one-third of the students, yeah, they would have 375 buses, and I would be more than welcome to be on the last bus going in if I was a student, and the first bus, you know, first bus going out, last bus in. Well, I'm for going on the bus with them, because I'm not in a, there in the morning. So, right, please do the survey so we know. Okay, when's the survey? <laughs> it'll be it'll be out tomorrow. Okay. It's only going to be like four or five email questions. Or what? what would it be sent in the email? Yeah, it'll be the email. Yep. Okay, and I think that's about it. I just want to see if, when we know finally. Oh, the other thing was. Will they be sending out a um, school supply list for the middle school? Yeah, we're, we're struggling a little bit with that. Okay. Because we, I didn't we're, buy anything yet, knowing not yeah. knowing if they're going or not. So. I, think, I think the safest thing, because we we're going to be meeting with the teachers. Um, once we have a definitive plan, we're going to be meeting with the teachers. And this is where September is going to have to be a, slowly, a slow month. I, I can't. I can't imagine us telling you that you have to have your school supplies on the first okay, day of so school. Okay, so I have time to. Yeah, yeah. It because could go we're. Way. It could go no school. Something could pop up, and then. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Good. All right. Thank I'll you very see you much. At the survey tomorrow. Thanks. Take care. Number twenty-four. Bless you. Bless you. 
Number 25. Dan, when you ask you, I have three children, uh, one going into first grade, one going into second grade, and one going into sixth grade. Um, I have a question about masks. Uh, I'm, I'm four full time, uh, seven days a week if possible. <laughs> um, I don't know if that was sent up to the governor. I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the alternate plan. Uh, we have a thing with masks. You know, I'm sure it's been brought up how many times already. They're not going to keep them on, or they're going to do their best to keep them on. As far as transit, so for, especially for the younger kids, when they sit down and they're static, where they are in their desks, are they going to be able to take the masks off? Do they have to leave them on? I understand in transit from one area where they're going to be crossing over other children's areas. How is that going to be, or if, if that's even defined yet? Well, the fear is, I shouldn't say fear, sort of the conundrum that the governor put us in. He said, if you can't social distance, you don't have you, you have to wear a mask. I did ask for the dispensation. If we can go two and a half or three feet apart with desks, then we can, we can make it work. Um, if we can't do that and we wind up in a hybrid, the kids are going to be six feet apart. So when they, you know, and I, and I saw this down at the camp. This is why we did a, a town camp. A lot of schools didn't want to do camps. They were afraid, blah, blah, blah. But we were like, well, we'll see how it works. And you go down to the camp, and kids playing over here don't have masks on because they're playing a game where they're far apart. And then when they were doing a, a one rainy day, a couple kids doing a jigsaw puzzle, they had masks on. You know, and you look at the jigsaw puzzle and go, uh, uh. but, you know, it's, uh, you know, the mask thing is going to get defined once we are told what our plan can be. I mean, again, I just showed Bill, overwhelmingly, this community wants full time. If I have to tell the community we can't do that because I was told we can't, that's going to change the whole mask thing very quickly. Because okay. you can, like I said, in a camp setting, they would take the mask off when it was appropriate. Okay. That rolls on my next question. Um, as far as the dispensation, where are we with that? Um, when, when we had graduation, I had a response in about, it was 48 or 72 hours. You know, we wrote first thing this morning, so we're just waiting to hear. So let's say you don't get that dispensation. Um, as you said, overwhelmingly, we're here for full time. Uh, has the idea of portables or other buildings been explored? I mean, I know that I got stuck into a portable for one grade. We all survived, and that would kind of alleviate the six-foot situation. The only problem um, with that is once, as, as you, if you build out in portables, you've got to hire more people to teach. You have to hire more teachers. And it, it just, it wouldn't be feasible. Um, you know, just at the elementary alone, we'd have to hire 100 more teachers and put 100 portables out. Because, and this is the dirty little secret, and I'm going to say it because it annoys me, and I don't care who repeats it, but one of the things that I give Bill and the board credit, you know, when I got here, we looked at the, the staffing, and we eliminated 30 teaching positions and didn't cut a program. The one program we lost was because nobody signed up for it. Okay, we had two kids sign up for it. In my home district, which is just to the east of here, um, I know for a fact that you could go in and, and eliminate 44 positions and, and the class's size would barely change, which means they're playing with house money, which means for years, and I will tell you here for years, um, when you carry too much staff, that's where the money hemorrhages. Um, you know, we we have been able to get ourselves in good financial shape because we made some tough decisions. Again, the board made some, you know, good, and I think very sound, you know, financial decisions. Unfortunately, we don't have anywhere to go. You know, um, a school district next to us has what they, I think it's uh, 36 teachers on what they call special assignment. My, my, I call it, what the F are they doing? I mean, they're doing, I'm sure they're doing good things, but not really part of the academic program. So, the, the answer to your question is we don't have the space and we wouldn't have the resources to go out and hire 50 or 70 teachers to cut our stuff in half. Um, the only thing at the kindergarten level, it's been discussed going to half-day kindergarten, okay? Um, but again, you know, that's a step backwards, but that's something that, you know, we're willing to, and I know we're, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, but... 
you know, if half day, half day kindergarten would allow us to get more, at least get more, you know, get daily face time for the kids. So. Um, and lastly, for kids who have an IEP, they're not an eight to one to one or a 12 to one to one, like, because those would be the guys that are going back full time. You know, my son gets OT and, and some other things. So how does that work? I mean, because it was, he got next to nothing. There are actually a couple different ways because we know the state told us in the spring, you know, just do the best you can, which was, you know. Yeah, that didn't work for him. It didn't work very well. But two things we're looking at, because if we're, if we're in a hybrid situation, um, we're going to have more space. So the OT, the PT people can, will have, we'll, we'll be able to put them in areas where they're, we're not going to put them back in those small rooms that they were in. Um, but also, if we go the two-day on, two-day off with the fifth day, um, there may be some things we can do with the OT and PT kids, uh, whether it's live or virtual, that will be much healthier than it was last spring. Last spring was not good, not good at all. And not just here, I mean, across the state. I was up at my in-laws in Buffalo. My, uh, my sister-in-law happens to be a third-grade teacher. And, you know, uh, yeah, I had to listen to her complain about it a lot. She thought somehow I could do something about it. It's, you know, and I love her. She's a sweet kid. But I was like, Jill, really? You know, but yeah, we, I, they had the same problems in Buffalo that we had here down on Long Island. Yeah, I mean, it's, these kids have to go back full time. Okay, but there's no framework for that right now. Okay, so just close dispensation should here within 72 hours, right? Yeah, I think I put it, I know I put in the letter, you'd know by August 20th, but I also said if I hear before that, we'll tell you as soon as we do. Okay. Um, my, my gut tells me we'll know by, the, by Monday. By next Monday, we should have a definite answer. Okay. I would love to know sooner. Go ahead. Is your son a middle school? No. He's uh, going into second grade. First, second, fifth, first, second, fifth, right? Yeah, yeah. First, second, first, second, sixth. Oh, sixth. I'm sorry. So the school year starts with the end of the elementary school. Yeah. Temper point. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Number 26. I could breathe. No worries, not that bad. Um, my name is Denise Abel. I have a daughter. My final daughter is going to be graduating here um, in uh, hopefully in June. And um, although the spring was very difficult, I think that you guys did the best uh, that you can as far as, you know, two weeks to, oh, my God. So um, I just want to say that I appreciate all the efforts. I know it wasn't perfect, but I appreciate what you tried to do. Um, and second um, thing is, the way that we're sitting here is really safe, and that's great. But now you're telling me you want us all to go sit in that corner right there, which our kids are, and that's okay. If it's okay for our kids to be in such a small area, why is it okay for us? Why'd you put the where do we why'd you put the chairs out? You knew I had John, you knew I was gonna ask that. You put them out because you're supposed to. Wait, what? You, because you're supposed to, you, you're the ones who did this. I didn't do it. I didn't come here today. You guys put the chairs out here. But when our kids go to school, their classroom is not going to look like this. And you don't need to answer me. I'm just pointing it out to you, okay? The second thing is, um, just for clarity, um, if we get a phone call that um, our child may have been exposed, if that happens as of right now, at this minute, say, um, at the supermarket or whatever, and I get a phone call, my daughter has to quarantine for two weeks. So every time we get that phone call, the kids have to stay home for two weeks, because that's a CDC recommendation and mandate. It's a mandate. Oh, listen, we, we're absolutely, we have it now with employees. We have, we have an employee who went away, was on vacation, 
changed the vacation to a state that was a safe state, and while he was there, it became an unsafe state. And who the heck thought Rhode Island would ever become an unsafe state? So, you know, we we have people have to attest coming in a building. You know, have you have you been to a right? But again, if we get that phone call yeah, you as the state mandates, yep. that entire class who is going to other classes, so you're really gonna have a lot of people out for two weeks. So just pointing that out again. And lastly, and if you can turn it over now, um, I believe that um, as a parent, I'm here to be the support and cheerleader for my daughter, but I believe that um, it's ultimately what she desires. Okay, so if you want to turn the letter over now, you can. This is a letter from my daughter. To whom it may concern, the possibility of opening up fully at this time is slightly terrifying. Although New York is doing exceptionally well in terms of hospitalizations and cases, a high concentration of students and faculty members from different families and backgrounds all put together cannot be anything but negative. Sitting amongst other students, some of whom I know nothing about, others I see do very unsanitary things in school, does not seem safe. Many already posted on social media, to which she has copies, on some of the games that they will be playing with the masks and sneeze on each other. Some of us have family living with us who are high risk and encountering many others who are also immune compromised has made me very apprehensive in regards to engaging with others. So my daughter has stayed away for this time. My own mother, that's me. Um, is immune compromised and only leaves home when necessary. And yes, I am an essential worker, but if it means that my daughter will be safer, I will leave my position. I understand that some students, maybe even most, thrive best in the school environment. However, potentially jeopardizing the health of others should be your highest priority. Some students are very unsanitary, and the actions of a few can ruin it for us all. That being said, we will, we will be back at the beginning of the pandemic. We would have gone backwards. I'm blowing in the wind here. A school environment should be a safe place for those who work and study in. School cannot be safe if it or people in it are not, allow, are not following rules and are unsanitary making this a joke. If students do not make the right choices, which many will not do, then our schools and our community will suffer. While deciding on how to reopen, please take into account the actions and decisions of others that are out of your control, but affected the very community you claim to love. As of today, 33 to 35 states are unable to enter our state due to spreading the virus again. And again, we are New York, people do come here. I feel like the best option is hybrid learning, which will allow us to see how things go without too many students to have to watch or remote learning until the new year, which will allow all states to hopefully heal. In addition, students must take this seriously. They may think that they are immune to getting this, which would put me and my family, especially my mother, at risk. And that's for my daughter, so thank you so much. No, and Mrs. Albert, thank you. And I will say this, Miss, I know. If you look around this room, and this makes me sad, but yes, this, this is sadly what a classroom is going to look like. It's not going to have a lot of the, and especially at the elementary level. There's still going to be a certain amount of students in there. Wait, what? You said that the same, if it's five days, if it's full time five days, then. Oh, if it's full five days, these will be closer together. They'll be approximately. A lot closer. Well, two and a half feet. But if it's hybrid, and again, the, the, the what's class... What's good for my daughter should just be, you know, what's good for us should be even better for our kids, you know? And I know you care, and I know that you guys are doing the best that you can, so I'm not really here to criticize, but my daughter, um, she wanted her voice heard. If she goes to school, she, she won't even come near me. <laughs> um, and I appreciate that because I love her so much, but at the same time, um, I think we should start with hybrid to to see how it's going, because so many other states and countries are going nuts. They are losing people at a higher rate than New York did at its apex. So for us to sit and 
on our morals and things like that's not come anywhere is coming near us again is kind of naive, in my opinion. I'm not calling you that. I'm just saying, in my opinion, I think it's naive. I'm sitting there waiting, and I, in the essential work that I do, I'm not allowed in the office. I'm not allowed in your patients. So um, I'm not allowed back in September. They are waiting to the new year to see how the other states respond instead of because now we have people at the bridges and the tunnels saying, where are you coming from? Because if you're coming from one of the 35 states, goodbye. So that's it. All right, thank you. Ms. Alva. All right, number 27. Number 28. Hi, Mr. Dolan. Hi. Okay, I have four children. I have two in the high school, and two are going to be in RCK. Now, my son is going into third grade, and I'm deathly afraid that he is going to fall behind. He used to get reading, and now since the end of, you know, in March, that was it. It was just me. Everything was go online, watch the video, answer the questions, that was it. And my son didn't want to do it because there's no interaction with children or the teachers. And I mean, I understand it's not the teacher's fault and it's not your fault, but as a parent, the kid needs some kind of you know, guidance by a teacher, listening to a teacher, learning, me, you know, he doesn't want to be bothered. It's not a school setting. So it was very difficult. My other question is, is that how often are you going to be testing the teachers and the students to make sure nobody has a fever or anything? How often are we going to be testing? Yeah, like, you know, um, taking the temperature. It's, I said this earlier on. Um, this, we, we have been doing some temperature checks for a very small number of people. Um, and I know people have told me about these wonderful things that you put in the doorways that will automatically tell you what the temperature is. And then the kid goes and checks himself into a room and then they go home. And I'm being a little facetious. You know, at any given time, at the elementaries, we have several hundred, but at the high school, we got, you know, almost 1,300. Middle school, we have 800. Um, you know, and, I, and I, I say this, I was a high school principal for 17 years, and if you said to me I was going to have to take every kid's temperature on the way into the building, I would say, oh, really? <laughs> because, um, you know, one of the things we've gone to with these testaments, and I said this earlier, we're going to need the family's cooperation, you know, Families taking temperatures in the house and being honest is really probably the best way because if we're taking temperatures, kids are never going to get to class. Things are not going to get done. Um, the, the, the academic portion of the program will be completely bastardized, um, you know, because you, you'll be sitting there going boom, 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 and then you get the one that is, is hot, so you've got to move them along. You've got to have somebody to move them along. You know, at some point, we physically don't have... And no school has the hands to do all of that. Um, so we're going to have to rely a lot on trust. Um, when he threw in the contact tracing and all the other stuff, yeah, we're, and, I, and I'm getting texts right now from my superintendent's group because one of the things they're talking about, and, and now everybody's, you know, most of the guys are done for the day with their stuff. Um, I think we were the first one to have a meeting like this, you know, coming right out of the gate, um, cause, and we had already had it scheduled. Um, those things we're going to have to define for you. Now, if the state says we're going to have to take every kid's temperature, we're poised and ready to, we, we bought some extra thermometers, we'll go buy more. No, I understand it'll be hard, but I know from past experiences, my oldest is in, going to be a senior and graduating. I do know a lot of parents send their children to school sick, and the nurses have to be on top of calling the parents, and then they, the parents still send the child back to school the next day, even though they're not supposed to. So how, you can't rely on somebody well, being honest all the time because a lot of times I've seen it and my kid has gotten sick really bad. We've had discussions about this and the mask wearing because my, um, 
was, my security consultant was actually very good today. He decided to play. He said, are you ready for this meeting? I said, I think so. He said, well, let me ask you a few questions. By the time he was done, I said, John, you really had a lot of time on your hands today. But he was grilling me on actually a lot of really good things. And one of them was exactly what you're talking about here. Temperatures, masks, what are we going to do with kids that don't wear masks? And again, that's not going to be an option. And, and we're going to have to fight that battle till, you know, it's not about, it's like hats. We don't want them wearing hats in the building. We go back and forth. A hat's not going to kill you. Um, you know, we, we get into it with the kids a little bit. I remember as a principal. Um, but no, things like health and safety, we're, we're awaiting some clarification on just what is our legal responsibility. We're going to do everything we can to keep everybody safe. I mean, I'm all for my kids need to go back to school. They want to go back to school. But it has to be done safely. And if, they do, if you do hybrid, will it be reevaluated come November, December to see if it'll go back to regular full day? Or because my son is not going to learn anything in well, third grade. And I, I know my fifth grader, I'm afraid what it'll happen to her coming that the following year she'll be going to junior high. And one of the reasons I was adamant about having this meeting today was I knew, you know, and I'm going to profile a little bit right now. When we have our Zoom big meetings, there are going to be a few people that want to try to dominate because they love to just get up on, you know, they, they want to be the, you know, the ones that speak. And people that are willing to come here like this and sit like you and, and speak, um, you just want, you want me to make, you want to make sure you're heard. And like those two ladies at the track, you know, the one lady wasn't going to speak up unless she had a safe place to do it. That's why we picked this. So I, I feel comfortable sharing a little bit um, and give you a little bit. One of the things we're looking at is if we have to go hybrid or we have to go virtual, uh, excuse me, hybrid, breaking the class out where, okay, the A kids are here, the B kids are here, but the A kids are going to get a partner who's a child at home. And we're looking at we're looking very hard at the structure of the lesson, and the lesson should be an intro, a little explanation, or you know an example, and then give the kids some time to work. And which I'm stressing, I, I I want a normal school day, school hours, bells ringing, whether you're home or not, you know, um, and this I haven't heard in any other district, but if you assign a kid in school to a partner at home who they're now linked electronically with the gizmo that they have in front of them, um, that's actually going to be a very powerful way to engage kids. Just like this meeting where you come in here and, you know, you don't have to worry about getting shouted down because it's not going to be one of those town hall Zoom meetings where everybody, you know, we're kind of coming in in waves. Um, you know, they, I could make an argument that I taught for 15 years. And Bill can attest to this because Billy's one of the best teachers I ever saw because he's changed a lot from the first day we met. We met 30 years ago. Um, and uh, he had hair and mine was black. But you have a classroom full of kids and you've got the ones that go, ooh, 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 ooh Mr. Carplug, Mr. Dolan. And you're always going to them. Or you got the real quiet kid who you're trying to pull out. But then there's a whole bunch in the middle that just sit there and go, well, if I don't open my mouth, Dolan's not going to talk to me and I can get out of here. If we, if we build a hybrid plan or we build a virtual plan that forces kids to actually interact with their teachers, um, I think the teachers are going to like it more than the kids, but we're going to, it's going to be a better, it has to be better than it was in the spring. If we can't be in full time, one of the things I'm gleaning from just the conversations and the people coming up here is, you know, like I said earlier, I believe that, well, I'm the only one of my colleagues that, They've all told me they don't know what their first day of school is going to look like, and I keep saying in East Islip it's going to be teachers and kids meeting, getting, starting to get to know each other, because that's what learning is. You start in September, you start to get to know each other, and you go through till June together, and then there's that little thing called curriculum, and you learn what you have to learn. You know? And um, you know, it's hard, because you had a bad experience. We're going to have to work twice as hard to fix that. Does the, that mean the teachers will actually teach through like a Zoom meeting rather than just here? These are your things to do for the day? Go online yeah, we, with your we children? Expect, and and, and, and it's, it's interesting because the way the governor did it, you know, we've been having discussions all along, 
but now the rubber hits the road. And I, like I said, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, I'm going to be in a room with them hammering out, you know, the final piece. And I've heard all kinds of things about East Islip and who may be cooperative and who may not. Everybody's been very cooperative. You know, the teachers, the custodians, the secretaries, their, their livelihood depends on us delivering instruction better regardless. If we're not, if we're not back full time, instruction needs to be better. Even if we're back full time and we have these computers, instruction has to change. Now, what about utilizing any of the ECC building? Excuse me? Uh, utilizing any of the ECC building if more space is needed? Wait, I, I, do not, I don't understand the question. Like if, if you need more space because you don't have enough room in the classrooms, would you utilize any of the ECC Oh, utilize. Building? I thought you said Unilite. I, I thought no, you were talking about No, utilize the ECC. No. Yeah, we're going to use every inch of the school. Even um, if you do the high, like having the kids go to school for two days and then off for, say, some of the kids will be off for the whole week, basically a week off and then come back to school. It's No, no, we're, we're looking to utilize, like I, I've said, it, the example was the music suite at the high school. The music suite at a high school might be big, and it might, if depending on the number of kids in a cafeteria, they might be eating in there and practicing music in the, in the cafeteria because the cafeteria is bigger and you want the musical instruments further apart is what they're telling us. So we're going to get creative. It's just a question of we need to know who's coming, who's not, how are they getting there. Once I have those numbers, um, we, will, we will then begin to, and I've said this over and over again, the special areas, speech, OT, and things like that, that historically go in smaller rooms, we're going to look to put them in, in more open areas, the common rooms at the elementary schools and some of the classrooms at the high school, middle school that are underused. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Sure. Yes, he used to get reading. He was. He also had speech, and he streamlined out of speech. I mean, the reading teacher was very nice. She called, but that was it. There was no like one-on-one -on -one or any kind of, you know, reading is a main. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, thank you. Number 29. Hi, Hello. I'm Nicole Piazza, and I'm going to be a senior this year, and I think it's important that we're going, we should be in school every single day. No hybrid, nothing. And personally, um, the virtual did nothing. I have not learned anything. And I was just getting my work done to get a grade. I would pay people to do my work if I didn't understand it because I wanted to get the grade. Um, as for being a senior, we have the college applications coming up, the college essays, and doing it not face to face with your guidance counselor is like impossible to get the right information. And I think it's important that we are able to talk face to face because I did a virtual with my guidance counselor about just colleges and planning and it took her almost two weeks to answer an email about like questions I had and it's just I need like the information as soon as possible. Um, for lockers I think we don't need them and it shouldn't be like a problem. Like, I don't use my locker at all and I have a little, little pocketbook with five folders in it keep all my stuff organized. For like lunch concerns, jacket concerns, get a bigger bag, fit the lunch in the backpack, hold your jacket. We're walking around the hallway for four minutes, put your stuff down, it's not like a crucial thing. If we're in school every single day, I think that the desks being this far apart aren't needed. If you're sitting row by row with the mask on, facing each other, there's no need to be this far apart because we're not reaching and grabbing each other and we're just sitting and learning how we should be. Breathing in the masks, like everyone says, is like a problem with the heat and everything. Like, I to me, like essential workers do it for hours at a time with four masks. 
I work, I work six hours, I wear my mask, no problem. To me, it's not a problem. Just wear the mask on. As for enforcing mask rules, I think that our dress codes are, as someone said before, they're strict. We get new shirts from AC Moore, and you wear a nice baggy t-shirt for the rest of the day. I think if it's e that easy to enforce a dress code, it should be that easy to tell someone to put your mask on, cover your face. Um, I just think, like, as parents that are uncomfortable with their students coming to school, they go to supermarkets, and they go to the malls, and they're not six feet apart. Yeah, they have the lines for the registers, but who actually, like, stands six feet apart anymore? And I just think that if they're going to the stores every day with not knowing anybody, the kids can go to school and wear a mask and not know anybody. As for summertime, all the kids are hanging out together, so it's we're hanging out with each other, we're going to see each other in school, so it's not like we're not seeing anybody anymore. And that's pretty much it. I think. Oh, one more thing, actually. And for the students that are uncomfortable with being in the classroom, I think teachers should be able to record themselves via Zoom or whatever that we use for the school. And if the students aren't comfortable, they can learn at the classroom time as the teachers are teaching through a Zoom and the students who are comfortable sit in the classroom and watch it face to face. Because I think learning, you can only learn face to face, not through the phone. All right, Nicole. Very college, Thank you. <laughs> you you're thinking about, <laughs> Nicole, you're thinking about being superintendent any chance? Because I'm afraid I lose. <laughs> no, but um, let me ask you this question, Nicole. Um, and I wish I had asked the other students. Um, what you just mentioned, you know, we have students that want to come to school and we have students that for reasons they could be met, it could be medical, it could be family, it could be just emotional. Um, you know, if I was your teacher and I said, hey, Nicole, uh, you know, they're going to be, class is going to be live. Um, could I buddy you up with another student? So now that person, you'll be sitting in the class, you'll have your computer. Um, and when you know, the teacher's presenting, um, and we don't want them lecturing the whole period, the teacher makes a little presentation and then you have to do some work, um, you would be able to, I don't even know what you use anymore. I, I'll say email and sound like an old man, but would, would you be comfortable having a sort of a pen pal, an electronic pen pal who's not in school who could help you with the work? See, the only thing with that is how much is the person in school going to like, understand the information the teacher's getting? Like, say, for math, it takes a few days for a student to understand what's going on. So whoever's like, not watching it virtually or doesn't want to be in school, if they get the wrong information, then you're virtually you're not understanding it in the first place. And in the second place, you're getting all the wrong information now. So you want to sit? Well, you, if, I, if I buddy you up with the smartest kid in the class, like if I buddy you up with the valedictorian? I mean, then your grades would probably okay, be good. Just, <laughs> that sounds... <laughs> I know a superintendent at the ones is looking for answers too. Um, no, I, I thank you very much, Nicole. And it sounds to me like if there was someone out there that needed help, you'd be willing to help them. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, number 30. Hi, Mr. Dolan. Thanks. I just want to make a note that Mr. Carplug sneakers match his outfit. I mean, that's really nice the way he does that. Those are nice, I guess. Very impressed, Mr. Carplug. Very impressed. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Dale Afada. Met you several times. Um, I have three boys in the district. Um, I'm very pro going back to school, please. <laughs> And I'm on both ends. My family and I were very sick, you knew that, with COVID. Two of my sons had it, have antibodies. They were not very sick, thank God. I'm a believer the PPA works. I mean, I work in the healthcare field. From the, time I, from the time I came in contact with someone with COVID to the time I came out with symptoms, I was very close to 30 people, and that one person got it from me, not even antibodies, including my husband. Although two of my sons did, but they're up my butt. <laughs> but, but again, they have antibodies. So I'm, like I said, I'm on both sides. I think if, I mean, even here, we're six feet apart. To me, you don't necessarily have to have masks, but I know it was freaking out some of the kids. And I feel bad for them, but I think they have to be a little more educated, too. You know, it's going to work. If we're all mindful, washing your hands, I feel like helps tremendously. Sanitizer. And just being mindful. And I would like to think, like you said, parents will use their heads now and not send your kids. 
one of my biggest concerns is two out of three of my sons. So I have a fifth grader, seventh grader, and a ninth grader. Two of them have IEPs. Um, my oldest, Luke, um, he was in inclusion for years. He just went to resource room last year. Was doing phenomenal, but then pulled out. Um, again, was the resource room teacher was awesome, but you can only do so much by, do you need help, Luke? He, he was always, the teacher would say, Luke would ask a million questions. That's how he learned, very, very visual. So I am concerned about him, of course, going there. I mean, we did have a little bit of nightmare with Zoom. What I had in, well, almost, I actually liked Microsoft Teams. We only had like one or two to do Google, and it was a nightmare. But my elementary school, school uh, kids on Google were great. Just Spanish was all over the place. I was in tears every week. And the electives threw me over the edge. If we are home, I had boys that suffer, and they were, you know, we were up all night doing ELA and social studies, and then when finding out we're failing facts because we didn't make a protein, or we didn't, you know, write, sing something for chorus or band, and I get it, it's, electives are so important, but in a perfect world, which we don't have. All right, but besides that, Chase, my fifth grader, he um, was in um, self-contained his whole life, shuffled from Connectquad Elementary, Timber Point, um, JFK, which is our homeschool, um, He's very dyslexic. He's a bright, bright boy, but um, he, uh, he auditory processing and very dyslexic. Last year, I finally had um, Miss Lacey, who was unbelievable, advocated for him for the first time for me, really helped us, knew he didn't belong in the classroom anymore. Pushed to have him put into um, the inclusion. Took, took us half the year of red tape. We got him in inclusion in January. The first teachers didn't want him after two weeks. He gets shoved back again. Second group of inclusion teachers took him, said he did awesome. We're so impressed by him. Six weeks he was in that class, and he sent home with gen ed, work, totally dyslexic, a mom that works, three boys. So <laughs> my biggest concern is the 1211 classes and the 811 classes, if we go hybrid, we'll go full time. But the inclusion kids, it says, aren't. He needs, like, I feel like it has to look, I feel like it's very black and white. If you're 1211, you go. If you're not, you don't. But they're IEPs. The IEPs are individual. I feel like something has to be individual. He's not going to learn at home. We can't ask Siri. I work. My, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, I feel like he's like, a, do, I, do I fight to have him back in self-contained? He's going to regress. Or if I keep him home, he's going to regress. So I'm really going to, and I don't think like there's a lot of kids like him. We're very unique. But I feel like they have to be spoken for because they are that gray area. And maybe concessions have to be made for those few students. I know I spoke to a couple other parents. We're in the same situation. There's maybe a handful in the whole district who were inclusion, who were self-contained, just moved to inclusion, and now they're, they're just, you know, thrown in. <laughs> Is there any way to have the eight inclusion kids in? You... See, Mr. Car Mr. Carpluck didn't get to teach in East Islip, so we've been talking about that. I just want to make that clear. You know? <laughs> um, no, but w w I'm going to work backwards very quickly because uh, somebody did come to me and say, hey, you don't need the inclusion teacher, so you can, they could teach something else and you can make the class sizes strong, small. And I said, oh, no, that's illegal yeah. and immoral and, quite frankly, just not right. We need to do a better job, um, and, and, that's, and, and I'm, I'm confident that we are going to do a better job getting kids face time with their teachers. The 8 ones and the 12 ones, that's a mathematical thing. They fit into the class. So, but, you know, it's gonna, it, the world that the kids are going to grow up in is much different than the one we grew up in. This pad right here. I shouldn't even be using it. This is an embarrassment that the superintendent is still writing. I should be typing, and it should be in my Kindle or my Google or my something or other. But the next superintendent's going to be doing that. I, that's one of the on top of my list. Um, so I, I'm going to ask you, just be patient on the special ed, because we do need to do, we, and, and I think there are things at work. Dr. O'Rourke and her people are talking about these things. Um, you know, and Dr. O'Rourke was the one who did say to me today, yeah, no, you can't, you're not going to cut that corner about it was something else. Um, and then you, you said something very interesting that I, I want to put back up. Educating the kids, and, and September is going to be educating the kids on how to move in this world. Yeah. And like I said, you know, hopefully, based on what everybody's saying here today, I mean, I would love it to be full time. Um, I don't have a lot of confidence in Albany right now. And... You know, I, I have a funny feeling if I have to make a very unpopular statement to the community, um, my hope is that we'll work together to make it work. But, you know, in terms of resource room and special ed, um, that's one of the things they've been talking about 
in, in, and look, if we're in full time, it's just going to roll. No, I know. My concern um, is really hybrid. And really, my concern is my younger son, because he was self-contained pretty much his whole life. He did include you for six weeks. Yeah, but so do I regress fight to have him back? I don't know. You know the that's thing they're talking about in the hybrid is the hybrid is, is going to be, I think, a much is going to help a kid like that. And they have a gray area where then he could, I could still drop him off every day to have reading with Mrs. Von Glan. He's He was getting Wilson program five days a week. Now he uh, hasn't got I can't, that. I can't promise you that, but like I said, that, that's something that, and again, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, you guys are going to have the first, you know, people are going to hear what people are saying. But I'm very comfortable right now that nobody's really said anything that hasn't been discussed. So at least, we're, you know, we're focusing on where we have to be. Mm -hmm. We just have to do a better job delivering it. And there's no doubt in my mind that we will. Okay, so everything won't be so black and white, you're saying? I still feel like it's a little look right. And, you know. Nothing in school is ever black and I white, know, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Gil. All right, number 31. Number 31. Guys, I'd be remiss if I didn't say hello to Mrs. Carney and Mr. Zachary in the back. Good afternoon. Thank hello. you for being here and answering all these questions for us. I'm Mrs. Sturrock. I have three boys in the district. Uh, one in middle school and two are in the high school. I know we addressed this just a little bit. One of my sons, the one in sixth grade, Justin, um, has a 504 plan that he needs to be in air conditioning. It's a medical issue for him. So I was just wondering if, I mean, hearsay they weren't going to put on the air conditioning? No, no, I didn't say we weren't going to put it on. And, and we're doing a bond project that's going to fix the, you know, re right. upgrade the electric. Because um, we did talk about, at one point, central air, and we saw the bill, and that ended the discussion. We're not looking to add new air conditioners in a big rush, because we're still waiting. We're gonna, it's going to be some time before the medical people tell us whether it's good or bad. But uh, the, I, uh, the 504 is a legal document, so if it says air conditioning, chances, I mean, he's already been scheduled for the rooms with the air conditioning. So that, okay. that's something that we work on over the summer. So, so. in September, he will have yes. the yes. When okay. I, we, We're not taking anything away that's in writing. Okay. We're just being very cautious right now because, quite frankly, we don't know. We, the medical people are split on what to do. So we're not going to rush to put an air conditioner in every room. If a medical doctor says it's needed, we'll listen to the doctor. We're not gonna, we don't override a medical doctor. Okay. And I am totally for full time. Totally. Um, if we do the full time at the high school, middle school level, they will be changing classrooms? Yes. Okay, very good. That's it. I'll Thank just say this as an editorial note that comes up all the time. In the, at, when you get to the high school level and the middle school, even the middle school, they have different classes. So you, there's no, it's physically impossible for the teachers to move. It is possible at the elementary level, physically impossible at the middle school and high school level. But once again, that's why the politicians are in Albany and we're in the schools. So. Very good. Thank you. You're Have welcome. A good night. Number 32. Hi, Mr. Nolan. My name is Liz Stanish. I have my two grandchildren that live with me. Actually, I have a grandson who's nine years old who's going to third grade. He's in an integrated class who also has speech and he has major problems. Um, matter of fact, Tim Point is going to talk to the people in Ruth Kinney because Damien has issues where he needs extra time. He has to walk around, maybe go to the office or whatever. Um, he's a child that needs to be in school five days a week. And I'm not just because I can't handle him. I can handle him. I love him dearly, but he's frustrated. Xbox is just out of this world. He just wants to play Xbox seven, five, seven days a week, 24 seven. I have a granddaughter who's 16. She doesn't go to East High, so she's in St. John's, St. John's High School. She's another one that needs to go back to school because she's on Xbox 24 seven and Xbox is not educating my grandchildren. And she's a junior in St. John's and he's, in, he's going into third, he's a year behind. When I got him from his parents, I am getting custody of them. When I have him from his parents, he was a mess. We got him into East Islip. A, um, UPS, um, CPS helped us out. We had to get him into East Islip. I filled out the forms like I was supposed to and got him into East Islip. He started kindergarten. He had ups and downs with Mrs. Q and Miss McGee. He ended up in first grade. He had a wonderful year with Mrs. Petrogli and Mrs. Giordano, which was, they were um, they're amazing teachers. They should continue to teach every class. Um, second grade, he had Mrs. Fritz Morris and Mrs. Um, 
um, Quattrovelli, he had a hard time in third grade, second grade. He had, his mom just started taking him every other weekend. He started, the behavior went from being fantastic down to being bad, a lot of extra help. Um, if you even spoke with the school psychologist, anybody, they're gonna tell you he's one kid that really needs a lot of work and needs to, and he needs to be in school. He has OT, but they're not, they're taking, we're trying to take it away because his handwriting has gotten better, but they're gonna do a, um, a group thing in the classroom with him. But um, they also want me to bring him in in Rootsy Kinney to meet his teachers, to meet the school psychologist there and the social worker there because they, the Timber Point people, feel that he'd be better off meeting them every year. That's what we were doing, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Now they think he should meet the third grade crew. And believe it or not, I just can't see this kid learning on the computer. I tried my best to get him to do work. I got him to read. It did not work. In school, it seems to really, he sees the other kids. He does what they do. He's a very... Um, follow rules kind of kid. You see somebody not following the rules, he has to report them, which is not a good thing, but that's his, part of his ADHD. He's on medication. He's, from when I had, got, first got him to now, he's a wonderful kid, and he's doing fantastic. You know, I also have a granddaughter, Emily, that lives downstairs from me, too. She goes to, she's going into East Islip High School, and she is another one with ADHD, and she needs, she needs to go to school. <laughs> so it's safe to say you're in back to full, full mode. Full mode, please. He needs, especially him. He needs it. He, anybody else? My granddaughter from St. John's. I'm sure she could probably learn on her computer, and keep her grades minimum. But this little guy, he's not. He's gonna fall completely behind. He's starting to do it now. And that Xbox, if I don't break it, <laughs> he's gonna resent not going to school. Cause that's right, why well, I'm gonna break it. Thank you for taking good care of him, and let's keep our fingers crossed. And let's. I mean, get I, I really just, I, I, I find it hard that he doesn't. He, that, he, that we don't go to school. I really do because he need, he needs that in school structure. And with all the problems he has, it won't be good to be home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, the teachers do better for him than I'm 67 years old. I'm taking care of my grandson permanently. It is not the easiest <laughs> well, thing in the world. So to me, for him to be in school and learn and get and get to know what he has to do when he comes home, yeah, we do our homework and then we do our other things. Then he plays Xbox. But this waking up in the morning and the first thing he does, he goes to Xbox. I can't. Yeah. And he's not wanting to read. He's not wanting to do that. You, you can't. He needs to be. Get up like he used to. He used to think at the clock. It's 9.15. We have to leave for school, Grandma. I'm like, okay, we're going, Damien. And we are driving to Timber Point and then pick him up. He was, he's not a school bus person. He, doesn't, he had problems upstate when they lived upstate, and he doesn't want to get on the school bus. So he's one kid that will not be on the school bus. Okay. So that's my, uh, I really strongly would appreciate you listening because he really strongly needs to go to school. <laughs> if you could just make the special ed kids or the integrated kids go to school every day, that probably would be better off for them than the kids that are, could handle it. But we want them all back. I know, I do too. But I, it's, you could see the difference in kids that could really learn off that computer and really know what they're doing and the kids that, like him, he can't. He can't. Okay. And once you're in your home, you can't learn. Like I was trying to do therapy. He goes to therapy. You're trying to do therapy through Zoom. He wasn't paying attention. He told the lady goodbye. He hung up. Yeah. That's just the part that, you know, he needs. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, number 33. Hello. Hey, you know. um, so I have three kids in the district, and I am four full day, five days a week. Um, I wanted to ask if there was the option for, for a full day five days, or for families that are not comfortable, remote. I don't know why that there's not that choice there this way. Uh, families we, that don't feel comfortable don't have to, but families that feel comfortable can. Is oh, it going to be all Choice for the virtual? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's been out there. It, it's in the letter that went out again today. The governor said it on Friday. If a family does not want to come back, we have to so, provide a virtual experience okay. for the kids. So okay. that's, that's an absolute. So that's good, because I just feel like for the families that do want the kids to come back with as little restrictions as possible, which is how I personally feel about it. Um, I'd rather the ki like the children, especially the younger elementary children, not be subjected to so much of the anxiety that we as adults are feeling for this. Personally, I'm against the masks. I work in healthcare. I wear a mask all day. It's very easy for an adult to say wear a mask all day. Even as an adult, it's very hard. Um, 
as little kids who are constantly touching their face, uh, I feel like it's gonna even promote more germs because it's just something that's not natural for them. I understand it's not your decision and CDC, et cetera, but I'm just saying it anyway. Uh, there is a little bit of humanity lost with a face covering. You know, you don't see a smile, you don't see a sad, you don't see a kid that's confused. You miss a lot of body language. That's really important for kids that are learning and growing and developing brains. We don't know the long-term effects of breathing in your CO2 all day long. I understand for entrances and exits and things where you're really close together, but if you're spaced out as much as you can be, where there's very little chance, I just, it's, it is, it could be potentially quite dangerous to just keep breathing in your own CO2. We weren't designed to do that all day. So I'm just a little nervous about that with, with the kids. My other thing is, um, what was I gonna say? If we do do a hybrid that is A day, B day, how would, how would that work for say a middle school child? Uh, the hybrid that we propose now, can everybody hear the people that are speaking? Okay, good. Uh, well, so if you can't, I don't know, Maddie, can we turn that speak? Uh, I, guess, I guess when you speak, you have to get speak closer to the microphone. Um, you know, please, uh, the, the hybrid that we proposed was two days, two days, and then the fifth day, uh, you know, we're kind of struggling with what we're calling it, but it would be a more like a, a personalized day where there would be some, the, the classes at the high school and the middle school would be meeting in big groups, so the, the whole class is together in some sort of, you know, chat, and at the elementary, you should have a series of small meetings, and then the kids would have a chance to have one-on-one -on -one time with their teacher. So it would be in the building the third day? The third day would be out of the building. So then but the hybrid would be only two days in the building? Two days in the building, two days off, uh, three days off. But that's, that's also, we're working on finalizing it. it, it it's going to be the, uh, if we can come up with a constructive plan where, t where kids can actually get one-on-one -on -one face time with their teacher um, on a regular basis, then I could see the benefit. Otherwise, it, we, we might just go two days, two days. But that's stuff that's being finalized right now. What we put out in the, the proposed plan was 221, which is three days out, two days in. And what are the benefits for that? Because I'm confused. Is that to eliminate like social distancing or what is the benefit of the hybrid? Because they'd be distant, they'd be around who knows on their off days. And the so big, I really well, don't no. On the off days, uh, the kids would be, we mentioned this before, we're looking at an idea where uh, we'd like the kids who, you know, run a normal schedule if we can, if possible, and you would basically wake up and go to school, only you'd be on your computer watching from home. Okay. So you'd, and, and that's where we had said we wanted to link a, a student with a student. That's where I had asked uh, the, the student who was up here before, I think it was Nicole, would you mind being a you know, an at-home bu uh, buddy with someone who's not, who, if you're an A student, would you be a buddy with somebody who's a B student? I just feel like there's a lot of potential problems with that. One, with families that have two working parents, there's kids that should not, even in middle school, should not be alone all day, teaching themselves, guiding themselves. That That's one issue I see. Another issue is, like even, you know, the money, the tax dollars we're spending for a five day a week learning, is that gonna be, you know, I mean, do we need all of these deans and guidance counselors and all of these personnel for two out of five days a week? I mean, it's, it, you're really not getting the same services on, on a computer as we saw for if it's going to be three-fifths of the week being learning from home on your own versus being in a school with all these other personnel that are there to work. I mean, I know just it's a concern of mine and a concern of other families that I know. I mean, that That's are looking at other alternatives because... We want the live instruction. We went through this and, and you know, it wasn't fantastic. I mean, it's overwhelming, just the, the, my tally right here. Right. Um, I don't disagree with you. I'll go on record as saying if my kids were of school age still, I'd want them in school. Um, question is, are we going to get permission? Now, if we don't get permission, um, and I didn't address this with Nicole, but we, we're going to have a, look, I said this, and I, again, the group's starting to roll in and change over. If I could go back to March, um, instead of having 25 days of planned lessons, canned lessons, I felt, uh, you know, I'm the guy that said to, I said to Mr. Manzo, ah, oh, Paul, we could be out for a couple weeks. Let's just have enough canned to get through this. 
If I had to do all over again, I would say do a week of canned lessons and then throw them in the deep end of the pool and make them do more live instruction. Um, I felt that, um, you know, we, we kind of spiraled, and it wasn't just here, I was speaking to my colleagues. Um, we, you know, we, we didn't see this coming. We got hit pretty hard. Um, but we have to do a much better job at delivering instruction. If, if they tell us we can't go back full time, the online experience has to be different. And that's why I said before about this Board of Education took a big leap and said, you know, we, we, we were still, we had people coming up in June asking us for computers because they only had one in the house. And, um, you know, by September, fingers crossed, knock on wood, um, you know, uh, kids are going to have, each kid is going to have their own device, which is, I think, going to help. It's going to help with communication. It's going to help with learning. It's going to help with everything else. Everybody, and everybody, just about everybody who's been in here is, you know, favoring, is favor of a full-time, you know, instruction. So. So is the only thing hindering the full-time instruction, like the spacing, in which case, because, I mean, I thought when we did Princeton plan a couple years ago, it's like we had all the space and not enough kids. And so the, the kids were combined. And now I feel, you know, we do have a lot of unused space. Um, I mean, I would even propose, I mean, all these extra classes, as much as they're fantastic in a perfect world, like, you know, Dale was saying, you know, now where times are different, I mean, maybe just have the core essential classes where the kids can come every day and at least learn those and maybe have those be electives that you can do online. And it's just a suggestion to just try and be oh, creative no, and think uh, outside listen. the box, but having the kids come for ascent, you know, the essential classes, all the sciences, the maths, the ELAs, all of that stuff, chemistry, whatever, every day. And then, you know, it, those, as much as home ec and all those things are great and art and music, and I'm not against them, I'm for them in a perfect world, but we are far from it right now. I'd rather my kids get that, and then you can provide an, op, an online remote option for art or home ec or, or tech or whatever it is until January, say, and then, you know, reassess then. Just an okay. idea. Point taken. Um, oh, oh, I'll, cause, oh, I'll. Oh, wow. All right. Thanks, Jess. All right, I, we're going to have to hold. We, we had said in the beginning, we were going to hold to the three minutes. No, it's not one-on-one -on -one for me. I've been here for an hour and a half waiting. <laughs> so actually, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. So I just wanted to, those were my questions. Sure. So I have one going into eighth, one going into sixth, and one going into fourth. All right, thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. And just thank you, because I was under the, keep it moving. All right, number 34. And guys, to keep it simple, I'll kind of put my hand up when we get to three minutes now. Okay. 34. How you doing? I'm Peter Lasiak. I have two boys in the school district. I think you guys are doing a bang-up job for what's going on in this world right now. <clears throat> I have two boys, but they have IEPs. Uh, the school for the spring was a mess for them. Um, they live with their mother. She has a bad immune disease. Bringing the kids back to school for her could be a death sentence. Grandmother's in the house, she's 75. She has bad diabetes. I mean, look at the news. There's 100,000 100, kids in two weeks picking this up. Um, I'm against bringing the kids back to school. There's circum circumstances in my life that, you know, it's a bad thing, but also the kids will fall in between the cracks. They, they was a mess. They didn't get any help. You know, it's, they failed everything. I mean, they got passed for the year and stuff like that. It was hard. With people working tent, going into tent, and going into uh, fourth. But it's, it's hard. You know, these, like I said, it's, 
this is not a, a bad situation, but, and I give you guys credit, but you know, for people like us, which I heard someone else saying the same thing, it's, it's tough. You know, we're not teachers. Common Core, it's like Chinese to me. You know, let's do our best. We need something, someone to step in. You know, they're learning nothing on the computer. They're learning to bring them back in, to bring them home. The kids are not going to wear masks. It's, you know, so I don't know what else, you know. Well, I think, Pete, to sum it up, I think um, we need to do a better job at delivering instruction online. We're not teachers. No, no, not you. Yeah. No, uh, us. Yeah, we I know. Need, I'm we saying, need to, it, it, we need I, to do I a, get that, but, you know, she works full time. I work full time. You know, it's, we do our best. We're not teachers. I can't see them. I work around hundreds of people. I see my kids through a glass door because I can't see them. I can't take them on the weekends like I used to because, God forbid, I get something. And I bring it into that whole household. It's a mess. I mean, it's different circumstances for different people, but there are some people out there that have very bad circumstances in this that have fallen between the cracks. So I'm hoping that that's not overlooked. No, and and to, to close it out, because we're getting to the three minutes. Yeah, I got it. You, you, you definitely have the option to go to virtual, but we have to do a better job delivering it. You shouldn't be doing the instruction. The instruction should be coming through in the virtual. It wasn't. Oh. I don't blame it on the teachers. I mean, this was a fly. Hey, listen, let's try to get this done. I mean, we're all trying to do our best. But it, well, we've I had time. The teachers that. have had time to update their skills. So that's what we're hoping for coming out of the gate. That's what we're going to do at the beginning of the year. So. All right, that's the three minutes. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. All right, number 35. All right, what I'll do is I'll lift this up at 2.30. Okay, sounds right. good. Um, hi, thank you so much. Uh, I just want to start off by saying um, my kids are in high school uh, going into 11th grade, and my daughter's going into 8th grade. Teacher, I teach um, AP history in Farmingdale. My husband's also an elementary teacher. Um, so we really could see this from both sides of the situation. So as a teacher, it was very, very difficult to teach in the spring. Um, we were, I was online constantly on my phone. The high school kids sleep late till two o'clock and then they get up and they do their work. So I was answering emails and remind texts from them through 11 o'clock at night, because that's when they're sitting down to do their work, you know. Um, so it would be a lot easier for me to go back to work and teach in the classroom like I would normally, like I've done for the past 22 years that I've been teaching. Um, having said that, um, I don't think full instruction is the way to go. It's just way too dangerous. Um, a hybrid plan keeps the kids safer. Is it best for instruction? Um, I don't think so. Obviously, being in the class with the kids is the best um, form of teaching, but do we want our kids sick? Do we want our families sick? Do we want our communities sick? Do we want to shut down businesses because we're going to rebound back into this pandemic? Um, New York has done an excellent job of being the worst in the world to being one of the best in the country because we followed social distancing. We um, have done the right thing here. I, I have not been in a store where I've seen people without a mask. I don't see people gathering on one another. You know, we're eating outside at restaurants. It's nice because it's summer now and people are socializing outside, um, which keeps, you know, us from being too close and the virus from spreading. But you put kids in a high school back in full swing as if this never happened, um, you're gonna see those numbers gonna go up. And my question is, what is your plan for um, if a kid tests positive in the classroom? Does that kid and the kids around them have to go into quarantine? Does the teacher have to go into quarantine? That's going to create so much inconsistency in the system. If a teacher has to be out for two weeks, if every kid and if that kid was in school for five periods, and you have those five periods that of kids that were around the kid who you know is sick, do those kids all have to quarantine? What substitute teacher are you getting for all of those disciplines? The math teacher, the English teacher, the music teacher that that kid was in the classroom with. Where are you finding people in these disciplines to come in for two weeks at a time and teach 
um, you know, it just seems to me that this is going to create a lot more problems. And if we kept the numbers low, just like we've been socially distancing in New York and keep the numbers low here, if we keep the numbers low in the school, hopefully we can keep things, you know, going at a more consistent rate. Um, again, thank you, you know, for that input. And this is, this is the big thing that we're going to struggle with. What is the right decision to do? And why, and why did you choose to go full, um, uh, full instruction back? Um, that that seemed to be what the community was asking for. And what was the percentage rate on the number of surveys per the number of families in the district that responded? Uh, we had about an, it was about eighty percent. Eighty percent responded, and then out of what that over fifty percent wanted to come back full instruction. Yes. Even, I understand that because I'm listening to everybody's stories, especially special ed and elementary. Those issues should be taken. Um, I, you know, elementary school should go back and especially as special ed kids should get more instruction than high school kids who can do more. And here's the thing, I hate to do this, and I, I'm remiss because I'm sitting here and I had no idea there was a line out the door okay. until somebody came saying, and told me. follow the science. I, I, listen. That, you know, I'm going to write that down, and th it, this remains to be seen. And it does remain to be seen what we get told about. We made the request today formally, so. I'd rather go back to work, believe me. <laughs> All right. Number 36. I didn't know anybody was out there. Hi, how are hey, you? Um, I'm going to gonna change it. I'm going to raise this because I realize I took banana. a sip of this. So I'll raise the banana, yeah. Make sure I don't eat it. Um, <laughs> there's a, yeah, I have, a, I have a daughter going into eighth grade and a son in 11th, and a lot of my questions have kind of been answered, so I just want to let my voice be heard. Um, I do think the full-time back to school, it's, it doesn't seem like it's much of a plan, just put a mask on and get the kids back in school as usual. Um, seems pretty reckless and ineffective, and it also puts a community at risk. Um, if, if, I mean, I don't know if there's, I'm an educator. If parents think that school is going to be normal, like, oh, this is going to be great education, coming into school with a mask and trying to social distance with everybody in there, and all the requirements we have to fulfill, it's, I'm, it's going to kind of be a mess. And the amount of what ifs are, I mean, you've heard, I don't know how many of them already today. So I think the hybrid plan would be much more of an actual plan, um, safer, it's better for kids, um, keep them safe, keep the teachers safe, bus drivers safe, custodians, I mean, right down the line. So if there is a hybrid plan that could really concentrate, again, sir, on like the special needs kids um, first, and then start kind of with the younger kids, maybe that would be best. Again, I think those special needs kids are the ones that are really, um, really kind of taking the hit here. So, um, but we, we do have to do, you know, we do have to do something. But I, I think that hybrid plan will work. And and I agree. I like that what you said with the uh, the mentor tutor thing, the A B students going back and forth with each other. Maybe even three or four kids, like a little pod of of a group, in case one kid doesn't get it. I think that's a, something like that would be good, at least to create enough spacing so we could keep our numbers down. All right. Oh, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thanks. All right, number 37. I remember when the banana goes up. Hi. Hi, thanks for staying. I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Brad Kennedy. Uh, I have a son, Matthew, who's entering first grade, and a son, Daniel, who's entering sixth grade. Um, my son, Daniel, entering sixth grade, he has an IEP and will be part of the ICT class uh, for the fourth year in a row. And I wanted to know if you could explain the reasoning behind your decision uh, to send the special ed students in the 12-1-1 and the 8 one to school each day and limit the special ed students in the ICT to only two days of in-person instruction in the hybrid model. Well, it, very simply, it's a spatial thing. It, it, it just it comes down to what you, what you can fit in a classroom. We, and, and what can what can we fit in the classroom? Just to like uh, uh, the average class size here it depends on how you use the ruler, 
but between 12 and uh, between 12 and 14. Okay. If you if you do the hybrid, 50% capacity of a classroom with a six foot spacing is between 12 and 14. Okay, because in the ICT, uh, I was doing some, some quick math in ICT, and, and the regulations in East Islip are uh, eight special ed students in the ICT and 12 uh, regular ed students in the room. So if all eight came every day and then you split the other 12 in half, I'm at 14 per classroom. Um, I'm here to advocate for my son to come every day. Um, is, has the level of service been considered in deciding the 811 and 1211? versus the ICT, the level of services that the students receive? I, I didn't hear the ICT every day in the other no, path. No, 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 yeah. no, no. I, I must have missed it. And, and in the spring, we were in a crisis, and everybody did what they could. And um, right, the people at that time were like, you know, when you go back in the fall, you can't have it. Just right. So, um, so, so I reached out directly to uh, to Dr. O'Rourke, uh, Mr. Dolan. Okay. And uh, I spoke specifically about my son. Um, I didn't really want to share everything about my son because we have everybody's time here. But uh, my son is sort of an anomaly in the ICT. Daniel Kennedy. Um, he was a student that came out of self-contained. And with the great team, Dr. Paris, uh, Dr. Smith, Dr. O'Rourke, he moved into the ICT. Um, his diagnosis, he has cerebral palsy. He is autistic. You know, Mr. Kennedy, I'm gonna, I, I hate to do this, but like I said, I had no idea that there was a line outside. It's really tough to talk about individual kids. I understand. And I really want you to call me because the hardest part is, and just we, we, we did discuss this, the 8 and 20, the 8 and 12, if the eight come every day, when the others aren't there, they're to have, they, their schedule will be thrown off and they'll get thrown in and tilt the numbers in the other classes. And it's a very, very tough thing. So what I'd ask you to do is, if you could give my office a call tomorrow, sure. and we can talk about this, because I want to also talk to Dr. O'Rourke. Yeah, and like she, I said- She I, was the one that said, told me to come here and talk specifically about my individual child. I didn't want to do that for everybody else, but she actually told me to come here and talk to you. Well, no, and, and like I said, if we didn't have a line out the door, um, you know, and look, I think those that know me know that I like best either being with the kids or really sitting here and listening to everybody. But we're getting a pretty good turnout here tonight, and we're going to have a couple other meetings. But um, it also sounds to me, um, I need to talk to, to Dr. O'Rourke because, you know, I, I, I got to get more details, and we, I won't be able to give you an answer here in front of everybody else. I guess else. the key word here is IEP, individualized Individual. yep. educational plans, rather than a broad stroke. Eight and 12s go every day, but ICT doesn't. You have to consider the individual needs as stated in the IEPs. Um, and my son receives uh, quite a lot of services, probably more than most kids in the 1211. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy. Thanks for staying. I appreciate it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. All right, All right. See you later. See you, see you later. All right, number 38. Good afternoon. Hello. Um, first, I want to say I'm all for five days a week. I have a child going into eighth grade and one going into 11th. My 11th grader has a 504 plan. I can tell you she was in tears almost every day this spring. She went from being on the honor roll to practically failing four classes. Her teachers were wonderful. They worked with her as much as they can. I can say it just seems like a pattern, and this is only my observation, that the teachers in the honor and AP classes were very, very helpful. Um, my younger daughter emailed her teachers almost every day. Most of the time, she got no response from two of her teachers. I emailed her teachers as well and got zero response from one of her teachers and only one response from the other. Her other teacher's response was just do the best you can. 
all they did was post dittos and say, learn it. I could have very well have done that. I'm very frustrated with the learning, quote unquote, they received in the spring, like I said. Um, and I hope that if there is any virtual learning coming this fall, that it is improved upon. Um, my one question for you is, have you looked into thermo scanners for the building? Excuse me, I didn't catch that. Thermo scanners. Um, they, oh, for the, they the, take, the temperature. I, I started yes. to refer to that before. We're, we're absolutely looking at everything. Okay. Um, the feasibility, the actual, um, you know, how, and we also have to understand that, you know, taking on certain liabilities, if we say that we're going to take everybody's temperature and now are we liable for that? What we are looking at very strongly and what we're doing with the folks in the summertime, um, we are trying the temperatures with the ESY program, mm -hmm. um, but the testament, like with our employees, we really need parents' help, we need families' helps. I mean, right. look, once they're on the bus, we're in trouble. Once they're in the building, we're in trouble. So if you're there in your house and they have a fever, they have to stay home. The thing that really makes the most sense is take the temperature at home. Right. I just no, I understand. Text. Unfortunately, my husband and I both, I'm, I'm a nurse, and I'm out the door before they're even up. You know, I'll, I have no problem waking them, taking their temp. Um, and also, as far as me being a nurse, I can tell you, for seven weeks, I work with COVID-positive vented patients um, only three out of almost 100 survived. I never tested positive. I know people will say I had PPE, but I can tell you there were many, many times I was probably exposed. So our kids wearing masks in a classroom, I, I'm, not af I'm not afraid of it. I, I think we've done really good in New York especially the older kids, younger kids I get, but the middle school and high schoolers, if they wear their masks, if they wash their hands, I think they're going to be very safe. Okay. As long as they don't have a fever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, number 39. Hello. Um, I have a ninth grader. She's starting high school this year, and then I have a 12th grader. She's going to, she's going to cosmetology. Now, cosmetology was like really up in the air. They had to do everything by themselves, basically. Um, I know that they got their hours, but if anything, is there any way cosmetology could go every day for the four periods? We're gonna, we're looking at everything, but. Again, if you do that, it throws all kinds of schedules out of whack, and it, it, it will. But it's the cosmetology. Teacher. I understand. That's all she no, I understand. Teaches, and it's at one room. We've had we've had conversations about it. We're going to do the best we can to get as many kids in every day as we can. Okay. I'm just not going to sit here and make any promises no, no, tonight, but I, I can't that. keep. I know that. Okay. All right, and um, I just have to decide what I want to do. There's no way she could just go for cosmetology and do the other classes at home. Call my office. She's just like, Ugh. Call my office because that, that, has, that question has not come up. But tell me, are, are you full-time hybrid or virtual or you're not sure? Yeah. No, which one? Which one of the three? I want her cosmetology and I want her to do the rest of her three classes at home because she, right, be you... she doesn't want to be in the hallways with everybody. She doesn't trust everybody to wear their masks. She's like, people say they're going to spit in their mask. People, yeah, like, how about you know, this? Call my office because you just hit something that really – you hit an option that really wasn't. Because the, her main goal is that's what she wants as a career. Call my office. Huh? Call my office tomorrow. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good one. Yeah, have a good one. All right, number number forty. Hello. Um, my name's Shanta Just Singh Jennings. I have two children in the system. Talking to Mike. There you go. Hi, I have two kids in the system. I have one that's going to be going to RCK. She's going to be going into fourth grade and one that's going into the high school. Um, I'm actually all for full time for both of them, um, especially for my daughter going into fourth grade. Uh, the homeschooling was just an absolute disaster for her. 
Um, my son, who's in high school, he did fine with it, and, but I'm sure that didn't happen for all of the kids. So if they had to go to a hybrid, I'd probably be, I'd be comfortable with that too. Um, I'm an essential worker. I worked with the COVID patients, so I feel like I have that experience to bring to you all. I feel like maybe you need a little bit more input, maybe even for the families, because I feel like the children would be safe going to school. Um, as much as I would prefer, my, my ultimate thing for, especially the elementaries, I'd like them to sit the six feet apart, um, where they could take the mask off when they're at the desk. I do think walking in between, they should be wearing the desk. I think hand hygiene should be enforced as well. Um, for the high schoolers, I'm comfortable with them going full time. I do think maybe they need to be kept an eye on in terms of wearing the mask properly, because I do feel like you know they feel like they're invincible. So I'm sure at some points they're going to be pulling it down and playing these games. Um, if we could keep them socially distanced, I would be happiest with that. Um, I guess I had all these things to say, and of course I come up here and I forget. But um, my question for you is, I know for the elementary schools, you were saying that they'd be about three and a half feet. I probably missed some of what you were saying. Now, is the, and I think this is what one of the other parents was trying to bring up. Now, would it be possible to spread the classes out to maybe a couple of the other buildings in order to bring them to six feet? We, uh, you know, we've looked at different things and different models. And like I said, you know, other schools have more space than we do. Even though our enrollment's down, you see more space at the high school and the middle school, the elementary schools. Uh, you know, to, to bring in portal, we, we talked to somebody brought up portables before. To create new space or to create more classes, we don't have the staff to, to be able to handle that. We don't have the space and we don't have the staff. So, you know, we could hire the staff, but we have nowhere to put them. So the, we, we're, we're in a tough spot physically. And that's why I said it's two and a half to three feet. You give me two and a half to three feet between each desk and we can go back full time. I, then I would be fine with that. I think we're in a different time. So I think the children probably just need to learn to wear their mask and wash their hands properly and keep their distance. Um, there was another question I had. Uh, oh, virtual. Now, I feel like, I think there's a lot of worry where there's a lot of fear out there for coming back out into the public. And, you know, we've, we've all been through that, and I, I understand that fear. I think maybe the community needs to know that they have the option for the full virtual, do they not? Like if they don't want to go back to school, they have that option to stay home? It became official on Friday. Oh, okay. They've always had that option, but right. it had to be more of a doctor's note kind of thing. The governor made it very clear that we have to provide that option. So it went out on, uh, it was out today in the, um, very clearly in the letter today. Okay, so that if people want to stay, because to be honest with you, I don't want a teacher who's afraid to be in the classroom teaching my kids because they're going to feel that fear. And I'm teaching, you know, and I'm trying to teach them that the world's just changed and you just kind of go along with that. Um, and I think, I think that was pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. But Thank you very full much. Full time, please. I would really like them to go back. Oh, we got you in the full column. Oh, the other thing, I'm sorry, one more thing. If we had to go back, like hybrid, I'd just prefer that the work schedule was a little bit more organized. I'm hoping, because half of the problem I had with my daughter was, I guess what she needed to do was done on different different ways and whatnot, so I couldn't keep on top of it. She couldn't keep on top of it. By day 20, she was behind 20 days. We want, you want a normal schedule. Just yeah. something out there That's the what we're talking follow about. along too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, number 41. Good afternoon. Uh, Jim Sheridan. Um, I have three kids in the district, one entering kindergarten, one going to fourth, one going to sixth. And um, I'm just here to say I'm very much in favor to go to school full time. Um, both my wife and I work full time, just like a lot of people do. My wife's a teacher. And there's just a couple of points I wanted to, to kind of see, um, and not to harp on anything that did or did not happen in terms of their education in the spring. Was there a considerable amount of professional development that was utilized or offered to the teachers, knowing that this is, might be a possibility in the fall to help improve the online learning experience. It was a nightmare, basically. I think everybody here can agree to that, especially if I have a kindergartner going to school. He's, you know. That's he's, a tough one. He'd be in a, a loving life if he had to look at a tablet all day, but we, we try to trim that back as it is, you know. 
to answer your professional development, we, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there now, uh, especially Google, Microsoft is offering an awful lot of free stuff, so we've encouraged the teachers to head in that direction, and that's why we changed the calendar. Kids aren't coming back till September 8th, so that week, that first week of September, um, we're going to work on professional development and the social emotional piece of COVID. Okay. Yeah, I think it's absolutely critical to have. Uh, I think you know the young lady just before said the same thing. Um, when are you definitively going to poll all the parents to say, are you going to go full remote or not? Uh, tomorrow you're going to get some questions, um, and then you. you we need to give the people who, I think based on what the final plan is, we're gonna have some more people going virtual or not, that we put a drop dead date on the virtual, I believe it's Monday the 24th. If you wanna go virtual, you have to tell us. Okay. So there is a timeline, it got emailed to everybody today. Okay. So. Yeah, I think that's important because that yep. goes to the overall head count that's gonna be enrolled in the school full time. And I think you said you'll give an option in January or something, right, you know, reevaluate or reassess. Um, and then, you know, Finally, um, uh, one of the things that I think is kind of important, I, I, I'm not sure how the classrooms are gonna be laid out, but my wife, she's a teacher, I think you know that. Um, she's been doing a considerable amount of online professional development, et cetera. But they pulled everything out of her classroom. Where does she teach? She teaches in Roslyn. Okay. So they're making every effort to maintain social distancing um, and, you know, I don't think these kids are gonna be able to touch something anyway in the classroom <laughs> nowadays. Who knows what's gonna happen? But, I mean, have we taken that into consideration? The head count, you know, after the remote learning uh, poll, you know, the folks that wanna do that, in, in, in addition to the extra space, I hear there's some at the high school, there's some at the ECC, et cetera, so. Yeah, the, the trickiest thing with that is we, we we're, talk, we, we, we're pulling out everything that takes up space. We're not pulling out everything out of the cubbies yet because it, it, this, the, the classroom would look absolutely stark. Um, you know, it, it, the classroom's not gonna look like it did last year and oh. kids not, are not gonna be able to share the way they did, which cool. is unfortunate, but um, we wanna get everybody back if we can. Okay. All right. All right, full time. Thank you very much. All right, number 42. How are you? Thanks for your time today. I'm going to try to keep this really short. Um, I just want you to know that I'm an advocate for our full-time instruction five days a week. I have a son that's going to be entering kindergarten, and I would prefer him not to learn through a screen this year, but I understand you're going to do what you have to do. Um, my question for you really is under the hybrid model. I know you mentioned the possibility of like that, that pen pal uh, where the, the child in the classroom might be teamed up with the child at home. What accountability, I guess, would the child be responsible for? Is it just to kind of like say, hey, did you do your, your classwork today? Or like, is my kindergarten going no, no, be no, to like help with the, the vision is okay. The vision is to have the, the class live. Okay. And then when, the, and, and the teachers, we would force the teachers into more project-based learning and group work, which is the best way to go anyway. Okay. And um, there would be no responsibility. It would be sort of your study buddy. Okay. And I, you'd have a virtual study buddy. And, it, you know, that, that is an idea that I really like. But okay. like I said, we're going to 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, we're hammering out those details. Okay. But, but if given the opportunity that full-day instruction is possible, that's the... We, I the said it on Friday. If supports that, that's the, the route that would be yep. leaning towards. I, okay. I Thank really you. think what happened on Friday was I said full-day instruction if we're allowed. And gotcha. when I said full day instruction, either people pop corks on the champagne or went, are you kidding me? And didn't listen to the next sentence, which right. was, I gotta get permission for that because we I, don't fit. I understand. So, okay. All right, thank you for your time. You're welcome, thank you. All right, number 43. I kind of figured that you must be 43. Uh, my name is Matthew Alt. My wife just spoke. Um, I agree, I'd like, um, full instruction, and my son's going into kindergarten, so I think having to ask him to wear a mask all day is going to be very difficult. Um, if it was up to me, I wouldn't want him to wear a mask at all when he's in the classroom. I understand passing in the hallway or doing something along those lines, but I, you know, full day and no mask. Now, let me ask you a, a, a question that I thought of while I was sitting down. Um, when this all started, what was your plan for teaching online? 
<laughs> yeah, what would have been your plan? Matt, what are you trying to get me in trouble? What's that? You're trying to get me in trouble? No, I, I was very open. I, 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 I stole something from one of the late night guys. I, I think it's Colbert, you know, live on tape. Um, I, I have to be very honest with you. I feel like where I dropped the ball was I stifled everybody's creativity by saying, let's just play it safe, do what we know, and we'll be back in a few weeks. You know, I really thought we would be back after April break. Um, you know, I, 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 you know I, I think the teachers, you know, it's, it's nice that, you know, it's, it's kind of funny that I take full responsibility for stifling creativity. That's why we, we picked Google. It's, I know there are some people out there that want to try the different, they want to go with Microsoft. We said, pick one platform, let's learn it, let's get it right, and most importantly, let's engage the kids. Because that's where we that's where we came up short, and I take as a superintendent I take responsibility for not um, inspiring them to be a little more you know to, to try some things that would have been risky. Now, if we do have to go virtual, is everybody on board? Meaning, is the union on board to do this? Look, I'm, I've said this: all of our bargaining units have been really cooperative. In fact, we've met with the, we, we're working with the leadership because if you get into every individual person has, you know, feelings and, you know, there are a lot of things out there where all the bargaining unit leaders and they're, they're going to bring a couple of their members, uh, their executive board members, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, we're going to be hashing out some details. Okay. Um, but no, they have been, all the units, I'm going to stress all the units, because remember, we have clericals, we have custodial, we have teachers, um, we have administrators. I got news here, they all want to come back to school. They want it to be safe. That's, that's the biggest thing. What is the safest way? So we'll be hammering it out tomorrow. Okay. And then I just had uh, one other thought. Okay. So um, you had said that each child should be getting their own Chromebook or computer. Okay. So um, you also had said that you're going to expect all the parents to take the kids' temperatures in the morning. Correct? Oh, well, we're hoping that the family will take it. Yeah. Whether so, uh, you know, I, clearly I'm thinking about this on a you know, infinite amount of funds that you have, but um, would it be possible to also send a therm thermometer home to each home so that, you know, uh, again, it costs money, and I'm well aware of that, but if we're going to give Chromebooks to every student, a thermometer to each household just ensures that no one could kind of say, I don't have the correct one. Because I have three at home, and one is much better than the other ones. Just a thought. That's a, that's a thought, and, and what it leads me to, you know, it's just like calculators and everything else. I think the answer would probably be if someone doesn't have a thermometer, you know, that, that, that'll, I can see that coming from state ed. If you don't have a thermometer, we'll provide one for you. But I'm not going to say that we're going to, you know, we're already providing computers. I give this board a tremendous amount of credit. I understand, so. but at least if it's the same one, then um, everyone's on the same, same playing field rather than, you know, again, using okay. one or another. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you. All right, 44. Is there still a line outside? Oh, we're moving. We're still three minutes. Um, <laughs> I was having so much fun. Good afternoon. I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying. I told everybody I'd stay till the end. I could go ahead. Hi. Oh, okay, so I have um, a six year old going to first grade and a five year old. I'm oh, sorry, I'm nervous. Yeah. Um, and a five-year-old going to kindergarten. I am not sending my kids to school. Sorry. Um, my son, when he started kindergarten, he was sick like every single Friday. He'll, be ha he'll have a fever during the weekend, and then by Monday he was fine again, then he'll go to school, and then by Friday again a fever. So definitely not sending my kids to school. That's one thing. Another thing... Um, I'm 100% going online, like online classes. Life sounds good to me. A lot of questions were answered. Um, another thing, I think communication is the key for that. Uh, when they closed the school, uh, I got an email from teachers saying that um, to log into Google Classroom, but I didn't have any like username and password. And I had to call the school to find out, and I didn't know he had one. He already had one because the school created one. Um, so I guess I, when I logged in, I, he miss, we missed a lot because I didn't know. He had an email and a password. 
So I guess if we go online, uh, uh, classes online, I need to have everything, like all the information I need for me to start and not have a problem with it. Another thing, since I'm gonna have two kids uh, learning from home, I don't wanna be caught up with having live classes at the same time because I, I want to assist a system individually, like, you know what I mean? Like, not the same time, then I'm, I'm good with that. And uh, then the other questions uh, were answered. But definitely not sending my kids to school. All right. All right? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 45. 45. Um, real quick, uh, full time, the, the classes are moving forward. Be careful. This happens, this happens fairly regularly. It's happened in all three districts I've been in. The schedule that you saw might not be the final schedule. Somebody, there's a box that didn't get checked. It, it happens. Um, the, the early college option, Paul is working with Suffolk. We're just waiting to hear back from them. 
we had tried it a couple of years ago, and what we didn't know, the hang-up was busing, which does not exist. So uh, that should be okay. Um, I'm hoping we hear that. You know, we're waiting to hear back from them. Um, as far as the AP tests, I'm not ready to pull the plug on a year. Uh, they, all the classes are going to move forward. We have to, you know, we're going to... If we're full-time, great. If it's hybrid, we have to do what we have to do virtually. Um, but suffice it to say, I think the, the state was even reasonable. They said, well, look, we're not going to do the regents. We're not going to do the state testing. Talk to me about the tests come, you know, November, December, and we'll see where we're at. And, and so, but I, I would like, I'm a big fan of kids challenging themselves, taking the AP classes, taking the tests. So, uh, We'll know more as the year goes on. But, but I think we proved last year we weren't going to let any kids get hurt. We all know that we all have to get, you know, improve. And I'll say this to the students out there who may be listening. Um, you know, I know there's a certain element out there in the student body that was kind of fooling us because they were telling their parents how hard the work was and they were doing work, you know, they were playing video games at night and telling their parents. Now, I'm, I'm not saying it was your child. Okay. All right. But we will, we will have answers. The classes we have so far are running. So let's, let's, let's shoot for the tests. All right. Thanks, Mrs. G. Okay. That's a good thing. They're all going to try to hold me up for a parking sticker now. Um, all right. Number 46. Okay. I couldn't see the text. Phil's calling. I told Phil I'd be here from three to nine. I saw the live stream. How many people do we have watching us right now? Whoa. Holy cow, we got a big crowd here. Hi. Go Hi. ahead. Hi. Go ahead. Good. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, provide feedback and to ask questions and really for your dedication to the kids' education. Wait, just bring the mic closer to you because we got people at home that I wasn't even Fine. sure were watching. <laughs> Just thanking you for your dedication to the to our kids. Oh no, education. thanks. Really, um, I'm a first timer in the district. My twins are going into kindergarten this year at Timber Point. Um, you know, I'm one son that's actually just came off of his IEP, so a little concerned about him if he doesn't go back. I'm a five day full timer, so um, so the first thing is the fir the first time families in the district. Can you please make sure we receive the survey because we weren't included on the previous surveys that went out. I know they were sometimes backwards looking, but we would have liked to have provided some of the feedback there. Um, it's the uh, policy, policy of the district to split up twins normally, and I'm all, actually all for that approach in like normal circumstances, but this is a different time. I've already put in the request to have the, my kids put together um, to limit exposure. I mean, I recognize the schedule would be great too, but at the same time, it's really to limit the exposure. It didn't feel like I was it was that well received, so I would really like for that to be the case, um, to be the policy this year. Um, you know, split them up again next year, that'll be great. Um, for um, the kindergarten age kids, I heard you say that it's a possible half day kindergarten before, um, which I didn't know about that before. Um, but if, you know, we decide to put our kids in a different, like a pre-K type program, this year because we really, I really feel that the, the kids will do better in person. I mean, everyone, a lot of people feel that kids will do better in person, right? And especially at the kindergarten age. Um, if we do like an accelerated pre-K or something like that, I'd like the opportunity to test them into first grade next year. Um, assuming like, well, do, they, do we ever do that kind of thing? Um, so that's another question I have. And then the last question is, if our surrounding districts or li like dis districts across Long Island do get approved and we don't, will you go back to the drawing board to think about, you know, how you can add space to make it safe? I I'm all for the safety of the children and the teachers. That, I mean, I'm first and foremost, absolutely. Organizations across the country, across the world right now are sharpening their pencils. They're cutting costs in places they don't want to cut costs so that they can do business um, in a way that's safe for their employees and for um, their clients. I would hope that the school district would do the same. Our kids will be at a disadvantage um, if they are not in full day and everyone else is. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> are, are you going to answer? Wait, no? wait, now, which question do you want answered? Sorry. Um, well, uh, the twins, I think we're keeping twins together. 
Exactly. Because it makes sense. Yes. The other questions, it's it's hard. I know the rumors out there about half day kindergarten, but you just said it. That I didn't know that until I was listening before. Well, it's there's there are lots of rumors out there, um, and I you know sometimes I get ahead of myself. Um, that's a, in my opinion, that's a step backwards. Okay, it would. It, but again, we are challenged, and I know what you're saying about corporate America and making tough decisions. I think over the last, and, and again, this Board of Education over the last five years has made some tough decisions. Um, you know, uh, five years ago, we would have had a little bit of flexibility in some staffing, but we wouldn't have had any smart boards or computers. So um, I think, what is that noise? Um, to, to simply answer, uh, in, in terms of extended pre-K and stuff like that, you're going to have to call the office and you're going to have to speak to either Paul, you know, Mr. Manzo. Um, but if the other districts, same size as ours and, and similar like ones, will you consider going back to make changes so that our Oh, I, listen, we, we've given our, we have until really August 22nd because the governor said we should be done with this by August 21st. We want to be done by August 20th. Um, we're, we're looking at everything we can. Quite honestly, we are going to, we, I feel we've looked, and now we're going to go back and look some more. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, number 47. Number 47. Number 48. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Dolan. Hey, D. What's going on? Deirdre, if you didn't know. Um, I'm going into my senior year, and I'd like to be in-person, full-time instruction. Speaking on behalf of my friends and I, we've been following the rules of social distancing since the spring, wearing masks, quarantine when necessary, and every other precaution. So as young adults, we should be able to follow the rules and social distancing in school so that we could get the highest quality education possible. I prefer the face-to-face -face contact and forming relationships with my teachers so that they get to know me and my teaching style. But if we have to go hybrid or online learning for whatever reason, I'd still prefer that face-to-face -face contact because I didn't get that in the spring through video conference. And please approve of the France trip d during spring break if the borders are open <laughs> um, because my French class has been looking forward to that since sixth grade. But that's it. Thank you for your time. Oh, no pressure there, Deirdre. No pressure at all. Just very straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Deirdre, let me get this straight. If we can't get anything else, you want to go to France next year, right? Okay. Okay, number 49. Good evening, Mr. Dolan, uh, Board President Carney, Trustee Zachary. Hello. Appreciate you guys being here. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. I am here in full support of full instruction five day a week. Um, I know I heard some people say that anything less than a hybrid model is going to put the community at risk, but this is what a hybrid model looks like for me. My wife and I work full time. Two days they'll be with us in school. Three days they may be with my daughter who's a pharmacist in Manhattan. Maybe they'll be somewhere else. They won't be home. They'll have to do instruction when they get home. So now instead of two groups, they're going to be in five groups and spread anything more. So anything less than full day instruction to me is going to put more of the community at risk for COVID-19. So I just want to make that clear. Um, I do have a daughter going into first grade, another one going into third, and uh, they don't have any IEP plans. Uh, I knock on wood. They've well, well uh, they've received such a well education here, uh, which I'm, I'm proud of and I respect the teachers. So I'm either all or nothing, and nothing is really going to create a hardship for me um, in the sense that my wife and I work full time. Uh, but I really think the hybrid model is a disservice to the community, to the kids, and it's not going to work. It's really uh, a tough thing with meal service, and uh, we don't have a high free and reduced lunch count here in the district. But, you know, there's the, I know you ran a program through the course of the year, and uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, you guys could do everything possible. I know 
you know, a lot of people, I, I listen to the Facebook moms group and stuff as a dad, and, uh, you know, everybody's kind of trying to shame each other into, we need full instruction, we need partial instruction, you know, and, and I think part of the partial instruction is, F, you know, FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. Listen, if you don't want to send your kids, don't send your kids. I get it, you know. There's things in life that you have certain risks you take. You put your kid in a car, that's a risk. You put your kid on a bike, that's a risk. You let your kid play on a playground, that's a risk. COVID-19 is just another risk. Yeah. Um, I think if we're smart about it, I think if we educate them five days a week on how to wear a mask, how to wash their hands instead of two days, coming in, not properly washing, forgetting what they've learned, not having a consistent routine, I think you're gonna create more of a situation than possibly if you have the five days of instruction. So. Short and sweet, five days, let's go for it. Right. If the state allows us, I know CDC guidelines are what, six feet without a mask? With a mask, what are they? Right. Three feet? That's what we're trying to find out. We'll All see. right. But thank you guys for thank being you. here. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Have a good night. All right, number 50. Hi, my name is Nicole Casterly. I have two kids in the district, one going into second grade and one going into fifth grade. I'm a teacher myself in another district, so I know the pull is that we're all going back to school. So I know for myself, even on a hybrid model, I'm there five days a week. So if we go on a hybrid model here, what am I doing with my kids three days a week when as a teacher, now I have to be there five days a week? So my parents, who would normally watch them in this COVID situation, now that they're going to school, aren't going to want to be exposed. So my babysitter option is now not here, which means I'd have to get another babysitter, and now they're being exposed to that daycare center or these kids. You know what I mean? They're being exposed to more children rather than going to school five days a week with the same kids. They're actually being exposed to more kids in the hybrid model. I know a lot of districts even surrounding us have K-5 kids, going full five days, and maybe the older kids are hybrid. I'm fully for five days a week for everyone if we could do that, but I feel like has there really been a look at maybe at least getting the K-5 kids there five days a week who can't be left home by themselves, who can't navigate you know, their Chromebooks by themselves? Because if I'm now not home, what babysitter or a daycare center is now having them do their instruction that they're supposed to be doing three days a week. So really you're now having these kids in school two days a week because what's happening on the other three? Are we now getting home from work like you know four or five o'clock and now having to do a full day of schoolwork in the now evening because they were at a babysitter all day and now they couldn't get you know that babysitter now not only are you paying them to watch your kids, you're paying them to teach your kids. You know we're in, we're in a whole new world so I kind of want to know if how I feel if we were in a hybrid situation, my kids both get reading. I wouldn't want them pulled out for reading if they're only there two days a week. Or like those other classrooms, reading, STEM, things like that being the music room, the art room, being used as classrooms now where maybe those teachers could be pushing in so we'd have more space. Those are some of the things I'm wondering if we're looking out for the younger kids because they are the ones who are learning how to read. You know what I mean? I feel like that challenge for parents is really there, and the kids being there five days a week, I think, is really essential for those younger learners. And I kind of hear you said you were asking for permission for five days a week. I guess I wasn't here earlier, just for clarification on, on that. The governor said we could go back to school, mm -hmm. and he said, listen to your community. We've been hearing this from the community based on what I'm hearing tonight. Yeah, we, we had good information. All I'm saying is, you know, and we, I wouldn't be sitting up here in front of you, and, and I, I think the sleepless nights, not just to myself, but, you know, the administrative team, the teachers, um, you know, the, especially the unit heads who've put in a lot of time, we've looked and we've looked and we've looked. I'm going to be very careful. You know, I, I alluded to it before. I'm not going to get back into it. Um, you know, I wrote it today. Districts are like apples and oranges. You get good nutrients, but they are different, and there are different circumstances. And, um, you know, I think good pace to end it is I would welcome, if you want to come and walk with me and take a tape measure out and I'll show you, 
Um, very confident if you give me two and a half feet between desks or three feet between desks, we can do this. Uh, if it's six feet, it is physically impossible to do it in East Islip um, based on the staffing that we have. And so, um, you know, we, I was wondering if possibly we got a hard count on what kids were not coming back, which maybe then if we knew, okay, half the kids are not coming back. So that we could then, the kids that are, you know, come back five days a week if we had a real legit count. Well, you know, up until Friday, we had no clear direction and we'll, we'll have a hard count by August 24th, which I think in all fairness, we do have to roll out a more finalized plan, which we said on July, we said, we said before anybody else, we said on July 28th, we'll let you know on August 20th. The governor said we have until August 21st to finish these meetings, which inherently says we have until the 22nd at least to tell the public we're going to do it before that. And like I said, uh, you know, this is, this is going to be a tough call, a really tough call. Well, right now, I mean, we're bouncing, Chris, we're bouncing back and forth between a full year and a half year. We had said before we want to do a half year. We may have to reconsider it. Um, the survey's not going out till tomorrow. So we, we, after listening tonight, we may have to go to the opt-out being a full year. But that's the purpose of these meetings. That's why we're listening to you. But I hate to do it, but we got to go to number 50. Yes. Oh, no, Thank 51. you. You're welcome. I want to know where you work, but I'm not going to ask. No, I'm good. Not yet. Let's go 51. I can't be weak. I have to stay strong. I'm not taking <laughs> Hi, my name is Kara Siklucky. I'm also a teacher, so I understand the other end, and I appreciate your time. Um, I'm a proponent of a full day instruction, especially for K through five. I just wanted to ask you a question. When you keep saying about the permission for the three and a half feet, or that you think that you could do it for three feet, is that suggesting that a whole class of elementary school kids would fit? What do you thinking of for the elementary school? You know, like, uh, well, unfortunately, if you really want to, if you're going to hold to six feet, we can get between 12 and 14. What about three feet? Well, six feet, double it. Okay, so there's a chance if we got permission for three feet? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the tough part is the governor, he did say we can go back to school and you can do whatever you want if you wear a mask. You, you know, he kind of, he said, under, you know, under, if you can't social distance, wear a mask. And then he said, use the CDC guidelines. Okay. Which is, um, con is flat out contradictory. That's why we're looking this, for clarification. And also just listening to all the parents. I know you're in a no-win situation because everybody has a different opinion. But I think that people are very fearful and they have real fears. So I would like to advocate that instead of thinking if we should go back, like, how we're going to go back because I think you guys are so split that we're not necessarily having the time enough to think of out of the box solutions um, or resources. Like for instance, maybe the community could come together and make partitions if they're needed or chip in for hand washing stations for the elementary schools or yeah. anything that we might be willing to do due to the fact that if you send the kids back only for two days a week, Where's our child care coming from? Like this is a working community. Even the people that are upper middle class usually have their own businesses and they're working. The two family incomes, this is a huge hardship, even just anxiety wise, thinking about how my children are gonna be cared for. Like somebody else said, my mother's 83 years old. She won't even come in my house now, let alone if my kids are going to school. Um, and then that just brings up who's gonna watch the kids. They're just gonna be exposed to other kids, uh, other people. Um, I don't think that you could put a price on who's getting affected more. I am a special ed teacher, and I think it was this, the special ed community was underserved, and we all know that, but so was the regular kids. My, my kids are two outstanding students, and I saw a lot of emotional setbacks for them. It was awful watching, and I know that some parents have real concerns, and I want to respect that, but if there could be an option where people who want their kids back, yes, and who can't, 
you know, have an option, that's great. I'm also just going to touch upon the mask. I'm dying in here after being in here for two hours. I would hope that if we do have to wear, the kids have to wear masks, at least there would be real consideration to mask breaks that maybe every hour, I know it's ridiculous, you have a lot on your plate, but CO2 going back into the uh, body, immunity goes down when you don't have enough oxygen, and that is a concern for me. Um, people saying it's fine in healthcare. I've never seen a, a hospital that has 200 degree heat on a second floor. And one last thing, if maybe we could be looking at uh, air conditioners for those classrooms, whether it's chipping in for the parents or whatever, if they're gonna have to wear masks. Right, but just, thank you for your time. No, no, and real quick, just to pop down real quick, because you brought some up, there is an option. People, and we're going to find out who doesn't want to come back. Mask breaks are going to come naturally, because it, as it said in the plan, as directed by you know, the school people, the school officials, we'll figure out ways, if everybody's wearing a mask, to, to get them to air them, out, to air them out in a safe way. And as far as the AC goes, the jury's out on that. One of the things the board committed to in the bond was upgrading electric because we were putting more and more air conditioners in. Now we, um, you know, there's questions to whether that's good or bad. So we, we, we're waiting for a little bit of more guidance on that. And, but we don't have the electric capacity to put an air conditioner in every room right now. We would just, we would blow up our electrical system. That'll be fixed next year, but all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right, number 52. Number 53. Um, I don't think I masked on, because whatever. But um, I have a daughter going to sixth grade and a son who's out of district. And we saw all three different ways of teaching. And we spoke. You got to get a little close. I can't hear you. We spoke mm -hmm. earlier, probably about two weeks into the online fiasco. Um, I don't know, I'm undecided as to what I'm going to do. I feel like there's really no plan to decide on. I don't, I don't see what the full school's going to look like. I don't understand the hybrid part of it. I don't understand the day of nothingness um, with only going to school two days where my daughter would be left on her own by herself to teach herself for three days, um, which is kind of what the hybrid, I guess, would look like. She would wake herself up in the morning. She would have to figure out her day and her classes. She'd hopefully eat lunch at some points because no one would really be there to help her. And if the internet goes down, I'll teach her how to reboot the house. I don't know. Um, you know, we are a working community, as someone else had said. My child's old enough where she can sort of stay home. Can't ask the grandparents to come and watch them once they're back in school, and I'll be also back in school. Working full time, I have, I'll have my students every day. But that's what my district worked out. Based on space, where some classes have 19, some classes have 27, some classes have 10. They just brought in an architect that measured everything. I was wondering if that was done here, taking the desks out and the bookshelves out, because I have my whole life home. <laughs> it's like starting over um, after teaching for over 20 years. Uh, so I just. I don't understand, I just, what is, I feel like there's no plan. I don't really, and I don't understand what the plan is. And if we go to virtual, because we close down, or one class closes down and they have to go to virtual, what does that look like? And I hope it's not what it was. Is there going to be a schedule for the children if we're virtually at home, where they wake up at eight o'clock and they finish at whatever time? And then if they're in school, are there going to be one-way paths? Are there going to be more time in between? I can't feasibly see, the, I, have, I know I like three minutes, so I'm just rambling. Um, lockers, I don't know. <laughs> right, do you want me to give you a quick synopsis? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Full-time is full-time. They would be, I mean, it, it, it was the cleaning protocols. We would, we would be cleaning best we could, as best as we can. Are going to have the misters? I mean, Excuse me? Are you going to have the misters that yes, some places we're, are Yes, we're looking at those. Um, we're looking, we, we, we bought several machines. Um, you know, we're looking to bring the night guys in so we have more, more hands-on. We're looking to get some custodial aids because they can help with the doorknobs and things like that during the day. Um, you know, the hybrid and the virtual, we, we all agree. And to, I think to a person, 
that we need a schedule, we need a routine. Uh, going back to the full day or the hybrid, we, we said before, no lockers, but then we also know as the weather gets cold, we're gonna have to make adjustments with the lockers because of coats and we may be scheduling kids to go to their lockers every third period or whatnot. But there's a certain amount of COVID learning that's gonna evolve. Right. And you know, people keep asking me, well, what's the full in plan? The full in plan is you go to school, you go to class. Are they, but even the middle school students, are they rotating from class to class because that increases their exposure to different things? Yes. Are they going to be more static, which I know is part of the recommendations where the students aren't moving around as much? Like some classes, I, high school is a whole nother anomaly, but I know like the, you know, K through eight, you can have less movement because some teacher, the can, teachers can move where the students don't move as much. At the elementary, I mean, you could, you can have push-ins and, 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 you know, you can move people in, but once they start switching classes and having different schedules, it becomes impossible for the teachers to move. So, look, I, I think if you have more questions, if you could call me tomorrow or uh, we, laid, we laid out a timeline today because this is very important to listen to the public, but we got to keep it moving. And then I know you had said like the, you would have a buddy, study buddy for the, if it was, went to hybrid. Well, it's in, it, we're, we're discussing that. How does that work when they're on their own at home? Well, you, <laughs> we, it would be a virtual thing. But like I said, I got, we got to keep it moving and we'll, we'll come back to it and we're, we're going to do three more of these meetings too. So okay. it'll start to come together. All right, number 54. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Um, I have an incoming eighth grader and an incoming fifth grader. Um, I'm hearing a lot of full-time. Um, everyone wanted to go full-time, and I completely understand why they want that. But my, I want to understand, did you have any assistance in consulting any experts on how to go full-time safely, like any epidemiologists or infectious disease people to know how to do this safely? Because what I'm understanding is I do not think you can go full-time and adhere to CDC and Department of Health guidelines. And I do not feel comfortable sending my children in if you're not following those guidelines. Because if they're not going to be distanced, then they need to be masked. And I know a lot of this community is against having their children in masks. And I understand their concerns, but I wear one eight hours plus a day at my job in the, in the hospital, but I understand I'm in the air conditioning, I'm in the hospital. But I saw what happened in the surge, and I just don't want to see a resurgence of this disease within our community because we're going all in. I just don't think it's a good idea. So I prefer the hybrid because I have did put my child into camp over the summer, but he's an outside in cohorts, um, and the disease is not gone because uh, one of those counselors did test positive. Um, he was asymptomatic. He had a test for going back to college. They're doing tracing. I did not get a call. My son was not exposed. But it's still there. It's still a risk. And if we can't distance, I don't think we should be in full in. So on that note, with the hybrid, what can you define for me the remote learning on the days they're not in class? Is that going to be live and with lessons? Because I do not think the distance learning we had was equal. Um, getting a feeling that some of the schools like RCK and Connectquat didn't get as much live video teaching as Timber Point and JFK did. So how would the virtual remote learning look like well, for the hybrid? That's, that's one of the things we're working on now that we know, you know, we're, we're finalizing, I should say. I, I don't know, I haven't heard the disparity between, you know, that, the, the, that you described just now, um, but I, I've said this a couple times. If I had it to do all over again, I would have advocated and I would have pushed in a direction, um, you know, to jump into, the, you know, jump into the live learning more quickly. Yeah. You know, my order was let's get 25 days of, plan, you know, planned and canned lessons, uh, keep it safe, and we'll be back to school after Easter break. Um, yeah, or, you know, at the end of April, whatever, and I was wrong. So, uh, you know, that, that's something that we are looking long and hard at. And I feel that the groups, all, all, the, all the stakeholders from our side of the table are working very hard um, to come up with a product that is going to satisfy everybody, so. Because 20 minutes on the last two weeks 
of face to face where it wasn't even a lesson, it was yep. just a check in, which was nice, yep. oh. not teaching. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I know, I see that. All right. Uh, 50, 55. Hi. I'm uh, Gloria Lowenstein. I have a first, well, second grader now and a fourth grader. One at Timber Point and JFK. Just to say, my kids did not have any live instruction, so I don't know where that was. Um, my son did have services through live instruction, which were actually delayed by two months. Um, so if we continue with the, well, let me just say this, I'm full time, totally send these kids back. I tell my kids every day to take a risk. I say, be brave, jump off the diving board. We need to be brave a little bit. Um, if you're not comfortable, I'm fine with that. You know, you can keep your kids home. My question is, is there an option for a waiver for distance? I know you said that there is a two and a half feet, three foot kind of thing. Is there like a hold harmless, a waiver that we can say, you know what, I'm gonna take the risk and I'm gonna sign and if it falls on me, it falls on me. My husband's an attorney, he told me to ask. Um, second thing is the live instruction. Um, my husband does do hearings for New York State through uh, recorded hearings. I can't have a live instruction in the background when there is recording, obviously, that's kind of a, an issue in my household. So, um, what do we do for that kind of thing? Um, also, hybrid, to me, it puts more of a risk because the people who say that they're not going to have their grandparents, they're going to have to have somebody watch their children. The, the, the online learning was a disaster for my family. My son has sensory issues. Um, we were not given, like, services regularly. Um, his OT person, I actually, uh, I fired her. Uh, that's a whole other thing. And then I just felt like it's, we need to have them there. They need to be there. If they have a stark room, just like church, I tell my kids church isn't supposed to be fun. I know it's boring. They don't need to look around and see all the things around there. If the space is there for them to learn, that's the most important thing I want for them. If they can't go to music, if they can't, I'm sorry, gym teachers, music teachers, if they can't go to those things for right now, I want the basics. I want them to have math. I want them to have science. And then my other question is, when you allot for the count in the classroom, what about um, aids? Because I do work at the other school in the district. So um, it would actually make me lose my job because I can't work if there's a hybrid method because I can't be at work while they're at home. So then you're going to have be short staff that way because you're going to fall with teacher aides. You're not going to have them there in the classroom. So that's the other thing. Like, how does that work with the total in the classroom as well? So those are my concerns. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank Lo. you. Thanks thank for you. your time, guys. All right, thank you. All right, number 56. And guys, I appreciate we keep it moving. I really, like I said before, I didn't know there was a line out the door, but I will stay till the last person goes. Hello, how are you? I'm My name's Shannon. I have a son going into eighth grade. Uh, he's not gonna be returning to the building. And I have some questions about that. Uh, it's obvious that the community thinks that what you guys rolled out was a complete disaster in March, and it was. You had like five seconds to get it together. However, my son uh, successfully, with flying colors, completed math and science, uh, all virtual, during summer school at BOCES. And I am wondering if you have partnered up or thought about talking to them about their successful distant learning program that they ran this summer. Uh, we're aware of it. You're aware of it? Yes. Live instruction yes. and how well it actually worked out. Is that something that you're going to consider for the students that are not going to be returning to the building? Live instruction, the way that BOCES offered it this summer? Um, like I said, we're, we're, we're going to have more to say about that over the next couple of days. Um, and once we say it, then, uh, you know, I put you down as a virtual person. I have to, you know, well, I don't want to go into a virtual situation where my son is staring at a chat message board trying to learn things because that was completely unsuccessful. I, unsuccessful. I, so, like, I, what are your thoughts? You know, there's a lot of talk about going back full time and mass and hybrid and this and that. But what are you going to offer or what are your thoughts on live instruction virtually for the students who are not going to come back? Um, I, I think it's, it's, I'm sorry, but it's hard to make a decision if we're looking at what you guys rolled out in March compared to what we experienced this summer at a completely different program that was successful. So my question is, what does it look like? You may not have it all figured out, but give me an idea, the rest of the community an idea, and also, have you spoken to the people who did the program at BOCES? Yes, we've spoken to BOCES. Okay. 
yes, we, I see the merits to what BOCES did. Um, and now we, again, we were given the charge to have these meetings with the public, listen carefully, um, and suffice it to say, uh, the program that BOCES had seems to, it, 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 it seems to be a very good one. Yeah, excellent. And, um, you know, here in East Islip, we like to, you know, not only just keep up with people that do good things, but, you know, try to outdo them. So we, I would well, like, okay. my vision would be to see the kids who aren't in the building uh -huh. on a regular schedule going to school. So we're working on that. That's not my question. My son is not going to be coming back to the school. So I know that you say that you want to admire or outdo other programs. But my question, again, is are you working with people who have run successful programs? And are you going to be offering live instruction to the kids who are at home? I haven't been up here that long. That banana is a little premature. Wait, what? I said I haven't been up here that long. That banana is a little bit premature. No, it's actually 258. You want to see it? So the it's questions right to the answers, the I'm answers are, that. sir? We, we are working on it, yes. I, I don't want to commit to something right now that, again, we're here to listen, and we would like to see a a more live interactive experience along the lines there of There has to be done. a live interactive experience. You cannot give these kids what you rolled out. That is completely unacceptable. So you definitely need to work with people that have run successful programs because it's possible. And I understand learning is different for all kids. And I've been sitting here for two hours listening to you push aside virtual learning. You need to be serious about it because there's kids who aren't coming back and they need to learn. Okay? So, in order for us as a community to make an educated decision, you need to tell us what you're going to do for the virtual students. And as it stands right now, you still have no answers, right? We don't know. We have no idea, no clue if we're going to have live instruction. Shannon, Shannon, here's Shannon. You know what? Do me a favor. Call my office tomorrow, all right? We're committed to doing much better than we did in terms of virtual learning. So just give my office a call tomorrow. I apologize for waiting for two hours. It I know, my you mistake. literally oh, no, gave me zero answers, man. Shannon, Seriously, we have zero. a lot more people to go. I didn't know there was a line outside before. That's fully on me. Give my office a call tomorrow. Right. All right. So no answers, right? You have no clue what it's going to look like. We don't know still, I've, right? I, I feel right. I've answered you a couple times. Thank you. Right on. Cool. Number 57. Hi, Mr. Dolan. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Uh, my name is Kevin Curris. I have two children, uh, one in CES and one going to RCK. Um, I, just a quick question, and I'm not being flippant here, I promise you. Um, is this meeting and the following two parent meetings, is it as a result of Cuomo's uh, regulations that you have three meetings? No, the, this one... I work in a school too, so I'm, I'm really just asking. This meeting was scheduled before. Okay. We, we had put out a, a letter on July 28th before the governor even spoke. Okay. And so... Uh, you know, this one was planned, but then we're going to do three more because he said we should do three more. Very good. Thank you. And my only reason with bringing that up is really I just, um, if, I'm glad that this was planned before, but I hope that, and I believe that you will take the data and the things that you're hearing and, and you know, inform decisions going forward. I apologize for having my phone out, but there are a few things that I wanted to just share with you. Oh, go ahead. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I mentioned I have two kids, um, and I am personally pushing for a full-time return to, at the elementary level. That's what I would love to see. Um, the academics online are just not the same. You've heard uh, multiple times, but they're not the same anywhere. So it's not perfect, and this is, these are unprecedented times, so I understand that. But with all that, I still would push for a full day return elementary. Um, you know, and more importantly than the academics, really, to me, is the social and emotional health of, of my kids and, and our kids, and we're educators, so I'm pretty sure we feel the same way about that. Um, my wife and I are educators, uh, you know, I mentioned I was, uh, so we do understand the, the challenges that you and your admin and your cabinet are facing. Uh, my district where I work is going back full, a full five days a week for K through eight. Um, that was a priority for my district and many, many other districts have been able to make it happen with challenges that I don't think are that dissimilar to the ones that, are, that we're experiencing here. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there's just things, and these aren't questions, I just want to say it out loud. Um, I know, like, this space, I know Anne-Marie in the ECC, um, she's not having early or after-school care anymore, so that may free up more of this space. And um, my reason for saying that is that um, 
my district, uh, and, and I didn't do, this wasn't the work I did, the, the other of my colleagues did this, they went through great lengths to make sure that K through eight can return and go back full time. Um, they swapped, like for instance, they swapped out the teacher's workspace, which was this huge space. They made it into instructional spaces and classrooms. And the teachers are now going to the cafeteria um, and working out of the cafeteria since the kids are going to eat their lunches in the classrooms. I'm sure you've thought of all of this. I just want to say it out loud in case something sparks an idea or, or you know, a thread that we can pull on. Um, excuse me for one second. Um, and, and I understand, I've heard the, the uh, if we get the approval for three feet apart, that things may work out for a full-time return, but I'm asking you, I'm imploring you to please go back to your cabinet and your principals to come up with some plan, something outside of the box to make a full-time return to instruction work at the elementary level with the six feet guidelines. I know it's not easy, and, and even if you do come up with a plan, it's not going to be neat, it's not going to be smooth, and there's going to be speed bumps. We all understand that. Um, I'm almost done. Uh, online education just Good, isn't doing it, banana, and again, the social and emotional, I'm out of here in a second, uh -uh. Um, is, is more important in my opinion. Uh, again, no plan is perfect, um, but if other districts are able to meet these challenges, then I don't have any reason to think that East Islip um, wouldn't be able to try to achieve the same thing, and that's my hope. So please return to your admin team um, and ask them for some dynamic plans outside of the box for the elementary level to return to a full five days uh, of school. Um, and that's what I'm asking for. Thank you for your time. Kev, do you mind? Where do you work? North Shore High School. Okay. All right. I'm an assistant principal at North Shore High School. God bless you, assistant principal. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. All right, 58. Okay, now they're running to the podium. Hello. So I have a 10th grader and a sixth grader. And I just want to first start off by saying that I know we have a lot that we still have to figure out, but I am in full support of five days a week. I think that anything but that is actually going to negatively impact our children from an education standpoint as far, and also from a, a mental standpoint. They need that interaction and they need a consistent schedule. Um, I also want to say that I know that this is a tough topic, but I completely disagree with wearing masks all day. Um, someone said earlier, it is hard to breathe with a mask on. You can't see someone smile. You, you can't possibly interact on a human level the way you would without a mask. So I am not in agreement with wearing a mask um, as well. And then the one, the one question I have for you is, what exactly does the hybrid model look like for the middle school? in terms of switching, not switching. I think you said it was a little bit more complicated. Well, no, the, 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 hybrid, would, the hybrid just really means you're in school or out, of, you, you have a couple days in and then three days out. The children would come in, essentially instead of 800 kids in the building, you'd have 400 kids. And then when they are here, they would have They'd a normal schedule no, normal switching schedule. around. Yep. Okay. Normal schedule. Okay, thank There'd you. There'd be some little changes and like the cafeteria may be a little bit different, but the normal day. Okay, Thanks. and I do wanna add, I also, I do think they should have lunch together. Not in the classroom, but. <laughs> okay. Okay, number 59. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm okay, how are you? Um, I'm going to send my kids uh, five days a week. I, I believe that they need to go. Um, my daughters are going to sixth and eighth grade. RCK, I was very happy with the teachers. The middle school, I was not. Um, my daughter, she would email the teachers and sometimes not hear back for a couple days. Um, some of the teachers didn't post the work before the school day started, so they would get the work maybe posted at like three o'clock, which school should be over by, by then. So um, that's the only thing that I wanted to voice, you know, if they do something hybrid, that they, the teachers need to be more accessible. And that's it. That's it? That's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. you. All right. 50, number 60. Hi. Uh, just a few questions on how you plan on operationalizing all these new policies and procedures. Okay. Uh, so if you do plan on doing the, the full day, I heard you mention earlier on the, the, the stream that it's physically impossible for the teachers to rotate around. Can you sh shed some light into why? Well, at the high school and the middle school level, kids have different schedules, and they would go be going different. And, and the class doesn't travel as a group. Like all the, like in the elementary, they all go to gym together, they all go to art together, you go to general music together. 
once you get into switching classes and stuff like that, uh, it would it just becomes. So when you read some neighboring districts' plans, like Connecticut. They're trying to isolate the kids in one room, and they're going to have the teachers rotate. I live in Connecticut. I'm well aware of Connecticut's plan, and I'm not going to comment on Connecticut's plan. Okay. <laughs> If you want to call my office, I'll have a nice conversation off the record with you. But all right, um, and then as far as the technology, I know with one device per child, has anyone talked about like setting up a dedicated tech support line, email hotline? Am I gonna have to drive it out to Wine Dance or Patchogue Devoses to get it fixed? Like, how's that gonna work? Wait, I, I couldn't. I couldn't hear the question. Sorry. So the de de dedicated device per child. Uh, how are they going to be fixed? Is there a tech support line? Am I going to have to drive to Boces to Wine Dance or Patchogue? No, no. We, we, our tech support guys, um, well, we, the feedback we got that tech support did a nice job. Okay, nothing. No, you listen, you hit bumps in the road, but um, the, uh, the tech support will come through right over here. Their office is right down the hall. They're staffed and have the capacity to handle the increased volume? Yeah, I mean, they, they uh, we were asked for a little more help and. We, you know, if we need more, we're going to have to add more. The board moved some money at the last meeting for sort of COVID emergency cleaning and other things. So, All right, and one of the biggest challenges that my family had was the teachers adapting to these new teaching methods and tools and technologies. All these devices are going to come loaded with the applications. Are the teachers trained and certified on these new tools and technologies? That's what we're working on. They're doing some work over the summer. We're watching on a computer, seeing what they're signing up for. And then we, that's why we moved the uh, kids to come in September 8th instead of before Labor Day. Sure. So we have time to work. And continuity of like learning, whether you're on, in school or at home, are the same applications and books and everything going to be used between everything? Or are they going to be? That's, that's the plan. Right. And I'm, everyone is trained in, on the, everything on how to do it? Uh, we're working on it. And it's got, like I said, the, uh, I think I said earlier today, um, come Thanksgiving, we'll be thankful. You know, I, I want to keep reminding this community that, you know, you got to look at this Board of Education. Four years ago, we were still writing on blackboards. Okay? So we've come a long way in a short period of time. And even if we didn't have a pandemic, um, we, we were, you know, I'm proud of the, uh, I'm proud of the staff, both the faculty, the support staff, the administrators, um, and the Board of Education has made a huge commitment. And so we expect some bumps in the road. Uh, that's why I continue to ask for people's patience. We know, hey, look, on the best day, we want to be better the next day. So we, we, we're going to try to offer, if we need more support, we're going to find it. Okay. Now, I didn't ask you, are you hybrid or full in or? Uh, depending on your answer is how we're going to operationalize the plan. There you go. And, and, and you, you still have a couple days to answer too, because we're going to have three more nights like this. They're going to be virtual and, um, you know, we, I think we're going to have some good discussion. I wish, these, I wish the governor had said on July 1st, we're going to do this instead of him telling us, I'll tell you what you're going to do, because he didn't tell us what to do. And then last question, if we go to the hybrid, any reasoning why we're not doing core in classroom and the electives remote? <sighs> that was something that we, you know, we, had a, we, we had a preliminary discussion about. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, I think it, 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 it's, it's a philosophical thing. It's also logistically not easy to do. Um, just just the, the general scheduling of kids and trying to move them around. Um, and honestly, if the kids are going to come to school, we want them to have a school experience, not just hit them hard with the core subjects. We want them to have the other experiences. And I think that, you know, a lot of kids come to school for things other than core courses. So you talk about social-emotional, and again, I, I, we went over, but that's partly my fault. Part of social-emotional, I keep saying this to everybody, is can we keep this as normal as possible in an abnormal situation? We want a, you know, we would like to see a situation where if we are in, if we're not in full time, um, do we have a virtual learning experience that the bells ring and the kids move, the classes go live, class, school starts at nine o'clock and ends at three o'clock or at seven o'clock and ends at, at one o'clock, uh, two o'clock. Um, we're going to try to normalize that because they did, there was no normal in the spring. And as the gentleman before said, it wasn't just here. It was pretty much schools across Long Island. They, the, the, you know, the bells weren't ringing and the people didn't have schedules, so. So the, the core in hybrid in, in person is, that's a, not a, I'm sorry, the definitive answer to do a full schedule all day in the hybrid? Yeah, it would be a regular, your regular school schedule. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Number 61. Hi, my name is Andrea Ross. Um, I have one child going into seventh grade and one child going into ninth grade. 
I'm also a special education teacher uh, for another district on Long Island. We are going back to school five days a week, but we only have up to six students in each of our classrooms. Um, the New York State guidelines had said that we need to ensure that kids are six feet apart and that if they're not, they're required to wear a mask if social distancing can't be maintained. I was quite surprised to hear that you requested that we go back full time but without the six feet social distancing. Uh, I don't really think that's wise. Uh, it's unknown right now what's going to happen when schools reopen again and kids are together in classrooms and I don't want to find out that the news isn't good while our kids are in school. Um, I think a hybrid plan is a much more reasonable um, option to start with hybrid and then reassess maybe by November 1st to see what happened with the infection rate. If it didn't go up, then okay, all in. I would love my kids to be in school full time, but I do not want to risk their health, my health, my family's health, and the whole community's health, the teacher's health. If we put everybody back in that school all at once, and people start to get sick, it's gonna be students, it's gonna be teachers, teachers have to stay home, who then is gonna teach the classes? Um, so talking about the hybrid plan, uh, which I prefer, actually, um, I don't care for the hybrid plan that's only two days a week. Um, I would much prefer an A day, B day scenario so that the kids have more sc in school time. Um, that third day, which was talked about, um, you know, clash meetings, discussion, I think it mentioned extra help. Um, I think that extra help can be done before and after school as it had been when we were in school and we don't need to take up another day of instruction uh, with that type of thing. I think getting good instruction is going to be difficult enough and I think we need as much time as we can in school but with only half the students there at once. Uh, there was some mention of all extracurricular activities being canceled in the plan. Uh, even if we're remote, I don't see why many of the extracurricular activities could still happen remotely. Um, over the months, I think we've all seen on Facebook and YouTube um, groups getting together and doing even performances remotely online. Um, I think instead of saying we can't, we can't, we can't, it would be a good idea, as someone else mentioned, to look to people who have done it successfully, learn for them, and give our students as much as we can, especially since we're concerned about their emotional health. Those extracurricular activities, whether they were, you know, music, science, sports, you know, our kids are looking for those things. I do think we can do a good number of those, even, even remotely. Um, with remote instruction, I think it's important for the teachers, number one, to be directed what they need to do, how they need to do it, and then to be able to support them to be able to do it. In the spring, we got a lot of, you know, teacher A knows how and they, are, they do it well, and teacher B doesn't. So I think they all need to be uh, trained evenly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, just one, one thing that I wanted to clarify. Uh, we didn't say, and... The, the, that spare day would be an extra help day. Um, it was, and again, this is still on you know, the table for discussion, but what, what we were looking at is a creative way to bring everybody together virtually, but also to give teachers time to have one-on-one -on -one time with their students. So I think half the students are in school together in a class of 12 students or 15 students would be adequate for that discussion. I'm just looking to not water down the instruction. My daughter's going into all honors class in ninth grade. I want her to get the full instruction. Um, she'll do her best she can on the remote days, but the, the more contact with the teacher on the real lessons, the okay. better. Oh, no, I, just, I just want, I, listen, I'm not trying to change your mind. I was just trying to clarify. I, I think the... It was mentioned in some written document about the extra help. Yes, and also the, the, the extracurriculars, and that was, um, we're, we're also, we're not looking to get rid of the extracurriculars. Um, and we did, some people got very creative this year in some areas, and again, different schools did things different ways. But um, look, we're, we're try, as I said before, we, we, we want to build a normal, as normal as we can in an abnormal circumstance, school experience. So we want the bells, and we want a ring, and we want a schedule, and we want the extras. Great, so. thank you. You're welcome. Number 62. Hi, I'm uh, Lou Pepe. My Vince. son Vincent Pepe. We drove uh, six and a half hours home from Vermont because he, Vincent wanted to Say, he said he had to say, tell us, Mr. Dolan a few things, how he feels. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm here with Vincent to talk about that. 
Um, so a few things just to clarify. You know, I, either you guys are going to be saviors in three months or you completely blew it. And you, know, you had people standing up here that it bothered me to hear that it was a complete disaster. Yeah, you guys did what you could based upon the tools you had, a very fluid situation. And, you know, there's a learning curve to everything. My feeling, kids could, should, should go back to school full time, rip the Band-Aid off. I don't want to put anybody in danger, but for those people that want to stay home, have the kids stay home, fine. There's going to be virtual learning. Let's have it as top quality as we can. I, I heard people up here saying, hey, you know, can you have my two kids not at the same time because I can't do it? Well, guess what? That's, that's the unintended consequence for virtual learning. Um, my feeling, I, I, I had no intention of coming here. This is his idea, so I'm going to let him speak. Um, just to throw one other thing out there, you know, when this was all going on and, you know, the situation was changing, they brought in a big ship from, I don't know, who knows, California to all these people that were going to, it didn't get used, but it was there. So, you know, I think maybe, this might sound ridiculous, but we talked about space and whatnot. Is it even possible to take a raised platform, put some tents out in the back, heat them, you know, for excessive, you know, if we have, everybody wants to go back full time, full year, maybe take, take care of some excess students. Maybe that's a possibility, just a thought. Um, I, I run a program called the Dress for Kicks with special needs children. I had to modify my program for that. And I could tell you, the kids that I have in the program, you know, telling, hey, Coach Lou, I, I, I can't do this. I can't learn this way. It's too hard. I don't understand. I need my teacher. I want to see my friends. You know, I, I, I have 80 kids in the program, but I had to modify it, so I have like 30 kids showing up. So the point is, I think full-time, we need to make it as, as beneficial to the kids that want to go full-time. For teachers that don't want to come back full-time, maybe we set something up virtual for them where they could teach from home. I don't know. That's not, you, you guys get, that's your job. But anyway, I'm going to pass my rest of my time over to my son, Vincent. So you could say whatever you want. Speak right into the mic there. Hi, Mr. Dolan. Oh, Vince, it's great to see you, buddy. I wanted everyone to go back to school full time. Whoever wants to go can go. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. Because me and other people have special needs and learned disabilities. And it's hard. Because, yeah, you know, I want to see my friends, but learning everything is more important than socializing. And the best way to do it is however you can is think outside the box. I want everybody to be safe. I want everyone to go back to school, go back to school teachers. see the teachers, six feet apart, wear masks all the time and taking a few breaks. Tell them they have to figure it out. You know, I'll have to figure it out. <laughs> They'll have to figure it out. Vince, you really are. You know, and Vince, I remember when I first met you, you were a shy young man that didn't even pick his head up, and you, you kind of talked to your feet, and you were driving your father crazy. And uh, now you can stand up here and look me in the eye and tell me that you want to go back to school, and you came all the way home from Vermont to do that. So just, Vince, thank you very much, and thank you for being my friend all these years. You really are growing up into a nice young man. So, Thank you. Thank you. Louis, thanks. It was good seeing you guys. Got it? I'm just putting my mask on first. All right, you feel better? <laughs> I need to put it on first. All right. No, we're done. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't want to make light of this, but my wife drove up to Hunter Mountain with her girlfriend today, so that means Vince drove home from Vermont and my wife drove away from me. So... All right, uh, number 63, please. Oh, he was 63? Oh, Louis, oh, Vincent was 63? Okay. All right, that's my new lucky number, 63. All right, 64. Hello. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sunil Kamath. I have uh, two kids, one going to Timber Point, one going to JFK. And I um, just wanted to say to the, the dad that drove six and a half hours, uh, I liked everything he said. That was actually really good. I thought the thoughts of using some of the uh, outdoor space uh, for schooling was a great idea. I hadn't thought about that. And uh, I think it's worth considering. The things that I wanted to share are that uh, for my kids, 
I would like them to return full time. I think that's important. Uh, however, I would also want them to wear masks full time and all of the students around them to wear masks full time. Um, I do want to also contribute that if it's decided that the kids are masks optional, that my kids will still continue to wear masks full time. In fact, one of the things that we're doing just as practice at home is they're wearing masks for a few hours a day just to get used to the feeling. Um, we're telling them, reminding them on a regular basis that mas masks are important and to wear it. So uh, I think that for, for everyone, just trying it at home is an important thing to do, and it's helped for us. Um, we think that masks are important for the protection of the kids and the parents, uh, sorry, the kids and the teachers. And for the teachers, we were just thinking about uh, face shields are gonna be important for the teachers because for the kids, especially the younger kids, being able to see the teachers speak, the, the way they move their mouths, the way they emote is important. But at the same time, if their teachers are going around to look at the kids, to work with the kids, um, the teachers wearing a mask I think is equally important because it's, it's just good role modeling. Um, one question that we had is, let's say five day a week goes forward and the kids are going to school and something changes. Maybe um, the, the, the case situation changes, maybe my kids are sick for argument's sake. Can we then switch from five day to remote learning? The simple answer is we're not gonna have a choice. We'll have to, and that's why I've, I keep saying if we build a program that is as normal as possible, it should roll, for, you know, that's why you hear these plans where you're making all sorts of changes um, that would have an impact if you tried to go from, you know, live to virtual or vice versa. We just wasn't, we weren't sure if it was an option. We thought it was like a one way, you choose one and that's it. Um, so if uh, something does happen, can, can we go from in school to virtual? Yes, okay. Oh uh, yeah, and that, that I think the government and the numbers will tell us. You know, once, once we start, we'll, you know, whether we're virtual or hybrid or, you know, full-time hybrid or virtual, um, that's the course you're on. But I, I'm not take, I'm sorry, take virtual off because the government would have to tell us to go virtual. But if you start full or you start hybrid, you will not change until circumstances change or the government changes it on you. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to share was just around uh, the transparency that we've been getting over the, the course of the weeks and months. Uh, we've appreciated it, the letters, the calls, the emails, all of that has been informative. Uh, we understand that it's been challenging trying to figure it out with the information that you get as, as the day goes, as the weeks and months go. And so we just wanted to say thank you for that transparency. Uh, it's helped us. We know that you don't have all the answers at any moment in time and the situation keeps evolving, uh, but the transparency has been super important to us. So thank you for that. Uh, you, you're very welcome. And, and then I, I give full credit again to the board and, and the team um, and uh, you know, in, in making sure that, and I, and I laugh a little bit because I did put my mother on the call list just so that I could call it twice a week and you know, I could say that I did it. Um, but I'm ahead of my brothers, by the way. I just want you to know. But um, in all seriousness, the, the, the reason that we had the letter and the call was not everybody wants to listen to the call. And we wanted, you know, it is nice, and I, I appreciate your kind words, but that was something that came from the board and the administrative team, and they said to me, you really got to get the word out, and, and uh, we, we tried our best, so thank you. It's meant a lot. So the, your personality, the anecdotes that you share in the letters, it, uh, it feels good to see that, to see that you're a human being and uh, you care about everyone. And so we appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Number 65. Lisa Miller. <laughs> and I should start this off just by telling you that um, Brandon, my son, just recently recovered from COVID and he was very, very sick. So. Um, oh, nobody told me. I, I'm sharing that because I'm speaking with from experience, and I'm a mom of somebody that was um, had every symptom, and weighing the risk assessment in regards to Ryan, I am all for him returning to school five days a week. Um, 
weighing the risk and, and, and weighing it out and seeing the risk of him not returning, especially a kid with an IEP, um, would be devastating, I think, long term. And I also just completed, I completed my MBA all online and University of Texas, and I can tell you, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of focus. And they are very disciplined and focused when it comes to football, okay? <laughs> but they're not the same, and that in-person instruction is huge, especially with Ryan. He just had his best year ever as a freshman. Um, but, of course, and listen, this is unprecedented times for everybody. You did the best you could with what you had. And um, at the end of the day, um, you know, they just, they lost something. And they lost it, not through anybody's fault, or it should have been better. Nobody was prepared for this. My company, my, my industry was not prepared for this. Um, so I, I get it. But um, I just see the benefits of, of moving forward with full-time instruction and, and seeing what happens from there. And if you have to make an adjustment, you have to make an adjustment. And there's plenty of people that got up here saying the risk. To me, the risk of lagging behind in an education especially in a sophomore year, I also hear, and there's no, there's no other, you know, I don't have any, he's a sophomore, he can stay home by himself. Um, will I have to help him? Yeah. And am I willing to do that? Yes. However, there, it's not going to be the same. And a sophomore, I hear a lot saying, and I believe the elementary school should be opened as well, but I think that's true with a high school, and I think that these are really important years going into college. And I think something will be lost if these kids are not and, and Ryan wants to return to school. And he said, tell Mr. Dolan, too, I want to play football. <laughs> and I know that's not going to happen, and I understand. But this is another interesting point, and I'm not a doctor. But Brandon tested positive. Myself, Ryan, and my ex-husband all tested negative. I took care of him. Ryan moved with, with Mark. I took care of Brandon, and I just prayed to God. I said, listen, keep me healthy long enough to take care of him. And it's interesting because, and, and like I said, I'm not a doctor, but all that you've heard, okay, about wiping stuff down. I, I was doing that in the beginning like a nut when this first happened. But I will say this, when it did happen, I wasn't Cloroxing everything. And the first thing Brandon does when he comes home after being out with his friends is go to the refrigerator and the microwave. I never Cloroxed it. So I'm just making a point that I think this can be controlled to some degree, and I also think that if the kids aren't in school, I'll leave, if the kids aren't in school, they're still out with their friends, and there's a risk with that as well. All right, but uh, tell, right. tell Brandon, I'm glad he feels better. Thank you. Well, they canceled the full football season, so he's got another year to start as quarterback. <laughs> All right, thanks. Number, number 66. Number 67. Number 68. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Um, I have a lot of questions because I'm speaking for four moms. So if I could call you tomorrow, that would be great. <laughs> you can call me. You can, you can stick around and wait till this is over if you want. Okay. Whatever you like. One of my main questions is, the four of us moms are all full-time working moms. Our girls are best friends, and I know that they can't be in the same class together. Is there a way, if we do go virtual or hybrid, well, hybrid mostly, because virtual, everybody will be home. But if they do go hybrid, can our girls be cohorted that they're all Monday, Tuesday girls or Thursday, Friday girls? Because we will share a babysitter. I'm going to really, uh, that, you're going to have to call my office because this is, that's, a, that's a real tough thing to answer. You know, we, we have to get a handle on who's coming here. The simple answer is probably no, but I also know that during the course of trying to work things out, sometimes you find solutions. So I don't just want to say no, but call my office tomorrow and I'll go over some scenarios with you. Okay. And then another few quick questions. If a teacher will, I think they go hand in hand. Why do we need a day off on Wednesday if we have an A group and a B group, the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? Why can't the entire class be virtual on Wednesdays to learn as if they were going, if we all turn to virtual altogether, that this is a full class working together virtually on a Wednesday instead of splitting them up? 
I'm not quite sure I understand. Do you so if you have an A group of kids that go on Monday and Tuesday, okay. and a B group of kids that go on Thursday and Friday, they're not having any teacher instruction on Wednesday. It's if you need help, this is where you check in. Why can't the entire class, the Monday, Tuesday kids, and the Thursday, Friday kids, all log on to Google Classroom on Wednesday and be taught a lesson? And again, this is all, you know, we're still finalizing things, but I think we were looking at the Monday because there were no, there were a lot of Mondays off of national holidays and things like that. And so that, but that day would be essentially, you're saying it's a lesson. There may be some other things that can be done in the big group setting virtually. Well, and I'm just saying that it's a day of instruction, not for the kids to check in, see if they have any questions. No, no, it, it's not to, it's not to check in to ask questions. There would be structured work to do. Okay. It would be it not would be, in an app, not logging on. No, no, like, there'd be structured work to do. Stru something. Structured work with a live human being. Okay. Okay. And then quickly, if I can, if a teacher is or student, I guess, that tests positive for COVID, and then you, I know the city had set out plans like if one kid tests positive, they shut the classroom down for the day. If two test positive, they shut the classroom down for a week. If who, like what, whatever, will the class then move to virtual? not be out for 14 days, but then everybody moves to virtual so they get the instruction. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to get a lot of clarification. And while we've been sitting here, I'm on a group text with the other superintendents in, in, in Islip. And um, that's one of the real serious questions we have because are we, we, you know, we, we're not equipped to be testers, tracers. We'll do the best we can. My answer is we'll do what we did in, in, when, before we closed in March. We called the Department of Health and we got directives from them because, quite frankly, their directives evolved. I'm going to be kind here and say they evolved. No, but, we, oh, but, I but I can't answer the quarantining question yet. I'm, I'm curious as how, you know, look, Mayor de Blasio has to do his job, Governor Cuomo, President Trump, but uh, we don't have a clear directive on how we're gonna quarantine and who has to quarantine quite yet. I'm we not, we will. I'm not necessarily asking how you're gonna quarantine because the DOH will come after you no problem. I'm asking that you continue to teach the children during those times. Not, we're gonna take a two week break and we'll get back to you. None of that. No, no, we're not, no, we wouldn't do that. It's just gonna become a question of where the child is because what, no, I didn't even ask, what grade are the girls in? Third. Okay. At JFK. They'll All be right. going into third. No, at JFK. I mean, I, it, it suffice it to say, if the whole class is out, then we're going to have to roll into some kind of virtual situation. That's why the virtual needs to kind of marry up with the full and the hybrid. Right. Yeah. That's why I was saying if you have the two separate cohorts to then have a single day where the entire class is online together learning as a group, you've already worked into that, going towards that model if we ever have to roll into a full virtual situation. Thank you. That's a good point. That's one, honestly, that hadn't been brought to my attention. So thank you. I got a little confused there. <laughs> no, you're welcome. It's, it's way past my bedtime. Um, okay, number 69. Hi, my name is Erin Sforza. I have two children, one daughter who is going to be going into fourth grade at JFK one who is starting the UPK program this fall at four years old. I understand the working parents needing coverage for childcare. I absolutely get that 100%. I understand that there are people who have children with special needs and IEPs that cannot get nearly the same quality of instruction as when the children are in the classroom interacting with their teachers. That being said, I think that if you're going to go full force, I really didn't expect to get the, the, the information that East Islip was just gonna run straight in five days a week, full day in-person instruction. I figured that maybe we would start virtual or start hybrid, move to hybrid, move to full five day a week instruction when we could figure out exactly what was happening. There are 97,000 children in this country that tested positive in the last two weeks for COVID, and that has a lot to do with schools reopening. In Israel, they were credited for their response to COVID. They reopened without restrictions. So the not being six feet apart might be something you want to think about because it caused a wave of infections in the general population that caused them to shut down again. 
and that's not something that anybody here wants. One child infected 25 teachers. In Georgia, days after they opened, there were 60 quarantine orders in effect, and it just goes on and on. There was an entire fourth grade in one school in North Carolina that had to quarantine. So when we talk about their mental health, the concern that I have is that in three weeks, the school will have to close again because of an outbreak of cases, and then my child who is relieved to go back to school gets pulled out again, and that instability is gonna cause mental health damage and problems as well. So I think that needs to be considered. You're also asking us to put our faith and trust in our residents of the East Islip District, who by and large seem to be operating by the CDC guidelines, but not all of them are. And I know that from experience, from people that I'm friends with, from parties that have happened and have spilled out into the front yards, that are in the backyards, they're not social distancing, they're not wearing masks. I know people who have traveled to places that are hot spots, returned home and not self-quarantined. So you're asking some of the parents who are hesitant at best to put their trust in a community that not completely is following the guidelines, much less the widespread misinformation that I've heard actually sitting here and also has been posted on social media accounts associated within the community. So I'm not sure that I'm completely prepared to trust that everybody has been teaching their kids to be fully responsible because they haven't been themselves. So I know that there's going to be a reduced class size. I would agree with that. I would agree with staying six feet apart. I would agree with wearing masks. And if they're going to take mask, break, mask breaks, that kind of defeats the purpose of having the mask on to begin with. Um, also, I'm wondering, for mental health purposes, how do you plan to explain to the kids why they have to be quarantined because one of their classmates is sick, why their teacher is ill. What if somebody gets hospitalized? These are things that aren't being taken into account as far as their mental health. If we get a quarantine notice and we have to stay inside for two weeks and there's a possibility our child could be sick, that's gonna take a toll as well. That's gonna be really frightening for them because we may think that they're not paying attention, but they are, they hear what has happened, they hear what the virus can do, and if they're around healthcare professionals, they know the truth about what can happen. Not necessarily to children, but I live with my mother who's over 60, and she's in a high-risk age group. So the option to go virtual as a choice would be really, really appreciated. I would never stand here and tell other parents what to do as far as sending their kids back because every single one of us has different needs. But that being said, there should be a quality virtual option offered to parents who are just not comfortable. What would happen if those parents decided later on, after a few weeks, maybe in October, when we've you know, kind of taken a step back and seen how everything happens, will other children be allowed to reintegrate back into the five-day-a-week program? All right, very quickly, because um, you, you made some very good points, but to, you know, as far as answering that question about why do we have to quarantine with the kids? Um, again, having been having the privilege of going through the building, seeing the teachers and social workers and the staff work with kids, um, I think that they're honest, but they talk to the kids on their level. The, the, the K-2 buildings speak a much different language than the high school folks. Um, and I'm confident that, you know, we're going to have to get them some training, you know, do, do the, the in-house stuff to, to be ready for the social emotional. As far as the, um, I'm, I'm going to put you down as a virtual, Absolutely. And uh, what we, they're, they're the letter that went home today discusses the option, and we are going to say if, you, if you're looking for virtual, we're going to ask for a half-year commitment okay. because that gives us stability in terms of scheduling. And also, um, we're, going to have to, we're going to have to adjust classes because suppose 20 kids opt out of one class and they only have five left. We're going to have to move kids, which we're prepared to do. Um, but then if everybody, if one comes back, another comes back, and they come back in dribs and drabs, we could have an issue. And we also looked at the holidays and we said, look, if you come back at Thanksgiving and people have Thanksgiving parties and people get sick, so what, what it'll be is you'll sign up for, come back January 31st or the mid-year, the semester break at the high school. It doesn't match up with the elementaries with the trimester. Um, and the first week of January, we'll send you a thing and we'll say, are you coming back or are you going to stay out? So it'll be half so year increments. So it'll be increments. a half a year that you have to commit to keeping them out. Half year increments, yes. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I just, to be perfectly honest, my, my priority here is the health and safety of the kids, 
of the teachers and of the staff because it's not going to be worth it if we wind up harming our community in the process. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Number 70. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dolan. How are you today? I'm doing pretty well, thanks. Uh, How are you? I need to apologize for my appearance. I came straight from work. Listen, um, you, you, look, you look good to me. Thank so. you. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank my teachers for all they did during this uh, lapse in, ed in um, whatever you want to call it. They did what they could. I had some great teachers, especially Ms. Ellis. She ran the astronomy course for the first <laughs> time this year, which if any of your students, if any of you guys know anyone who's going into high school, I highly recommend the astronomy course. Anyway. <laughs> To be quite frank, I've been appalled by the lack of representation of high schoolers during this whole situation. Um, in health class, which is mandatory for sophomores, we're taught that health is a triangle, mental, physical, and emotional, and if you knock out one of those pegs, then you're not healthy. I heard you talk about before the um, lack of sleep that the administrators and the teachers and the uh, staffers had, have had, and I'd like to raise you this, that I'm sure that there's been, this has been a stressful time for you guys, but it's probably been an even more stressful time for the students. I'm applying to college in about two months. I haven't had an SAT, um, and I honest, honestly don't know how anything's going to work next year. Um, the stress level of my peers has been tremendous, really, really, really bad. I've seen my friends' mental health go way down, and that's, you know, scary. I'd also like to mention that I, I have ADHD. I've been in, I was in resource rooms until ninth grade. I worked really hard to get out of it. I can't focus when I'm at home that well. I really can't. I mean, I'm in all honors classes, and I still can't focus. What about students who are worse than me, who have worse needs than me? What are we going to do about them? And I'd like to close off by saying I, I've been going to work since this whole thing started. I'm a lifeguard. I, I've been a li I wanted to be a lifeguard since I was 10 years old because I want to help my community because I know if we're not there, someone's going to get hurt. Every day on my drive to work, I say to myself, community over self, because I don't know who I'm coming into contact with every day. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know any of that. But I keep going even though our hours have been cut back, even though you know we have a chance of getting infected, even though we might get hurt because... I, I care about this community, and I think the only way for us as a school district to move forward is if we go back all five days. First of all, I loved what you said, community over self. But just make sure you're taking care of yourself, and I know that the lifeguards were trained in how to live in a COVID world. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's a great job being a lifeguard. It really is. <laughs> Miss it. Um, you know, uh, you raised a really good point, and I apologize. I didn't mean to, you know, leave you folks out. I, I just was talking. I was referring to the the planning portion, and one of the things that everybody is saying is that, especially September, has to be a month of, you know, sort of getting to know each other again, seeing each other, and learning to live in this COVID world. Um, you know, and I'll go on record as saying, oh yeah, knowledge, curriculum, and all those things are important, and all the challenges, but. I think I, I like that community over self, meaning taking care of each other, um, you know, and, and the, first, the first month is going to be like almost, it's like, I was going to say a first date, but getting to know each other. It's going to be like getting to know each other again. And how do we act in this new world that we're in? And so thanks for your service. And uh, I'd also like to stress. And the one last thing, wait, one last thing. Don't, the, that whole SAT thing is is a huge stress pressure cooker pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. Never been a big fan of College Board. I'll say it on the record. I'll say it to anybody. Um, the one thing I know is that colleges out there want you. Thank they you. want you because you're a good student, and then they're, they're going to enjoy the money that your parents are going to give them also. It's a business. So you negotiate your best deal. You get the best grades possible. Make them give you reductions in tuition and scholarships and things like that. But they will level the playing field. I am confident that your your class and, you know, just like this last class, they're going to make adjustments because the colleges want you and especially good quality people like you. I'd also, oh, thank you. I'd also like to finish by saying the, I would like to stress the importance of music classes. Um, I can't read sheet music, but I'm also I'm president of the band somehow. 
Um, <laughs> the it breaks up the mundaneness of the day. It really you go from math class, science class, everything that's really boring, and then you go, oh, <laughs> Mr. Nesky and the concert band. Who I love, Mr. Nesky. Listen, remember, you got to see these teachers in three weeks. You should say how you love everything. You just love being the most. Just trying to help you out a little bit. I'm so excited to see my teachers. (laughs) I haven't seen them in so long. But thank you. Thank you. I know. And and, and again, you're making a good point. And you, 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 you know, I loved all my years being uh, as a high school principal. And I know how important, because some kids love physics. And some kids love auto shop. And some kids love band. And, you know, if it's that one class that makes a kid get out of bed in the morning and be excited to go to school. That's why I'm going to reiterate, we want to, we want to create a normal school experience in an abnormal world. We're not quite sure yet. We haven't dotted the I's and crossed the T's, but I think we're close. All right, All right. Thank it's you. It's good seeing you. I'll see you in a couple thank weeks. You. See you in a couple weeks. <laughs> All right, number 71. And folks, to the people still in the room, I apologize. If, and you can thank Mrs. Carney because there was a line out the door and nobody told me. And I was just sitting here going, hey, this is kind of fun. People are talking. Hey, let's have a good time. So I apologize. Good evening, Mr. Dolan. Uh, my name is Chris Maloney. I have a, a second, a third grader starting in RCK and a fifth grader who that is her greatest dream is, Daddy, I want to go to fifth grade this year. Um, I am a big proponent of full time. Uh, like the young man before me, I too work for local government. I've been out there since day one. I'm not a big fan of this, but I live with it. My wife also works for a hospital. Any variation, uh, we were blessed in the beginning that she was allowed to telecommunicate, uh, telecommunicate a little bit. That ship has sailed. Uh, Any variation is going to cost my wife her career. She's going to have to basically quit her job of 17 years with the hospital. There goes her pension. There goes us living on Long Island. Honestly, let's call a spade a spade. We are two full-time working parents that need to work. Um, I'm not going to be, oh, first I'd like to say thank you for being educators because as March through June proved, I am not a good educator. I was not good at home with the kids. (laughs) It was rough. Um, Much like what we have in front of us, there's speed bumps and I get it. I'm not going to beat you up over how it rolled out in the beginning. I did have one complaint that there was no continuity between my daughter's class and my son's class. They were two polar opposites, and what she was trying to explain to me to educate me to help my son was apples and oranges, to steal a pun. Um, I do agree with the young lady before that I would think that for certain people within their comfort zone, maybe there should be a virtual option. And for those of us that are needed and are willing to go out there, we have a full-time option. I think a virtual option should be explored. Um, But as far as us, I'm ready to go back full time. My kids are itching to go back full time. We have them in full time summer camp. Uh, I do have one question as far as access to electronics. We squeaked by, are they gonna be issuing the Chromebooks again? Yes, I mean, two things. There is definitely gonna be a virtual option. Okay. And we, we're, we're telling people, I put it in a letter, you're going to have to inform us, I believe it's by August 24th, but anybody that wants a virtual option, and uh, the board um, made, the, made the commitment in June to get a, an electronic device for each kid. Okay. They're, they're different, and I, I don't want to misspeak, uh, certain groups are getting Chromebooks, the others are getting laptops, okay. but every child's going to have one, so you won't be fighting at home, and they won't be fighting, and as my kids would do, you know, hey, you take it. I really don't need it because I don't. I'd rather go play Xbox. So, there you go. Yeah. Oh. No. Everybody, everybody's going to have one. Okay. And as the other gentleman suggested, maybe uh, tents would work for some part of the year, but maybe office trailers. I've seen other schools have done that temporarily. Um, I get it with your electrical grid, and you can't run that much extra power out there. Mm-hmm. I understand how that works. <laughs> well, we're getting we're getting there. We're going to have it. And you know, again, I keep coming back to we have a weird spatial situation because we have enough classrooms, the classrooms just aren't big enough. And I, and I'm, I still question how, um, you know, some of the stories you're hearing, and, and I heard it today that one Nassau County district that promised all day, you know, full day for their elementaries, announced today they were reversing it. So I guess they got out of the office and measured the classroom. Okay. I don't want to say which district, but uh, no, we, we, there will be a virtual option. And, um, you know, the sooner we hear from people, the people that don't want to come, 
we can build a better virtual world for them, and that leaves more room for the possibility of us okay. getting back to. I do know what my son, um, he was in an integrated class earlier on in, in, um, in ConnectWatt, and having that really made an influence, having the extra hands-on. You can learn the sum total of humanity's knowledge off of Google. You can't learn how to be a human being. You have to interact, they have to learn how to be amongst each other. Um, they have to learn conflict resolution, how to communicate. Otherwise, you're gonna have a generation of nerds in basements playing Xbox. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> We're gonna quote you on that. Please, I, right. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a scout leader, and the, having the interaction of the children together is priceless. Yep. They need to be amongst each other and amongst their peers and learn how to look somebody in the eye and say the truth, or as Absolutely. opposed to- Absolutely. You know, just hiding. Right. I hate to do computer. it, but thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I'll see you soon. Absolutely. Number 72. You know, that was a great point about looking you in the eye because you saw that with the young man, Vincent. I wasn't kidding. When I met Vincent, but that's my whole career. I spent, kids would come in and they'd be this tall and you wouldn't see them. And next thing you know, they're taller than me and looking me in the eye. So that's why they need to be back in school. All right, you ready? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, not really. Um, I'm nervous about the whole in-school thing. I don't want to do virtual because it wouldn't be good for my son, I don't think. It ended off not good. <laughs> not that his grades were bad, but if you didn't have that pass-fail thing, it, he wouldn't have made it. Um, he was on a roll, but it wasn't good. Um, he wasn't learning enough, and that's a big concern. Um, because he couldn't keep up with work, and his school day at home was longer than it would have been when he is in school. And what grade was he in? 11th. Okay. So now he's going to be a senior. So it's a big concern. Um, and I did speak with you recently, and I will speak with you again. Good. I couldn't, I couldn't. Darlene. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, my son's not nervous about going to school. He's not nervous about being with his friends, but I'm nervous. Um, kids get the flu every year. My son in ninth and 10th grade in the high school was sick for a great span of time at the beginning of school, which was unusual for him. Um, so I'm nervous. I don't want him to get the COVID. I don't want anybody to get it, but I feel like it's bound to happen to somebody because everybody gets the flu every year. So I know it's going to be different, and maybe things that we're doing now as far as cleaning, maybe that should have been done. Maybe that would have prevented kids from getting the flu. So I'm like on the fence. I'm afraid. You know, I, I don't know what to do. Um... He's just not learning enough, this, the way it ended, and um, I'm afraid. Um, I'm afraid about the distancing. I, I don't want people to be too close. I mean, people, adults, when you're in the grocery store, they're on top of you. So, like another one was saying with the community, some people, it doesn't bother. Some people, you know, you, you can't keep them away from you. I have to sometimes tell people, you're in my zone, because they're too close to me, and, and I can touch them. You know, it's not even like four foot, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm nervous about that. Um, five days a week, I know my son will need. Um, the Zoom and all these different kinds of things, I, I'm nervous about, like, what if something doesn't work and I'm not there to, to help out? What if... You know, I, I'm a what if. You know, I know I shouldn't be like that, but I worry. I'm a worrier in general. <sighs> so, um, all right. I will talk to you again. Yeah, and, and the one thing, darling, I'll, I'll say to you, look, I put you down as not sure. And I, I think it's not, it wouldn't be bad to have a conversation maybe with your son, maybe with, the, with your pediatrician or your doctor. Um, give it a little time as more details roll out. And again, you, you, we don't have a lot of time, but you do have time to make a decision. But also, as your son's going to be a senior, um, 
the hardest thing to do is let go, and, and he has to take control of his education. So, you know, there are some things he's going to do, and there's some things he's not. And some mm -hmm. grades are going to go better than others. Um, and sometimes you learn from the things you, you, you don't do that you should have done. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't agonize so much. And, and, again, it's hard, but you're going to have to start to listen to him. And, uh, but I put you down as a not sure. But you'll have a chance to tell me when you call me. But I, I do listen to him. Um, but, you know, still as a mom, it's different from a 17-year-old. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. You know? All right. I'm nervous. Um, I think we all are. I think it's safe to say. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Number 73. Hello. Hello. My name is Jennifer. Um, I feel like I'm one of the very few. Uh, my son is just entering kindergarten. He is my absolute first to enter the school district. I do have a two and a three-year-old that do attend South Shore Children's Learning Center. My son did win the UBK last year. He was over at Timber Point. Uh, my daughter was also enrolled here as well. My other daughter will be coming to South Shore in September. Um, when school closed down, Amory worked with me where Timber Point closed down and allowed my son, because of the low enrollment at South Shore, for me to pay for him to come to the South Shore Children's Learning Center. There's many buildings, uh, many classrooms in this building that are not utilized. Why can the district not utilize some of these, this ginormous space we're all sitting in right now? Why can't the district utilize some of this space? Well, all the rooms here and upstairs are full. Anne Marie is over there. There's a huge wing right here that I walked down before this whole COVID thing that has many classrooms that are emptied. Well, there's, there's storage in there. There's other, the, 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 other, the other issue is we don't have people to put in there with the kids. Mm -hmm. We don't have the staff to do that. And even if we filled those classrooms, mm -hmm. we could maybe take care of two grades but that would leave everybody else hamstrung. It's still a couple of extra classrooms to utilize and a giant extra space to utilize. Again, I mean, they we, were very good. They sent them back in May. I sent my kids back in May. And South Shore was able to reopen, and I understand it's to a much smaller degree, but South Shore was able to safely reopen and go through summer camp with, thank God, no issues. Um, the teachers all wore face shields because the kids are so young and it's so important for them to see their mouths, to learn reading and sounds. And I think being that my son will be in Timber Point next, well, hopefully in September, it's important for the teachers to maybe wear face shields just so they're not, they, they have to see a mouth. I don't disagree. I agree 100%. And the mask thing is maddening, especially. I, I agree with the mask slash of you know, some kind of barrier, but for well, you know, a the, child the, that young? We're getting a conflicting report now from, um, I forget it's the CDC or Department of Health, and they're saying wear the face shield and the mask under the face shield. They're saying to wear both? Yeah. So we, you know, we also have, um, you know, uh, uh, we're working on a, a conundrum over at the high school because we have Cleary School for the Deaf, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of lip reading involved. It's so, very difficult when they're... Uh, with a mask, with yeah, it's impossible. Knees. Yep. Yeah. So, um, now where are you leaning? Are you full in? I'm full in. Full in? Okay. I'm full in. I am sending my two girls here. They will be attending South Shore, and my son will be, like I said, hopefully over at Timberwaite. The other question I have is with kindergartners with masks. I mean, I understand Governor Cuomo wants, that's three minutes already? Well, two minutes and 44 seconds. Come but on, no, I waited about an hour and a half for this. <laughs> I, uh, listen, and I, again, I, that's my fault. You guys are going to kill me for I that. I did but, call you today. You just didn't return my call. Um, I, but I have, anyways, I have just a real bunch quick, of, just kindergarten I, with masks. It I, said uh, something about mask breaks. What does that exactly mean? Um, well, I will say this. First, I'll apologize to everybody who I didn't call back today because mm -hmm. I didn't really get to any calls today because I was running around. It's okay, different. I understand. No, I'll just, get to them tomorrow. Um, when, when we say mask breaks, it's getting the kids into a place where they can, if we're in full blown and we don't have the space, whenever we can get the kids far enough apart mm -hmm. so that they can take their mask off and get a breath or get them outside. Uh, Mr. Carpluck teaches in Pat Med and we, uh, we actually taught together 30 years ago. And um, you know, back then we would sometimes take the classes outside on nice days. And that, you know, 
we're going to encourage people to use the open spaces. And, so you're and that, considering that a mask break, not them actually getting to where they're going to be sat and allowed to remove their mask, like at their desk. Again, it'll depend on the configuration. If, if they, you know, they're saying you have to be six feet apart. If you're not six feet apart, you have to wear a mask. So if we're not six feet apart, you're going to have to wear the mask. Okay. In which means we're going to have to find time to get the kids to a place where they can take the mask off for a few minutes, whether it's outside or into a room like this or down, you know. I mean, I know I just sat here for an hour and it was hard for me to keep this on. Yeah. I understand kudos to the healthcare workers, but uh, not to the All right, normal. I hate to do this, but. Yes, I'm getting the banana. Good night, uh, but I'll, thank If you. you call today, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> all right, thanks. All right, uh, number 74. today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Charlene Jerome. I actually uh, went to the school um, many years ago and actually when I was in sixth grade um, the teachers actually would instead of having the all the kids move around the teachers were actually the ones to move around. We have three different teachers four at times even the music teacher would come to our classroom our teacher would come to the classroom so perhaps instead of removing these activities that kids look forward to we could have the, the teacher, in fact, come to their classroom. Um, my daughter will be going to kindergarten, perhaps. Um, I'm still undecided. Um, I also wanted to know, by, you need to know if I'm gonna be doing virtually by the 24th, but will you have a plan set in stone by the 24th? Oh yeah, we, we put that um, in the letter today. Um, you know, we, we, we promised it on July 28th, we promised it by August 20th. And some people kind of gave me a hard time, and I said, okay. And now the governor, like I keep saying, he told us we have to be done with these meetings by the 21st. But we'll, we'll have something by the 20th or sooner. Okay, because that was my worry, because I feel like it's too short of a, of a time period for me to really make a choice like that. She's excited for school. She wants to meet friends, make friends. I'm worried. I feel like as a kindergartner, they shouldn't have to wear a mask. I think social distancing is better at their age. Um, let alone yesterday, we were baptizing her younger sister. It wasn't even half an hour, she couldn't keep the mask on. She was saying, she was having trouble breathing, honestly, and she said, Mommy, I can't breathe in this. And in church, I had to like take it apart. Mama, can you breathe now? So let alone she's gonna be going to school a full day as a five-year-old and having trouble breathing, that's my worry. Um, the other thing is, I mean, even when she was going to pre-K, Parents were giving these kids tons of Tylenol when they were sick just to get rid of them because they work full time. I don't really, you know, how are we going to make sure the kids aren't being doped up on Tylenol when they're being sent to school without making sure they're, they're sick? That's my other concern. Um, I also think gym class, I mean, I think it's a necessity for them. Recess is a necessity. Lunch like getting out of their classroom once in a while, I think it's, it's a big thing they have to do. Uh, again, we, you know, we've been saying it all night. We, we, want, we want the kids back in school in a normal school routine. Because all, and, and again, gym class is a perfect example of a time where you can get a kid into a place where they can Absolutely. take the mask off. Um, now, my other thing was too, um, if I choose to do virtual for her, now is the school gonna be providing all materials or just a laptop? Like, are they gonna provide all the guidelines? Is there gonna be a teacher live the entire time? Yes. Okay. That, that's, you know, again, that's what the governor has told us. Okay. And so we're working out the details right now. So now and as you heard, that there was a lady here before that, you know, did a commercial for BOCES, so. <laughs> yes. Now, come January, if you know, I feel more comfortable sending her back. You did say there is an option for that come January. With a side to if we want to keep them or we want to send them back. Um, now, are they going to be thrown in with the classroom that's already there? Or will there be a new classroom? No, the hope, the, the, what we want to do is schedule in a way so that if we all come back or you decide to come back, you're going to go into the group that you were with. Okay, so the original group that she would have been in. Yes. Okay, okay, because that's like her starting a whole new year again. Well, no, she'll be with. No, no, but but she'll with. She'll be with the group that she was with. Doing virtual learning. Do you mean? If well, it okay. Oh, I, oh, that's a good question. All right, I see what you mean. Yeah. But like I, I would like to know.
know which group she would be in, like if she will continue with the virtual learning group or the classroom that was in school the entire time. That's my question. Um, you'll have an answer for that by, by next Monday. Because there are a couple things on the table right now. If it goes if it goes the way I'd like to see it go, then she's going to be able to go right back into her class. Okay. Now, will we know by Monday if you're going to be sorry if you're going to be doing social distancing and they're going to be required to like wear masks or like one or the other? Uh, we 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 hope to have an answer for all of it by next Monday. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're very well. You know, you're the closest to three minutes. You were three minutes and one second. So yeah, time we got to have we got to get a prize for you. All right. Uh, <laughs> number 70, number 75. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Um, oh, you're my welcome. Name is, my name is Katie Matson. Um, my daughter is. Our oldest will just be entering kindergarten this year. Um, so we personally haven't been involved with, you know, everything that's happened since March um, so much. So I can't really, I, I can understand it. But um, my thing is, uh, I think it's best that we return to full time, personally. I, I, I'm a nurse, so I was in the middle of this in March and April, and it was ugly. And you know what? We rolled up our sleeves and did the best we could do with what we had. And I think we should handle this the same. We need to have structure and, and as much normalcy, I agree, I agree with you, as much normalcy as possible um, for them. You know, that's really why we're all here, for them. And uh, I think if we, whatever we have to do to adapt, I think a lot of people are afraid and I, and I understand, you know, being afraid, um, but you gotta, we, we can't live like this forever. You know, we, we just can't, we can't live in fear forever. So I, I think, you know, a lot of times with, with, with me, when I treat patients, which when, when I see that, it, it alleviates fear is educating them. Talk, this is what's going on with you. Let, let's sit down and talk about it. You know, I think if maybe more people really know, you know, your ins and outs and this, hey, I, I, I know you want this from us, but this, I, I, I can't get water from stone, so. You know, I think if you, if we're, is there a lot of communication back and forth that way? You know, I, again, I thank you for listening to everyone's concerns. I've never seen anything like this. This is great. But, you know, I think people need to hear, you know, your, this is what I'm working with here. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Um, so I think to return to as much normalcy as possible, adapt, do what you have to do to, you know, create that environment pre-COVID for them. You know, so the, I, the spacing, fine. I, you know, I, I think if everybody's in the classroom and it's spaced out six feet, give them a break. You know, hey guys, we're gonna take a break right now. Everybody take off their masks. We're gonna do, you know, whatever activity, you know. I think uh, they're very resilient. And, you know, I heard somebody before talk about the 97,000 children acquired this in the, you know, in the last year. I, but out of how many children in the country? That's a very small percentage. So if you want to talk statistics, 97,000 sounds huge, but out of how many children do we have in this country is a very small percentage. So I think if we take the proper precautions and adapt and, and be flexible, I think we'll be all right. That's all I want to say. Thank you very uh, much. Th listen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Number 76. Hi, good evening, how are you? My name is Carl. I have a, a daughter that's going into kindergarten. Um, I'm just here basically to say I'm all for the five days a week. Any virtual learning uh, basically for young kids is basically the parents are gonna do it. I mean, how many five-year-olds do you know that, that could use a computer to the extent of learning from the teacher online. So I, I'm just basically here. Uh, I understand that, you know, everybody's nervous about, you know, COVID, whether or not their children are gonna get sick. Uh, if you look at European countries, they've been doing it since April. Germany, 
Norway, Sweden, with very little increase in the number of cases. So I think uh, we just need to open up the schools. Okay. Thank Carl, th that, was, that was pretty simple. Thank you very much. Carl, you just set the record. You were 12.36 seconds. Uh, I'm to the point. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. No, don't say that. Again, Carl, I apologize. That was, you know, next time I'm going to do it in a room with a window so I can see who's outside. All right. That might not stop me, but it won't give me any, I won't have any excuses then. All right, number 77. How are we doing? Thanks My name is Laura. Hi. Um, my daughter's 78, so we're going to do this kind of together. I'm going to go first. Um, she is going into her senior year in high school. I support going full time. I support masks if necessary, if it means going back full time. Um, I also wanted to say, before I forget, thank you. You've been very patient tonight, even though you've been asked the same question over and over, and you've given the same answer over and over. I give you credit because I was at home listening, and I was saying some not so nice things. Um, <laughs> my main concern is this. There's obviously different challenges at every age and at every grade level. Um, the, the parents of kindergartners have very different needs and worries and concerns than the parents of seniors do. Um, and from what I've heard online earlier and what I've heard so far here, I haven't heard too much about the high school kids being focused on. And um, obviously, being that she's a senior, that's where my concern lies. Um, spring was not, as you've heard, a good time. The coin dump and run, that, that was put out there a lot. It was busy work. Somebody said they were doing work for hours and hours. She did work for an hour, and she was done. She didn't learn anything. Love you. Um, if there's any type of hybrid learning, their needs needs 100% to be virtual online teaching as if they were going to school five days a week from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. There needs to be those con concrete lessons and that interaction that they have, although I'm personally still for full time. Um, my other main concern is um, the music and the arts. My lifeguard friend before, <laughs> who I don't know, but I fully support a lot of what he said, I think was the first one who's really mentioned it. Um, for a lot of the kids, the music and the arts is very crucial to them. That's what they're going forward for in their career path. And um, I know some people have mentioned, oh, well, let's only do core classes in school. And you know what? The rest can be done online. No, an art major or a music major cannot do their time online. They need that one-on-one. -on -one. They need that interaction. You can't do honors choir online. You can't do AP art online. You need that in school, in person, teaching and guidance from those teachers who excel in what they do. Because you know what, some kids, that's what they're gonna to go to college for and that's what they're gonna do in their life. So they need to be considered just as much as the kids who are gonna be teaching and the kids who are gonna be scientists and the kids who are gonna be mathematics. Because unfortunately, as we've seen in the past, not too recently, but in the past, music and arts are always the first one to go. So I just want it to be known <laughs> that I think that those in-person lessons are beyond crucial, not only for their learning but for their mental health and now she's going to do her three Wait, minutes. before you leave i, I want to i just want to go on record as saying something because this is a theme that keeps coming back especially when we have a student in the room mm -hmm. um a good a, a, a gentleman who was one of my mentors way way back um uh leon we used to say there's no such thing as an elective it's very true and but please don't ever say we can't do it because Right now, we, we, we've been put in a very difficult spot by people who are in a difficult spot. You know, you're not going to hear me. I'm not going to bash the governor or the president. They, they have their, their jobs to do. Um, but I, I hope and I think, and I think I have the full support. We, this board has not discussed, like I've heard in certain areas, let's cut out some of the, so that we can just stick to the, you know, the, the, the academic classes. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I'm very proud of um, the administrators and the teachers who knew, I mean, we were put into a terrible situation. Right. I mean, you know, March 1st, nobody was thinking about this. And nobody I, you know, I, 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 <laughs> you know, but I have a, I have a great deal of confidence and, and I'm shooting for Thanksgiving that 
again, we, and you weren't in here when I said it, but I say it over and over again. This is the Board of Education that will be forever remembered. They took us from blackboards to virtual. And, and look, I believe even if there hadn't been a pandemic, this board was going to make the investment in, in these tools. Now, having said that, Look, the, the real challenge, we have some real challenges ahead of us, Definitely. especially in the younger grades, we have challenges, but in the upper grades, I know we can find a way to teach music online if we have to. And if we have to. If we have to, and if we have to. Well, we can do it outside, B would do it. I keep saying we need <laughs> teachers and kids talking to each other, and the old man like me, I have to get out of the way and let the kids learn. So let's bring the student up to the... Yeah, like I said, I just wanted to say that because I hadn't really heard it addressed. No, yet, no, so. no, no, but we, we, want, we, want, we want it all. We don't want a little bit, we want it all. Hi. Hey, stranger, how you been? I'm good. And I kind of uh, was trying to figure it out. Now, do you have your mask off? Thank you. Um, obviously, I'm going into 12th grade this year. Um, I know for me and many of my friends who are all concerned for their senior year, whether we'd like to admit it or not, uh, we'd rather not have to experience the split that been, that's been going around alphabetically with the student body. Um, a lot of my friends recently have been talking about a split of 9th and 10th grade and then um, 11th and 12th grade on other days. Uh, many parents early on in this quarantine, and I know I've been on Facebook, I've been basically everywhere and I've seen all the comments. Uh, they were worried about not only the social aspect of us being apart from our classmates, but also the mental health and our well-being. Um, I know personally, uh, me and a lot of my friends were all struggling very early on. We've been doing this for 12 plus years. We've been going to school for seven hours a day for seven years, um, interacting with our friends. Um, and for all that to be taken away, um, it's, it impacts us a lot. And um, if it's alphabetically split, then it's going to impact us a lot because then we're not going to have half of our friends that we usually would see. Um, on a normal basis, and um, my only question for that is, uh, has any consideration at our level, the high school level, um, the hybrid system, if we do wind up doing that, would it be uh, 9th and 12th and 11th and 12th, um, and then alphabetically? You know, and, and look, it pains me to do this, but I don't also don't want to give you false hope. There are so many other factors that go into it, especially families and younger siblings, that I, I really don't see that as a possibility. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be hard enough for us to keep, you know, it's, it seems simple. You just cut the alphabet and everybody's family will stay the same. But we have families with kids in four schools. Um, you know, when, once we do, because um, we've, you know, we've already, you know, I've looked at some of this, we're going to have a challenge. And with the commitment is keeping families together. And I, like I said, at graduation, uh, you know, graduation is about the family. And look, y your friends will be your friends but you're never gonna lose your family. So I apologize, but I'd rather be honest with you. And then my only other uh, concern is that I do believe that anyone and everyone should wear a mask when we go back to school. Uh, these masks aren't hurting anyone, they're keeping everyone safe. Um, everyone sh who goes into these buildings, whether it be a teacher, faculty, security, or students, um, they should be wearing a mask full time. Um, if a student refuses to wear a mask and their parents don't enforce their child to wear a mask, as many have said today, that they're not too worried about wearing a mask when they go back to school, um, um, are these kids going to get reprimanded similar to how many schools, in, uh, how many girls in the school uh, do when a teacher berates them for wearing a tank top, or are they just going to get a light slap on the wrist? Um, look, I, 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 this is one, I, I mentioned this earlier. Um, Look, we had the great debate about hats, and I fought the hat wars in the 90s and the 2000s and the 2010s, and, but this isn't, this isn't about hats. This is about everybody's health and safety. Yeah. And if, you, you know, if you're not going to, look, the governor said it. Um, we, we worked with the governor on graduation. We asked for permission to do it. He said no, so we listened because we're not going to put anybody here in sort of jeopardy that way. Um, masks are not negotiable. And it, it they will be it'll be dealt with swiftly. And honestly, if 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 you can't follow the mask rule, then do take the virtual option. Okay. Or we'll assign you to the virtual option. Thank you. <laughs> you you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, number seventy nine. Hello. You guys are still smiling after waiting this long. Thank you very much. 
Hi, my name is Denise. I'm a teacher at the high school, so I will definitely be back. I think that live instruction is needed, but as a parent, I have a ninth grader and a 12th grader, and my ninth grader doesn't hang out with his friends. He's afraid to get the virus. So I want him to go back, but he's also high school, so now I gotta respect his decision because it is his health, and he is really worried. My 12th grader, she goes to work, wears a mask all the time. She um, doesn't go on the ferry. She doesn't go to the beach with her friends. She's limiting her activity as well because they're both afraid, and they have a grandfather who had COVID. He, very luckily, he's, very, um, he's fine right now, but they're concerned about their grandparents and bringing it to their grandparents, who they see often. So for Adam, my ninth grader, I, I just wanted to encourage him because I'm going to be down there. And are the desks going to be clean? At the high school level, will the desks be cleaned every period? I know it's cleaned daily, but it should be cleaned period because they're touching the desks. If a kid wakes up in, in the morning or the teacher wakes up and they're sick, how does their instruction go that day? How does a teacher instruct? What is the kid going to do to receive instruction? Um, the plan stated that the district will maintain adequate ventilation. I know how the high school is. Has that been fixed? Because it is so hot, the circulation is poor, even when you have air conditions running. It's not a very good environment under normal situations. And let's see. This is my husband's question. If we see that live in-person in instruction is not working in other parts of the country, are we going to move forward and open five days in-person instruction? Wait, or Denise, go I, I didn't get that. I didn't understand that question. If we're seeing the country, across the country, that live instruction is not working, where the, they start going to school and then they have to go to um, online instruction, are we going to move forward anyway and do the five days in-person, even though it's failed in other places around the, the country? I mean, are we going to... if? Are we going, yes, so we're we just going to, this is his, we, are we, we going to look at others and see what's failed in other, in other states? That, I think, is more a question for, for the governor. The governor? Because, yeah, because, you know, we, we honestly have to do what we're told. Okay. That's the big thing. And then, as far as masks, I think face guards are important as well because the virus can go into the body through the eyes and... If, um, if my son is in class, how can he hear his teacher with the mask on? It's going to be difficult to understand a teacher if he's sitting and is socially distancing away. So, and if a teacher is at the, the board and the, the students are six feet away, does the teacher still need to wear a mask? Hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can answer these quickly. The desk, oh, and one more gonna... thing, one more thing real quick. Okay, go ahead. Okay. For, be, to stop the, the teachers from, like, to limit the circulation of the teacher, how about we get every kid, we're getting them Chromebooks, but how about getting them indiv individualized um, whiteboards? We have them in class, but it's a class set, but if every student has it, they can take it to their own, each class, they could hold up their work and their answer, so that way the teacher can see right away what the kids are doing without having to circulate. Those have been discussed. We were actually discussing them this morning in one of the meetings I was in. Um, let me, let me run down the list. I'll work backwards. As far as the whiteboards go, under consideration. Okay. okay, we bought the computers. We're hoping that they can, you know, work virtually with the computer. Um, the, the money pit is not bottomless, and we've got to focus on cleaning and cleaning supplies and the computers. But that's not to say these, that, that could be ruled out. But an individual whiteboard for each kid at this point, um, you know, it's in discussion, but it's, I wouldn't say it's on the top of the list. Um, masking and face guarding is going, to, we, we're going to need some clarification because there's competing things where we're hearing you should wear the face guard and the mask. And there is, I, I don't know if that was the CDC, Department of Health, or who said that, but when they told me that, I went, wait a minute, that kind of defeats the purpose. I understand the eyes, mm -hmm. but, you know, we, we're, we're going to have issues with kids that need to read lips and kids that, you know, with hearing issues. Um, you know, live instruction when we're virtual, I think is important. Um, and we talked about the desk cleaning. I mean, you're, you're a math teacher, we can do the math. If you have 14 kids, if we're in a full-blown situation, you've got 25 kids in a class, or you're 26. If you have a hybrid where it, you know, we're at 12 to 14, um, to try to get custodians to come in each period and clean those desks, it, we don't have enough custodians but we are looking to bring our night guys in during the day. 
we are looking at, um, there was a very nice setup at RCK today. We were doing a walkthrough and trying to measure things out where you leave the desks in the classroom, if, if you're hybrid, and you leave all the desks in the classroom, but the, the A kids sit in certain seats and the B kids sit in certain seats, okay. and that will lend itself. We're looking at custodial aids because custodial aids are an economical way of getting as much cleaning as we can done, doorknobs and things like that. And we're also looking at having the wipes in the classroom. And I've had a, a good number of parents say, hey, can my kids bring their own wipes? That's going to be my next question. And I said, God bless you. Yeah, please because do Because I know that we're limited as a teacher what we could use in our own classroom. We have to get it from the custodians. But so now it's, if it's... You know, if think about what you're saying. And I'll, and I'll do this real quick because I know it's getting late. But if it takes 10 seconds to clean a desk and you have 14 desks, that's 104. I did this earlier today. That's 14, 140 seconds, which I believe is two minutes and 20 seconds. It's a five minute passing time. So the custodians can do two and a third classrooms during the passing time. But wait a minute, where are the kids? Oh, they're waiting out in the hall for the custodians to clean the desks. Mm -hmm. So they're all congregating out in the hall. Um, you know, I, I, I do appreciate all that the guys up in Albany do and the gals, they work very hard. But some of the things that they're saying just flat out are not practical to do in a school. and. I spend a large part of my day trying to explain, yeah, that's a great idea, but, mm -hmm. and if the kids didn't show up, it would be easy. You know, teaching, teaching in a school is very easy when the kids stay home, I'm just gonna say that. But it wouldn't be as much fun without them, so. Absolutely. All right, thanks, then, Denise. Oh. One more thing now, okay. with the bathroom situation, I know at the high school, we had certain bathrooms closed. Will all bathrooms be open full t like all the time with monitors so that like we have to yeah, sign well, them well, in? We're gonna That's something the, else you gotta think about too. The good news is we're getting new bathrooms. With the, with the no-touch flushing and stuff like okay. that. So that's all going to roll together. And that came up before. We're going to have to monitor the bathroom situation. But I've said this over and over again. I worked in two buildings twice the size of this one, and we had less bathrooms open, and I didn't hear anything about them. And I was the principal, not the superintendent. So, but now you're talking about kids washing their hands more. Yeah, so well, we're, not well, even going to the bathroom, but just washing oh, their no. hands more. And, and also we're looking, at, we're looking at, one of the things we're talking about is getting the soap dispensers and things like that. Right. So when they rip the bathroom out, we can put the soap dispenser back up. We don't want to have to double buy if we don't have to. So it's okay. so all we're talking about a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, I know. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Denise. And you're, we're going to have a meeting with all you guys beginning of next week. So you'll get that message tomorrow. Uh, number 80. My name is Lisa. I have two girls in the district. I have one going into first and I have one going into fourth. My question is about the hybrid model. Um, I know you're saying two days a week they're coming into school. I was just curious because it hasn't been clear. Is there going to be remote instruction happening on the other three yes. days that they're home? Yep. Yep. Live teaching or? Yeah, we're working, on, we're working on finalizing that. Excellent. Because I, I do work in a school. I'm in teaching summer school right now and we do live instruction. Now, I know somebody said it'd be great to have all day long. It's not practical. But even an hour a day, two hours a day, where there's half of it could be social, emotional, half of it could be core subjects, parents are just so happy because the kids need to see their friends. I think parents, I think teachers, and I think kids are happy when they can see each other. It's, it's yeah. made a difference. I mean, all of my parents, thank you so much. Like, they just want to see each other. So it's really helped. And a couple of people mentioned reading lips and being able to see. They do make masks with the clear inserts for, I don't know if you're ordering for them, but they do have them where you can see what's happening while they're talking. Oh, wow. They're masked on the outside. Just so you know. You're the first person to say that to me. <laughs> well, I use, I'm use. i a speech therapist, so we use them. So. Where do you teach? Them. I'm in New York City. I work for District 75. Okay. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you very much. Thanks for staying. All right, number 81. Number 82. I hope they didn't leave mad, they just answered their question. How are you, Ms. Dolan? How are you? It's going to be uh, fourth grade, RCK. I um, wanted to start with transportation. How is transportation going to be handled with the big buses? Okay, um, right now we're working, we're working with our bus company, and um, we're trying to get a handle on just how many kids we can put on a bus, but more importantly, and you're going to see tomorrow, we're going to ask you flat out, are you planning on driving your children to school or do you want them to take the bus? Um, because, you know, I, 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 I tease my business official all the time. I said this earlier. 
Um, he keeps asking me how do you, he's been asking me since March, how do you social distance on a bus? And I say, you can't. And the fact that he keeps asking me and he thinks I'm actually getting smarter in my old age, um, I'm flattered by that. But, you know, what we talked about earlier, big bus, first kid on gets in the back, first kid on, last kid off, we, you, you build from the front. Um, I actually was up in uh, Buffalo um, a couple weeks ago and I was standing outside on the phone and um, a bus rode by and there were little kids in masks every other seat. Um, now that is summer school, um, but we are work. Suffolk Transportation is a first rate organization and they're gonna, do, they're gonna do everything they can to help us maintain health and safety on the bus. But we need to know, and the last time we asked, about 60% of our parents said they were not gonna be using the buses. Now my fear is I say that tonight, and everybody goes, oh, Nobody's on the bus, I'm gonna send my kid on the bus. But we will ask tomorrow, hard and fast, are you gonna ride the bus or not? All right, is Suffolk gonna put uh, like aids on the buses to make sure kids are wearing masks? Cause you're always gonna have kids that, you know, wanna not wear the masks. Again, you're also gonna have kids that medically can't wear a mask. My, my son can wear, but how will a bus driver know who can wear a mask versus somebody that medically can't? Um, that it, it'll be pretty much as we do anything else. When there are exceptions to rules, we may have to seat them in a certain spot on the bus. Um, that's the first time anybody's brought that up to me. I'll bring it up to uh, my business official tomorrow and I'll get him to call Suffolk and see how we're going to handle that. Right, and then you guys. I mean, you guys obviously would have doctor's notes from students that can't wear a mask. Well, we can communicate with the bus company, and and you know there are there are some other creative ways I can think of them right now off the top of my head. But if I start going into the creatives, we'll never get out of here. But there, there could be a situation where, uh, you know, we might have to go with, with some sort of special busing option. All right. Um, the playgrounds um, at RCK, you're going to have a playground open for the children, third and fourth graders? Or? Um, I, I, I'd like to say yes, but that's something that we're, we're, we're trying to get a little more advice on from the Department of Health. Um, so then and how they're order, handling playgrounds. So you wouldn't know the frequency of cleaning or disinfecting it. Oh, excuse me? Then you wouldn't know the frequency of disinfecting it then. Yeah, I mean, again, we're, we're, we're looking at, we got a lot of square footage and we hire custodians to clean based on square footage. Um, we are looking to hire um, some custodial aides to support them. But honestly, we're going to work from the building out. You know, we have to focus on the inside the building because that's what, you know, instruction is the most important thing. Right. As much as I love the outdoor stuff and I love the sports, we have to, we have to focus our resources inside out. So the playgrounds, we're going to, we'll work with the Department of Health. All right. We're up in here. We haven't decided if we're going to do the remote learning yet. But if oh. we do do the remote learning, how will the students that do remote learning interact with their classroom teacher for, like, um, lessons? You know, and I hate to tell you, but we're running, you're running out of time. The remote learning, um, I would recommend come to the next virtual meeting because it is a work in progress um, in terms of us finalizing. We're, we're trying to manage who's coming back, what kids are coming back and not coming back. And we have some staff that's medically compromised. So we're going to have to get, a, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of time to, work the, those things together. All right, and the deadline for, to let you know for remote learning is the 24th. Uh, I, be, I believe it's the 24th. I don't have the letter in front of me. It's right, online. We, but you, know, you, wanna, you wanna know in tomorrow's survey if they're taking the bus. If, if my child returns, he's gonna be on a bus. So I'm just gonna put yes on the survey? Uh, yes. Before you know for sure that he's coming back to school. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right, number 83. Um, my name is Christina. So I have less questions and more just things to take into consideration. Um, I have four children, I have kindergarten, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. I'm pretty sure I got that all right. Um, and I am an essential employee. I have the benefit of working from home. My husband is also an essential employee. He cannot work from home. So I'm working from home 40 plus hours a week, juggling all four of my children who all learn different. One is an IEP. Um, I plan on sending them to school full time. Um, however, I'm very well aware that um, as parents, we can want what we want and the governor can change on, you know, the day before school. So I, I thank you for putting your consideration into everything. Um, 
it is what it is. That's kind of we're going with the flow. My only concern is flexibility for parents um, when we are doing a hybrid model or if we are working from home and trying to educate our children from home. Mm -hmm. um, I was one of the ones who called you, sent you an email when this all first started and you called me immediately, so thank you. And I was probably sobbing on the phone with you <laughs> because I could not, I, I just couldn't do it, I broke. So as much as my kids' mental health is important, you know, when they say when you're on an airplane, you gotta put the mask on yourself before you help the children, it's very important that the teachers are flexible with the parents as well, especially when it comes to the virtual education. I cannot teach my children during the day. And if you, you, know, you have children and trying to get them to do schoolwork at nine or 10 o'clock at night, it's like putting needles in your eyes. Um, so that's the only consideration that I'd like to pass on is if when we are working from home for those parents who do have to work, if there's some flexibility with the teachers um, on turning in assignments, on how the kids are accomplishing their, their learning. I had one child who I took all his work for the entire week and I broke it down by subject. So I had math on Monday, reading on Tuesday, um, something else on Wednesday. And that worked very, very well for him while I had another child who was able to kind of ping pong through all the different subjects. Um, but that kind of flexibility and for the parents, I think should be a consideration for at least that hybrid model if that's what we do go towards. Um, the other set consideration is if we do do a hybrid model, my older son has an IEP, so at that point I'd like to reevaluate his IEP because right now it's set for in-person instruction and it's not set for, they're very different needs that he has in school versus virtual learning. So if there would be a process to revisit those children who have IEPs so they can restructure that accordingly. And good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And I remember talking to you and you were actually, you know, you were very helpful because you gave me a lot of, um, you know, a lot of insights into, look, we have a lot of different folks out there and, and we got to try. the teachers were wonderful. I do have to say, I was very fortunate I remember you saying that. My teachers, for all four of my kids were absolutely phenomenal. They worked their butts off. Some visited the house of students. They really did try and do what they could for the children. So I do appreciate that. It's just moving forward, now different teachers, I don't know, but that flexibility was so integral, especially for my family. I know it's my fault I had so many children. However, <laughs> trying to juggle uh, that. We appreciate, um, we're trying to keep schools open here, so we appreciate it. But. No, I, listen, again, full time, I'm all for it, but I realize that may not be my choice. Okay. And also contact, um, Dr. O'Rourke's office about the IEP yes. if there's a question. Okay, okay great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Number 84. I do have to plug my phone in because it's going to die. Oh, yeah, but those poor people that had to wait. I'll blame it on Cal. I'll blame it on Cal. He, he's the one. He wasn't watching out there. Okay, go ahead. So I have two children in this district, one that will be going into fifth grade and one into 11th grade. Um, I am not comfortable with five days in instruction. I feel like that's just jumping into the water without testing it first. Our whole state had to slowly open, and we're not doing that with our schools. Um, so all of the questions that were asked tonight and the recording, are you going to have all of the details of the hybrid and virtual learning plan listed so everybody can read it before the survey needs to be completed? Um, tomorrow's survey is, is important for us to get a jump on a couple of things. Um, where the rubber's really gonna hit the road, because I'm gonna tell you right now, we're not gonna have you know, um, the, where the choice is going to come in is if we go full or we go hybrid, if you're not happy with that, then you're going to look to our virtual. And I do know a little bit more than I'm saying, but 
the purpose of these meetings, and we did break it out. Monday, uh, Thursday's meeting is for elementary, and Monday's meeting is for secondary, so we can start to answer more specific You're questions. You're going to talk in more detail about uh, yep. what each yep. specific elementary, middle school, high school plan would yeah. look like. Yep. And then, you know, we do have a fourth meeting that we scheduled. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll need it. We may unveil. We, I, we might just say this is what we're doing. Um, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to make the final announcement on the phone if I don't have to. I want you to see me I'll look, in, I'll look into wherever the camera is and say this is what we're doing. And, you know, I'm sure some people will, you know, say I'm a good superintendent and others will think I'm not so good depending on what I say. So um, you, you still have a little more time to get more information. So. And then as far as the virtual learning is in your proposal, it shows full-time online instruction. It says um, live instruction with teachers teaching from their East ISA classroom. So how come we can't say that if we're, if I'm choosing a virtual option, you can't tell me that that's how my child is learning, if the learning in school and the learning virtual are supposed to be together. Where, because if we had to go fully back to just being all virtual, you know, all at home, then each child that went into school should be able to go home if we had to and continue where they left off. Yes. and but. The, there's a nuance between the person that's, you know, I don't, who's choosing to go virtual right away. Um, and we also have to factor in, I, I've said this over and over, we have some staff that have some pretty um, serious medical conditions. And so we now, we have to ascertain how many people are going to voluntarily say we're not coming and try to match up our staff who can't come into a building for medical reasons. And we, we would hope to be able to build the virtual world um, within the confines of here. But if we can't make it work, once we see what the numbers look like, um, we may have to explore other options, which we really don't want to do. And I'm, I, don't, I don't mean to be vague, but we, we need a little bit more time um, to, to hammer that out. I know you had said about opting in or opting out, it had to be, you have to, is it definite that it has to be a six months period if that's what you're doing, if you're, if you're choosing hybrid or virtual? Because if your circumstances, everybody has their own personal circumstances change. Obviously, if the state closes based on uh, raised cases, that's different. But I feel like six months is a long time to sign up for something with, without looking at it that um, and I'll say this cautiously you, you have rules and there are certainly you can appeal and there are exceptions to every rule and um, but in, in order to you know build a schedule build a schedule and have continuity um, you know at first we were going to ask for a full year commitment when we talk about the buses we're going to ask for a full year commitment you know we're going to say to parents you know we don't want you just driving them in the bad weather or in the nice weather. You know, we need a commitment. Um, we, we went back and forth and we settled in on, um, you know, the, the middle of the school year. Because again, if you're out, if you choose virtual and you go to the end of the first quarter at the high school, you're in Thanksgiving time. I said this earlier today. And then you're into holidays and mixing and mingling holidays and who knows what will happen. Um, so we felt you come out of the first week of the new year, um, we would have a kind of clear assessment. Did it spike up? Are we going to have to close? Where are we going to go? But just, just for you know, our own continuity's sake, we need that half-year commitment. We've looked at other models, and they just don't, um, it, they, they would be disruptive, to be honest with you. So we need a commitment. OK. Thank right? you. Thank you very much. Now, are you undecided, virtual, hybrid, or full? If it's five days, I'm not sending my kids. So I don't know what. I'm, I'm going to put really you down as undecided. Cause, and again, I appreciate that. And you know, like, like I said, we're going to do our best to get you more information. I need more information. Absolutely. This is a very difficult decision. These are my children's lives. I want my school to be safe for them. Well, part, part of the reason that we're not pulling the trigger, and, and you know, uh, quite frankly, and I know we're probably running over the time, you know, everybody wants to bash the governor, everybody wants to bash the president, okay? Um, 
I keep saying I'm not going to bash anybody, but this is this is a process I wish we would do in the first week in July. We would have been happy to do it, because as you can see, I'll sit here all night. We're going to sit here. We're going to try to arrange the virtual meetings so that they don't turn into, you know, a few people dominating the conversation. We need to hear from everybody, and I have my notes here. I have a tally sheet, and then then we're going to, you know. We're weighing a lot of factors, and I do know this. No matter what we say, not everybody's going to be happy, but I hope we can pull together and unify, and, and for those who aren't happy, we can find ways to bring them into the fold. But there's no way, there's no way I'm going to be able to say anything that's going to make everybody happy. Of course so, not. So. Of course not. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number 85. I actually just had a follow-up question to her question. I was actually here just for moral support. Um, <laughs> but so obviously in August, the kids get assigned a teacher normally, right? And that's the class they go to. So if we choose the virtual option, is that my child still following then Mrs. Smith's class? And then when they decide to go back in January, is she going to Mrs. Smith's class come January? Um, we're we're going to do our best to do that. Okay. The problem is... And I said this earlier today, if you have one class where for whatever reason, 20 out of the 25 kids decide to opt out, we're gonna to have to take the ones that are left and reposition them. And so what would happen is it might not be Mrs. Smith, but the goal is, the goal is to get your children in, if, it, if we're not full time, the goal is to get your children in with a cohort of kids, a class of kids that they can spend a year with and be familiar with. So that's the goal. It may, you know, you might have Mrs. Smith and you might get bumped to Mrs. Jones, but whoever you're working with, we really, really would like to have continuity, you know? Right, I'm just trying to, so what I just explained, so I'm just trying to understand. So if they're assigned a teacher, that doesn't necessarily mean that's where they're going. So if, who's their live teacher then? So if they're oh, doing once, virtual learning, their live teacher would be Miss Smith, but when we go back to school, it might not be Miss Smith anymore. Well, the problem is if we go with the model where um, if we can match up our teachers who um, might not be back with, and which is this, this is going to be, it's an arduous task to try to match this up. But if we're successful, then in that case, your child might go back to Mrs. Smith and leave the, because the virtual might be a, a mix. Okay. So. You know, they really won't know who their actual teacher is. They're going to be taught by multiple teachers. So they're not uh, going to really, it's not going to be the same as the, the consistency of having one individual teacher giving them their instruction at all times. Oh, no. We, we want them, well, it, again, it'll depend. You talk about elementary school? Yes. You're I gonna, am a first grader a, and a fifth grader. In a perfect world, you choose the virtual, you opt to choose to opt out. Mm -hmm. And you get a teacher that's that great teacher if, if the numbers match up then you would stay with that teacher when you come back. But there are so many variables with this. And, you know, we, we may have to turn around and, and, you know, we may have to go to a full year option um, for, for continuity. That's something we're going to hammer out tomorrow and it'll come out on the schedule. So we'll know whether or not, so, it, so it's still not 100% that virtual not, will not, be. You might not have. Not, there might not be an option to go back. Well, no, we're going to, we're going to, we, I want to give you the option to go back, but you're not going to be able to guarantee that you have the same teacher. You would have the same teacher virtually, and then you might go somewhere else. Do we really think that that's the best option when you're um, talking about young children? Like under, under the circumstances? How to read and things like that. I think that inconsistency is probably the worst thing we can offer them when it comes to their education. The best thing I can say? is do I think it's the best option? No, under the circumstances, we have no other choice. But I also feel like people that choose the virtual option for the health of, you know, the concern, their children are being penalized then. It's almost like we're being penalized for not choosing to send our children to school because we don't feel that it's safe. And I don't think that any parent should have to choose between their health and safety of their children and their education. It shouldn't be one or the other. Yeah. Right. No, absolutely. And there are, and I understand that. But 
90% of the time, that doesn't happen. If we're saying that 100% or 95% of the kids that are going to go virtual, that are going to come back, are not going to are going to have that inconsistency of an, of a. You, you know, know what? I, let's do this because I mean I'm going to keep it simple because it's okay. getting late, but. The best thing to do is call my office, come on up, and I'll sit down on a piece of paper and I'll kind of draw it out for you okay. and show you, like I said, I'll say it right now. I agree with you. It's just not possible to guarantee it. It's impossible. And I'd rather tell you I can't guarantee it than lie to you and you go home happy and then you know, I just duck every time I see you at a concert or a PTA meeting. I put on it and go like this. It, it, it's physically impossible to guarantee that. And I can show you why, but it, it's like I said, it's getting late. All right? Yep. Thanks. Number 86. Hi. Hey, guys. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Yeah, she's 87. Um, Are you guys 86 and 87? Yeah. Oh, man. You're killing it. We're, we're rolling. Um, okay. So I just want to start by saying thank you. Right, because this is a lot. Obviously, no one asked for it, so it's a lot that's going on, and I understand that. And um, you know, I don't. So I'm just gonna just say what my concerns are. Okay, so I have, I have a senior for high school, and then I have um, a seven-year-old or eight-year-old going into third grade, starting a new school. So. You know, I have concerns in both areas. So, um, all right. So, well, first of all, with I, I think I'm I'm not really sure with how. And forgive me if I'm re-asking a question that was already asked. I'm sorry, but um, I'm not sure with what I'm leaning towards because I I think I might want to do virtual first to kind of see how things go and then change it up. But I'm not I'm not too sure. Um, so I don't know. I, I I don't have that much time to. No, you, we we you have a, we have a couple of weeks. Okay, <laughs> okay. So um, that I'm not sure about. My son says that he, which is my high schooler, he he wants his concern is he's concerned about having a regular senior year because he's you know excited about that. And um, one of the concerns I did I have with high school is if he did do virtual learning he would still be having like the different teachers and they would still they would still just have a set schedule and yes. and, and it would actually be actual classroom like teaching you know, we, we we're talking about the need for and, and everybody's been saying it for, for live interaction with the teacher okay all right great and um and so as far as sports and everything like that, like he wanted to run track, that's not a thing. Well, right now, I mean, sports is off the table for a few weeks. Okay. That's something that, that's a question that we, we have to, you know, we have to deal with. But I think, and, and I actually have, um, I, I had a call into the attorneys today about a number of things. And the way I read it, it's almost like homeschooling. And the famous example was Tim Tebow, you know, the guy that played for Florida, then he went he's with the Mets, and well, he actually got homeschooled and in high school and could pick the high school he wanted to go play at. So I think there is quasi-precedent for, for that. Okay. So virtual, um, you know, I, I, we'll, get, we'll have some clarification on that because I'm not saying, I don't, there, there's obviously no... Um, precedent in New York State because we've never had this before. But if you make the analogy of homeschooling, yet you can still be in the chess club. Um, so we'll, we'll get clarification on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then as far as um, my daughter's concerned, the third grade, um, I actually, my mind went blank. Sorry. I actually... Um, Wanted to know, like, are the teachers able to, I don't know if this has been asked or if, if this is even a, a dumb question, but are the teachers able to do, like, the temperature checking, or is that? This has come up several times, and, and we're, um, we're, we're really focused right now on these plans, is on, the, you know, now the instruction and the curriculum piece, because um, I think we're going to get some direction 
from state. We have to get some st direction from state ed because you're talking about liability issues. Um, we've talked about everything from the bus drivers, the matrons on the bus. You know, these kids are going to walk by everybody and they're going to zap them for their temperature. But, um, you know, just practically speaking, you're trying to get kids on the bus and now, you know, the kid's supposed to sit down. You've got to take his temperature. That's going to slow the buses down. Coming into the building, the high school, you've got 1,200 kids coming in. The elementary schools, you've got 500. Um, middle school, you've got 800. I mean, how are we going to do this? Because they, they tell us to have multiple entry points so you don't bottleneck, yet you're going to have to try to stop kids, take their temperature, and then you're going to be corralling them. You're, you're going to need you know, two, three, four adults just to do it, and we don't have the, the manpower for that. But what we've been talking about is, and, and I hate to say it, it's the trust word. You know, parents need to take the temperature before the child gets on the bus. Because if the kid gets on the bus with a fever, uh, now you've just, you know, you're dealing with the kids on the bus and whoever they come in contact with. So, um, you know, one of the things that's coming out of some of my meetings is, you know, we'll, be do, we'll probably do random checks like they do at the airports and things like that. And, and, uh, but but the, really, we, we need help from the parents. Don't put your child on. If your child doesn't feel well, stay home. If you don't feel well, stay home. Yeah. You know, we're anticipating, you know, absenteeism to go up. And we're going to have to deal with that. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Well, they get to six minutes because there's two of them. Okay. Hey, wait, anybody else? Who's left? Oh, we got one. Oh, oh, I didn't. All right, we got two more people to call. So let's. All right, go ahead. Um. Okay. I think a lot of my questions were answered. I just, you know, I'm. I was just mostly concerned about the virtual learning. But you're saying as teacher for the elementary school, the teacher will actually have a virtual learning session because I was pulling my hair out with my daughter before, like working full time because I work full time at home. Well, during that time, I'm working full time at home. So you know, I just don't know. I just want to make sure that, like, there will be a schedule. Here's the good news. We're doing the elementaries on Thursday night on a virtual meeting, and the high school's on Monday night, so we get to spend two more nights together. Okay. So, And we'll have more details for you. Okay. All right. Awesome. I think I'm done. All right. Just on my part, uh, we were discussing this last question is, if my wife decides, uh, myself, decide to send, well, go on virtual learning, and then we decide to change our mind, on a hybrid, is that possible or if? What you're saying, if you pick virtual and then you want to come back into hybrid? Exactly. We're probably going to, we, we, we look like we've settled in on January for multiple reasons and it's just, just adding continuity. Because to jump back and forth, um, if you're not in and you jump in, then it's, it, it could, because we're going to restructure the classes based on the number of kids after people opt, you know, to do the virtual. Um, and if you come back, you might, now you're bumping off and you're putting, you know, into class, we're going into classrooms that, you know, we may overload um, because we're going to look to, uh, you know, match up numbers. And so we're, we're going to need a little bit of time. And then the flip side is if you want to jump in, Somebody else may want to jump out. We'll have people hopscotching in based on, literally, on the weather. And I'm not saying you folks, but, oh, it's getting a little cold. It's going to rain. I'm going to stay out. I'm going to opt out this week. So we're going to have to hold hard and fast to January. Okay. All right? And then just a, just a consideration as you guys are planning, more on the elementary level especially. Um, I, you know, my wife didn't get a chance to mention this, but I have to say we definitely struggle a lot in the elementary level. And this is coming from an educator perspective. Um, in regards to some of the teachers, even the elective teachers, um, just just overall, I think that, um, I mean, the past three, four months, I don't think my uh, my elementary, my daughter's elementary teacher did any, any, com any communication with the parents much. So I just want to make sure that communication that is 100%, especially at the elementary level, because my con our concern is more, you know, I have my daughter with tutors and stuff like that, but she's going to fall behind. Third grade, you have the math and ELA. So I'm, as a parent, as parents, we're definitely very concerned, and I just want to make sure that, you know, in the contract, anything that's being put with the teachers, because um, that live instruction, extra help, something that could kind of help parents like ourselves, that, you know, we're essential workers, and we don't, you know, 
late at, late at, late at night we're doing homework and classwork with our daughter. And second, if there's ability where if we're using virtual learning or hybrid mode that you know, we don't have to print assignments. <laughs> Ability to kind of sit there, if it's gonna be virtual, let it be virtual where, you know, we're going crazy printing assignments and uploading and things like that. Listen, if it has to be done, it has to be done, but if any programs out there that could kind of assist and help that it will be great because that, that's well, just I, one thing. We said it before, every kid's gonna get an electronic device and we're hoping that that spurs people to actually, um, I remember 1990, Adele Worthington and Patchogue said to me, you know, we're not going to need paper anymore, and I still got paper on top of paper. We may be actually coming to that now. Hopefully, kids are going to be interacting with their teachers electronically and less paper. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Did you get a new job? No, I'm still, I'm still there. Okay. No, no, I got, I got promoted. Now I'm in the That's what I'm saying. Congratulations. Oh, oh. A nice haircut. <laughs> a nice haircut. You threw me off. <laughs> All right, it was good seeing you guys. Take care. All right, 88. Good evening. I just have two quick questions. First of all, I want to say that my son's teachers did a great job. I was super happy, and he learned a lot. So, and they went above and beyond. They called, they checked, they emailed everything so I'm really happy with how my experience my first question is if you have a student who has essential worker parents and they have come in contact with numerous people who have COVID and you as a parent choose to keep your child home to try to stop the spread will that count negatively towards their absences uh, I think the simple answer is no you know we've, we've been saying to everybody we're gonna have to be patient we're gonna have to adjust um, you know, hopefully if we can come up with a model uh, where kids who are not in school can still participate in the learning, um, you know, that's key. But we do anticipate, we, we don't have our heads in the sand. We know we're gonna deal with quarantine situations and things like that. So we're going to have to be very patient. And the one thing I keep saying, content is important, but it's not as important as it used to be. I say this all the time, you know, you used to have to go to school because that's where the books were. That's where the, I didn't have an encyclopedia at my house. Um, and, and now you can ask Siri anything you want. Um, the process of learning, working together, you know, the synergy of kids working together. And even if you're six feet apart, you can work together and learn. So, uh, yeah, we, we have to be very, very cognizant of the fact that we have a large number of people who may have to pull their children out for a number of reasons. That's why if you're gonna go virtual, we just need to know you're going virtual because we're gonna have a hard enough time adjusting to the people who have to quarantine. So that is my second question. If at any time as a parent, you feel that the school has become unsafe for whatever personal reason, and you say, this is not working for me, I want him home, will that be an option or we have to give you the answer by the 24th? Uh, you know, I, I, these are always tough questions to ask. If you want to call my office, we could run through scenarios. Okay. But, you know, I always say this. We have rules. Mm -hmm. There are exceptions to every rule. Every year, every year, you know, I've been an administrator. Um, something comes up where you have to go, hmm, didn't see that one coming, and we have to make adjustments. So I think, you know, I keep saying patience and flexibility really need to be the, the order of the day here. That's it. Thank you. Have You're a nice welcome. Day. You're welcome. I can't believe it. We saved the best for last. Number 89. Well, the two best, you know, 88 and 89 were the two best. You're up. What? Oh, no, we only went up to 89. Sorry, we got to go. That's my father. That's my father. I got to take him back down in momentum after this. Hi. So I'm Lori Biner. I have a fifth grader in an integrated class with an IEP, and I have a 11th grader with a 504, taking pretty much all AP classes. Um, my first question is for this virtual, is one of the things still being worked out with the virtual learning 
is the teacher's contract that says they are not allowed to do it. No. I've said this over and over again. The bargaining units have been um, very cooperative. Everybody knows two things. This is, I, I shudder to say unprecedented because we did have that, that being disrespectful to the pandemic of 1918, the bubonic plague and other things. But these are um, extremely challenging times. And we, you know, I, I'm proud of the fact we pulled together in the spring and got through it. I wish as superintendent I had pushed a little harder to, you know, I, I think I took a safe approach. I, we had too many planned and canned lessons. I didn't, I, I didn't allow the teachers to just be creative, but I can say unequivocally, we have gotten a tremendous amount of support from all of our bargaining units because they want to make this work. They, want, they, they overwhelmingly want the kids back in school, and they, but they want it to be safe. They have concerns. We're going to have a meeting with them next week. Um, we're trying to gather up as much information as we can. But yeah, that, that's an absolute no. They've been very cooperative, all of them. If it comes down to that only special ed, the two special ed kids classes, excuse me, the 12, I'm sorry, the 811 and the 1211 get to go five days a week, what happens with the kids with the IEP in the integrated class? They will not go back five days a week? Um, is what mean, I read. The, the ICT classes, the integrated classes? Yes. We discussed this earlier. Um, scheduling wise, um, the eight ones and the 12 ones, um, they fit very comfortable into a classroom and they're a, they're a unit until themselves. Um, the integrated class kids, you, you could be integrated in one class, two class, three class, four class. Well, he's in fifth grade. Oh, he's a fifth grader. Okay. Um, but even there, um, you got the eight and 20 rule mm -hmm. and, um, it would be, it would knock the balance of, um, you know, the classroom scheduling out. And so as of right now, that's not going to be an option. So how is my son going to get the appropriate education while getting pulled out for speech twice a week, getting pulled out for OT twice a week? OT must be in person this year. Understand that. And that, that is one of the reasons we're looking at, and again, we haven't firmed this up yet, but the two day, two day, one day, we know we could we could we could hit a number of specials on that, you know, that third virtual day in the week. And it might not have to be virtual, it could be in person. So we we're 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 trying to finalize that part of the, the plan. And the whole reason he's in I mean not the whole reason, there's lots of reasons why why he has an IEP and he's in that class in that type of classroom is one is he has ADHD, um, even with medicine, um, he needs constant redirection. I work, thankfully, from home on a normal basis, working from home and trying to keep him on task, impossible. And I was very lucky with his teacher and we communicated on a daily basis. She would let me know what he actually did because he would tell me one thing and she would say, mm, not quite. Um, and I didn't, wasn't familiar with the programs, even though I deal with computers all day long, um, exactly what he was supposed to be doing. So just going back, being af afraid of what happened in the spring to happen in the fall keeps me up at night. And, and, and you know, I think we all are hearing, you know, we, we've been here, we've, we've heard a number of people tonight, you know, I've heard people in other meetings, um, emails, phone conversations. Um, look, I, I, maybe I've been saying this wrong. You know, I, I do believe that, you know, I stifled the creativity a little bit in the spring. And I think the, the, the folks that we're talking to and putting this together, we all realize that like everything else, uh, and I say this to the kids all the time, you know, you want to be better at sunset than you were at sunrise. Uh, we want to be better in the fall than we were in the spring. And that's, I, I think, and I said this, and you, I, don't think, I don't think you, you know, I don't know when the last time I said it tonight, but um, I, I'm hoping that by Thanksgiving we have a lot to be thankful for, and we're, we're focusing on the process of learning, not the content. 
The content I is, is uh, I completely understand that, but my child is in a classroom with two, two teachers and an aide for a reason. And for him to only be there two days a week, three days a week, is not going to be an education for him. He'll lose a half a year of school. Okay. Also, I have an 11th grader who felt like she taught herself the, most of the spring. She had some teachers that had live things once in a while, um, but it wasn't on a consistent basis. Um, and she spent 10 hours a day doing her work. And for her to go through that again, especially now taking harder, more harder classes, is just, are you really, do we really have a chance of this real virtual learning? Because until I see it, I don't know if I'm going to believe it. And, and what I was going to say to you is, we have the meeting on Monday. Uh, Thursday night is about elementary, so you can focus on your son. Monday night is about um, the high school, so we'd focus on your daughter. Um, and then we're going to have to make a decision by next Wednesday, Thursday, hopefully before that. And after we make that decision, I'd ask you to call me because then, then we can have some more discussion. But let's see, let's see what's in the final plan before. And I know it's hard. I, I know part of the, like, and I've said this over and over again, I wish this process had started July 1st. You know, We were told July 1st that we were going to be told the first week of August, I'm going to make the decision, or July 10th, whenever it was, I'm going to make the decision. So we theorized and thought and sat, and we said, okay, we'll wait till he tells us. If we had been told this July 1st, there'd be a lot less anxiety and angst out there. So, you know, I'm going to ask you for um, a little more patience. And by, you know, next Monday or next Tuesday morning, call my office. And then we can, we can talk specifics about, you know, your son especially. Yeah, I mean, because he was supposed to get his adaptable um, computer last March. And hopefully we'll get it in September. Um, you know, not only just getting the computer, but then getting it with the correct programs and the number of assistant technology hours he's supposed to be getting. So. Well, we, we know, and we've said this over and over again tonight, um, you know, the state, us, you know, in, in a special needs area, we, we have to step it up. And I think that that's, you know, I, and I know that that's what Dr. O'Rourke and her team are gearing up for, so. So I'm not going to hear that because we're in this pandemic that IEPs are kind of on hold or um, services um, don't have to be given during certain times. Um, we, we believe we're going to have to provide the services, okay? But we are also waiting for a little more direction from the state. But okay. we also know that the state's got to tell us soon because we have three weeks till we open. So. All right, you can put us down for, you know, uh, my kids need to be in school five days a week. You know, do I have hesitation? Yes, but I know that's what's best okay. for them. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.